Okay. Let's do it. I won't play the opening credits because we'll get those in the game itself. I don't want to wear it out. We'll get the Snake Eater theme and credits after the uh, after the Virtuous Mission. So here at the main menu, already there are things to fuck around with. You can speed up the animations here with R1. You can slow them down with R2. You can change the camo pattern with L3. You can change the colors with R3. <clears throat> you can remove the background so you just get the camo pattern on the characters. You can zoom in and zoom out. Set the color, set the background color where it's just the the one color without the camo pattern. It's uh, pretty cool what you can do here. Oh, that's cool with the spider. Now, let's see, what saves do I have? Boom, ba cha ka cha ka boom ba cha ka cha Extreme Operation Snake Eater complete. I guess I'll go for this one, whatever this one is. Let's do it. After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Soviet airspace. 20 minutes to drop off. Commencing internal depressurization. Equipment check. Arm main parachute. All right. You ready to go? Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. Cab okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? Say put out the cigar and put on your mask. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch.
Temperature minus 46 degrees Celsius. Two minutes to drop off. Stand up. You'll be falling at 130 miles per hour. Try not to get frostbite from the wind chill. One minute to drop off. Move to the rear. Activate the alarm bottle. This is one for the history books. The world's first halo jump. Ten seconds to drop off. Stand by. Status okay. All green. Prepare for drop off. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. Jack, I've got some important news. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? No, the virtuous mission. The future of our Fox unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission? Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well... About two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB-754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? Isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned space flight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a Design Bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. He used the mole to get the family out first, and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted, and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The President demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missiles. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the US agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete. And we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the US or the Russians. 
The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital, handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my side. Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No. Missiles. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi-palatins. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in the facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. They moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov and bring him back to the west. If we don't get Sokolov back before that weapon is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. The clock is ticking. <laughs> Once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, stand by at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The Fulton surface-to-air recovery system. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat-proof. Do you think Sokolov is up to it? The shock will be less than during a parachute jump, and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two 6-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. It sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle.
Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? Well, you've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful. You might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. All right, let's go get our backpack. Uh, you're a fool. Did I thank you for your 105 earlier? I can't remember if I did. Thank you. I think I did. I think I did. I just want to uh, thank you again just to make sure. I'm... Oh, yeah. Remember someone saying uh, a while back that if you start the game with the Rykov mask and kill yourself here, you get something different? I'm not sure if I've ever seen that. I've always I've been meaning to uh, I've been meaning to do that, but we don't have the Rykov mask anyway. So, or you know, we we're not doing the Rykov start where we're wearing the mask automatically. Yeah, I think if you get a game over while wearing that mask, um, something different happens. Or someone mentioned it to me before, anyway. I'm not sure if I've seen it. Hey, what's up, Bilbus? How's it going? Let's just take a look around first before we go get our backpack. Kick some snakes. Um, what if we try and leave without getting our backpack? Snake, where do you think you're going? You can't expect to proceed with the mission without any weapons or equipment. First, you'll need to recover your backpack. It's caught on a tree to the south. Press the action button to climb the tree and retrieve your backpack. Is that clear? Okay. Low life, thank you very much for the $5. The first donation for the end's fate. Let this man die in his sleep. Thank you very much. I'll add that during the next... Big call with the boss. Thank you. Did you not see the donation? Yeah, take it easy. I'll, uh... <laughs> I'll get round to them. You don't need to, uh... Maybe if I haven't seen it for, like, five minutes, then you can tell me. Or a couple of minutes. 
Yeah, we can't exit. Ooh, I almost made it there. Let's call zero again. What if I don't know what to do here? Snake, did you climb that tree? Yes. Good. So the backpacks? Not yet. Not yet? <sighs> don't tell me you went up the tree just to take in the view. <sighs> well, I must admit that's not a bad idea. Climbing a tree does give you a wider range of view. You can use it for scouting. But what you need to do now is retrieve your backpack. Understood? Yeah. The backpack is on the branch pointing east on that tree, right? Walk along the branch and get it. Be careful not to fall. You should be able to grab your backpack if you hang from the branch by pressing the action button. <laughs> what if I call him again? The backpack is on the branch pointing east on that tree, right? Walk along the branch and get it. Be careful not to fall. What if I drop down, but over here? Oh, I didn't mean to go back over. I forgot that you could even do that. Oh, and now he's automatically going to climb all the way back down. That's nasty. <laughs> what if I call him now? Snake, your backpack is stuck on a tree branch, right? Ah, that's it. Okay. The donation links are all fixed. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun? That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and U.S. government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. But be careful. If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. 
I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic? As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. What's your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency, 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years is it then? Boss? That's right. It's me. <sighs> Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Mm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now, doesn't mean they always You're a will real be. egotistical Having woman. personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack. I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural-born fighter. But you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader. 
no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra unit. A group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake, you are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. Commencing virtuous mission now. All right, let's do it. Nick, thank you very much, man. The big $100 donation. Let the old man die in peace of old age. Thank you so much, man. Coming in right away with the huge generosity. Cheers. Uh, low life again. Thank you for the five. Everyone else, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. So... Here we are, getting introduced to the boss. And as many of you know, there are lots of optional calls to do on the Virtuous Mission. Too many, really, for how this is paced, this section of the game. Um, you only have a few areas in the Virtuous Mission, but you have loads and loads of optional calls that go with it. So you really just have to spend a lot of time on this radio screen doing the calls. There's no real way to pace them out naturally. You just have to spend a lot of time sitting here going through them. Um, what makes them particularly awkward is that Zero in particular has a lot of good calls, but they're buried within a load of tutorial calls. So it can just be a pain in the ass trying to uh, get to the good ones. Paramedic has a good few. The boss has a few. Paramedic has a good few save calls as well. Saving the game, Snake? Let's do our first save call. Hey, Snake, you ever heard of Godzilla, King of Monsters? No, what is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. 
It's about this monster called Godzilla, who grows to an enormous size in a nuclear test and goes on a rampage in Tokyo. Nuclear test, huh? Then the Marshall Islands must be crawling with giant monsters right about now. It's just make-believe. Maybe that's why my pants have been so tight lately. Snake, it's a movie, not a report out of Los Alamos. I know. So then what happened? Godzilla is immune to all weapons, and humanity has no way to stop the monster. Dr. Sirizawa develops a new type of weapon, but meanwhile, Godzilla is getting closer and closer to Tokyo, obliterating everything in its path. It was originally a Japanese movie, but they made an American version, too. I recommend seeing the original Japanese one if you ever get the chance. It's mostly mindless fun, but it's also got a serious anti-nuke message as well. Where can I see the original? You'll just have to go to Japan. Really? That's too bad. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America, too. Why is that? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies then? Of course. Everybody loves Godzilla. You sure know a lot about movies. I don't suppose you're the movie-watching type, are you? Not really. Okay, then I'll tell you everything I know. When the going gets tough, movies can save your life. It's always good to be able to look at things from a different perspective when you get in a jam. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit, Snake. Have a little fun. So, our first save call, the first movie that gets mentioned here, out of many movies, is Godzilla. I think, uh, yeah, definitely one of the films that had a major influence on Kojima. Godzilla. Just the, the, the symbolism behind Godzilla and all of the uh, nuclear commentary. I think a lot of creatures like... I was, well, it's weird to call Metal Gear Rex a creature, but yeah, I think uh, you know Metal Gear Rex has its roots in Godzilla. It's, its DNA goes back to Godzilla. Gets brought up again in Death Stranding. One of the movie posters that you can collect is Godzilla. Another film that gets special attention in this game is The Great Escape, which they mention a good few times. I think part of the reason why they mention The Great Escape is that that's actually the film that first inspired the series. When Kojima was creating Metal Gear on the MSX, the very first Metal Gear, he wanted to create a game that gave him the feeling that he had while watching The Great Escape. And I think that's where the prisoners come from in Outer Heaven. You know how you have to rescue loads of prisoners? Originally, the plan was that you were going to actually play as a prisoner trying to escape. But that idea then changed uh, in development. But yeah... That was the, the first film that really inspired the series, The Great Escape. And I think that's why they pay tribute to it in such a way in this game, because, uh, you know, either going back to the origin of the series with this game, the origin of the timeline. So I guess Kojima thought it would be fitting to um, reference the film that influenced it all. <clears throat> Hello. Can I get a call about this caratan here? I see you caught yourself a reticulated python. The reticulated python is said to be the longest snake in the world. The biggest ones can grow up to 10 meters in length. Although they're not poisonous, they're still very dangerous, so be careful around them. They have a highly ferocious temperament, and they can swallow whole, even large animals like deer and pigs. Their most distinguishing feature is the mesh pattern of their scales. This pattern acts as a highly effective natural camouflage. If you think there might be a reticulated python about, Pay close attention to your surroundings. Otherwise, you could get bitten before you even know it's there. It's a huge snake, but you should be able to capture it alive by using the tranquilizer gun. 
I'll bet if you capture one and throw it at an enemy, it'll give him a good scare. Right. But how do they taste? Huh? Do they taste good? You're actually going to eat one. Why else would I be asking? Cannibal. What was that? Nothing. Let's see what the guide says. Ah, you're in luck. It says they taste pretty good. Good. I can hardly wait. Ugh. I see you found some Russian oyster mushrooms. The Russian oyster mushroom is an edible variety that belongs to the Shimeji family. It's known to be particularly rich in vitamin B1 and niacin. Apparently, it's usually found growing on tree stumps and hollow logs, so look there if you want to eat some. Yeah, I know that the original uh, Godzilla director, I think he went on to make like a load of other uh, Godzilla films, didn't he? Kaiju related films. Wasn't there another creature that, uh, wasn't there like Godzilla versus Mothra or something as well made back in the 50s? I know he may went on to make a load of other ones. I'm not sure if they had as much, uh, like, commentary on nuclear weapons. And paramedics said there, you know, that Godzilla, so it's mainly mindless fun, but it has a serious anti-nuke message as well. I really didn't think Godzilla was fun at all when I watched it. <laughs> I thought it was mainly about the message. I thought, I thought it was pretty dark. It wasn't, there wasn't, like, much entertainment factor to it. Um... It was fairly grim stuff. Snake, that area is inhabited by Gamera. The giant that's that's think that's what I was thinking of. The giant anaconda is believed to be the largest snake in the world in terms of weight and diameter. It's not poisonous, but its large size makes it extremely powerful. They say it even eats crocodiles. Its only natural predator is man. And snake. And snake. The giant anaconda is a very large snake, but you should be able to capture it alive using the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So how does it taste? I knew you were going to ask me that. Glad I didn't disappoint you. So? Well, the guide says it tastes all right. Good. I'll have to try some. Ugh. He did do uh, Mothra as well. Okay, okay. I think the only one I've seen of those, like, original films is the original Godzilla. I think the only other Godzilla film I've seen is Shin Godzilla, which I enjoyed quite a bit as well. Snake, that area is inhabited by magpies. Magpies are members of the crow family. They're distinguishable by their beautiful dark blue and white bodies and their long tails. Their favorite food is insects, but they'll also eat small fish, acorns, and fruit. They're omnivores, which means... They'll eat anything. Right. Just like you, huh? If you use the tranquilizer gun, you should be able to capture magpies alive. Okay. So how do they taste? You always ask me that. Naturally. So? I've never heard of anybody actually eating a magpie. But I suppose there's no reason you couldn't. You don't say. Oh. Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north, so head in that direction. Snake, intelligence indicates that that area is outside the enemy's cordon, so you shouldn't have any unexpected encounters with enemy patrols. I think it will be a good idea to take this time to get accustomed to using your camouflage, hunting for food, mm -hmm. and navigating the survival viewer. If you have any questions about camouflage or CQC, ask the boss. The boss's frequency is 141.80. Paramedic is the medical correspondent for this mission. Ask her about hunting for food and medical treatment. Also, she has documents detailing flora and fauna in the operation locale. Contact her if you need detailed information on any of the plants and animals in your area. Yeah, Salami, I th it kind of took me by surprise when... Uh... You started hearing that iconic Evangelion music. Wasn't expecting to hear Evangelion music in the middle of the Godzilla movie. <laughs> I guess the sequences themselves kind of played out in a similar way. You know, big kaiju battle scenes.
Snake, remember that this operation is a solo sneaking mission. We'll be providing you with support over the radio, but out in the field, you're on your own. There's no backup. And there's no way you'll survive a battle with a large enemy contingent. Avoid engagement whenever possible. Your highest priority in this mission is staying out of sight. Snake, did you find food? Yeah. You sound happy. I am. Do you know how to eat it? Uh... Then let me explain. To eat food, press the start button to enter the survival viewer, then select food. Select the food you want to eat and press the enter button. Select eat and you will eat the selected food. <laughs> when you eat, you will recover Snake your stamina. Snake has never eaten but before. The extent of recovery depends on what you eat. When your stamina is down only slightly, you should save your tastier mm -hmm. morsels for later. But don't leave food for too long or it'll rot. This is where a little planning ahead goes a long way. Besides eating food, you can throw it at enemies to confuse them. So remember, food is not just for eating. Be creative. Snake, when your stamina gets low, it negatively affects... Yeah, 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 yeah. Your actions can lower your stamina. The more demanding the activity, the more stamina consumed. Exactly. Walking slowly will conserve stamina, while actions like rolling, crawling, and stalking consume large amounts of it. Try your best to avoid unnecessary actions in order to conserve stamina. Snake, use the survival viewer to pick your camouflage. I don't want to skip the tea call by mistake. It's so easy to skip it by mistake. You think it's just a meaningless tutorial call and then it turns into something else. There are a few calls like that with zero. Major. What is it? It's about your code name. Major Tom? Yeah. Where'd you get that name? From a tunnel. A tunnel? That's right. Snake, have you seen the movie The Great Escape? No. It's a movie about a determined group of allied POWs trapped in a German POW camp who plan an escape. The POWs dig three tunnels for their escape. They named them Dick, Harry, and Tom. I see. So Tom was an escape tunnel. Did they make it? Out of the camp? Of course. One of the tunnels was even discovered before it was finished. But eventually they do make it out. I get it now. So Tom was the tunnel they used to escape. Uh, yes, that's right. What is it? Um, well, actually, I, I'm not sure if I remember correctly. Major. Oh, it's all right. It's uh, Tom, Snake. Tom is the escape tunnel. Yes, <laughs> no question about it. Mm. Snake, in order to carry out the mission without being spotted, you must learn to detect an approaching enemy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can use an equipped weapon during first-person view. This is called a first-person view attack. When using first-person view attack, you can direct your line of fire up, down, left, or right. The first-person view attack is a fundamental part of gunfighting. It allows you to... Snake, making it harder for the enemy... Okay, I thought maybe that first-person view attack morphed into something else, but no. Snake, be careful. The way to change between standing, crouching, and... Snake, in order to maintain your stamina, you'll have to feed yourself. The idea behind this mission is procure on site. This goes for food as well. Procure on sight? That's right. But don't you think I should have at least brought a few rations? Americans have a terrible habit of taking everything with them. Nowadays, nobody can get anything done without a lot of fancy equipment. It wasn't like that in SAS, I'll tell you that. And with Fox, we're running things my way. Roger that, sir. You're not convinced, are you? Well, think of it this way. The stuff you'll find out there tastes a lot better than army rations, anyway. I hope you're right. You'll be procuring food by capturing local plants and animals. Paramedic has information on the flora and fauna available in the mission area. Ask her if you have any questions about the plants and animals you find. Okay. Listen up, Snake. Keep in mind that this operation is strictly covert. Engagements should be avoided. If you must dispose of an enemy, do it with the tranquilizer gun. Yup. Sweet dreams, Boy Scout. That's right. And by the time he wakes up, you and Sokolov will be safely out of the country. Sipping hot coffee on a plane back home. What did you say? Mm -hmm.
What did you say? Sipping hot coffee on it. You're gonna drink that foul mud on the victory flight home? Okay, then. What would you drink? Tea, of course. Hey, we got it. I didn't skip it by mistake. The tea, of course. Snake, the fake death and revival pills we gave you are the latest in internal medicines developed for intelligence ops by the CIA's technology. Hey, what's up, Storm? You can use the fake death pill to send yourself into a death-like state for a limited period of time. Use it wisely, and you should be able to fool the enemy into thinking you're really dead. It may come in handy if you ever find yourself cornered. To revive yourself from the fake death state, use the revival pill. But remember, timing is critical. The effect will be ruined if you revive right in front of your enemy. Interesting. But how does it work? What do you mean? I don't feel right taking some pill I don't know anything about. How does it make me look dead? How's it gonna affect my body? Well, Snake, about that... I get it. I should ask Paramedic. Paramedic! Allow me to explain. You know how there are animals in nature that play dead? Like weevils, ladybugs, chickadees, possums, and the like? Well, the fake death pill takes the natural art of playing dead and applies it to the spy world. When you take the fake death pill, it causes your body to rapidly secrete a number of chemicals. Adenosine and serotonin, as well as opioid peptides, such as methionine and kephalin. Those chemicals act to induce a state of hibernation, causing your heart rate, your breathing rate, and your body temperature to drop dramatically. It'll truly look like you've dropped dead upon initial inspection. The revival pill, to put it simply, is a counteracting agent to the fake death pill. When you take it, it causes your body to secrete stimulants, like noradrenaline and other chemicals such as naloxone, which block the effects of the fake death pill. Basically, it wakes you up. Does that help? Yeah. Okay, I'll try and explain it in more detail. The secretion of methionine and kephalin triggered by the fake death pill causes the opioid receptors. Oh, okay. I think I get it now. You sure? Yeah. But you must want to know a little bit more. There are three types of receptors. Delta, Kappa, and Mu. Methionine and Kephalin acts on the... Uh, paramedic, I think Snake understands now. Isn't that right, Snake? <laughs> yeah, clear as crystal. But... Major, I've got enough info about the pills, so I'm going to get back to the mission now. Yes, you do that. Hey, <laughs> wait a... Yes. <sighs> The battery recharges automatically when not in use. When you want to recharge the battery, unequip all electronic devices and give it some time. The higher your stamina gauge, the faster your battery recharges. If you want it to recharge faster, eat food and recover your stamina. Also, if you run, roll or do other dramatic actions, the battery will recharge faster. Wait a second. What is it? The higher my stamina, the faster my battery recharges? That's what I said. But what does my stamina have to do with the battery? Oh, yes, I see what you're getting at. Let's have Paramedic explain that. Mm -hmm. Paramedic? Yes, sir. It's because Snake's battery uses bioelectricity. Bioelectricity? Bioelectricity is electricity emitted from cells. When the cells of living things are stimulated, sodium and potassium ions move rapidly through the cell membrane's ion channel, creating a difference in electric potential. The battery uses that energy to recharge. So unless your cells have plenty of nutrients, the recharge won't work well. Amazing the kind of machines that are available now. But this machine has not been made public. Machines, eh? It was designed eh? by a scientist at the CIA's Directorate of Science and Technology. What kind of person was he? The person who designed it? Yeah. I heard he was pretty strange. Stranger than the Major? There's nothing strange about the Major. My tea's gone. Who drank it? How am I supposed to have tea time without tea? Well, not too strange, at least. <laughs> hey, my scone's gone too. <laughs> <laughs> I love how high pitched he gets there. Hey, my scone's gone too. Oh, oh dearie me. Oh, I've dropped my tea. Oh. Snake, what do you do when you get a new weapon or item? I put it in my backpack first. But you know that you can't equip items that are still in your backpack, right? Yeah. The only things that can be equipped with the weapon and item window buttons are items on my person. Correct. If you want to equip an item... Yeah, 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 yeah. Same shit. Major, 
What kind of place is this secret design bureau that Sokolov is heading? Hmm. The Soviets have a number of secret design bureaus like this one, each engaged in cutting-edge research. OKB-1, the bureau where the Voskhod spacecraft was developed and which plays a leading role in the Soviet space program, is one of those installations. Most of them are located in secret cities built in isolated areas, and we don't even know their exact locations, much less the nature of their research. And Sokolov's OKB-754 is the most secret bureau of them all. The intelligence communities of the West have tried time and again to find out what they're working on, but they failed consistently. So you have absolutely no idea what Sokolov is developing? We've got nothing. Then how did you get the information for this mission? It can't have been from Sokolov. From the boss. The boss? That's right. She has her own intelligence channels that she cultivated during the last war. She shared what she learned with us. That we were able to get the green light for this mission at all is thanks to her pull with the powers that be at the CIA. In other words, this mission would never have come together without the boss's help in a number of respects. Snake, aiming your gun during first-person view is a bit different from what you're used to in training. When you aim your handgun in first-person view, align the front sight and the rear sight of the gun with the target, then fire. No laser sight? What? A laser sight. I heard the military was developing them, but... You want a laser sight? <laughs> a well-trained soldier has no use for a laser sight. No training wheels on this mission. Go snake. back to MGS2. For the assault rifle and certain other weapons, pressing the weapon button will first ready the gun for shooting from the hip. If you're in a close quarters fight or other situation that requires immediate action, fire from that position. Observe where your shots are hitting and correct your aim accordingly. I understand. But that doesn't sound too accurate. Of course not. So when you require pinpoint targeting, like when firing from afar or sniping, hold the aim button to aim. Carefully align your front and rear sights to concentrate fire and gain a sharper view on your target. It's kind of funny. I think they go back. Well, at least I don't think in uh, in MGS3 there's no like weapon previous option, is there? I don't think there is. Own view. Yeah, I always thought that was interesting. You know how MGS2 introduced that uh, that fancy ability to switch between... To go back and forth between weapons and items to what you had equipped previously. And then MGS3 removes that again and it goes back to something simpler. And then with MGS4, they, they make it even more uh, complicated than it was in MGS2. Introducing like a cycle option where you can go between three windows. Back and forth between three windows. I wonder if they if they made it simpler again in MGS3 just to tie in with the game taking place in the past. You know, no laser sights, a simple radio screen with just images instead of being able to see the character move like you had in MGS2 with the codec. Uh, we'll move on to the next screen here eventually. Soon enough. Paramedic is the medical correspondent for this mission. Yeah, 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 yeah. Snake, intelligence indicates that that area is outside the enemy's cordon. So you shouldn't have any unexpected encounters with enemy patrols. I think it will be a good idea to take this time to get accustomed to using your camouflage, hunting for food, and navigating the survival viewer. DRK describes Watt as having his hands tied. DRK doesn't even use previous weapon mode in MGS2. So I think he should be okay with how the... the weapon windows work in this. Or maybe you're talking about master collection controls or something? Okay, let's continue. There are a lot of optional calls to do, but we'll leave it there for now. We'll try and pace them out a bit. There's no real way to pace them out naturally, unfortunately. Oh, right, you mean 
he describes the the previous mode as having his having his hands tied. Yeah, it's it's really awkward if you're not used to it. I really like it just because you can you can do some fancy stuff with it. I think he does use the cycle in MGS4 though. Which again can be confusing if you're not used to it, but it's a lot of fun when you uh, when you get used to it. Remember we were playing around with the Gabriels a lot last time, trying to figure out how to one-shot them. Normally they take a load of damage if you just swipe at them with a knife like this. Oh! I think they take like 30 hits or some crazy shit like that. Normally. Oh! Oh, is there a unique call if you get fucked up Snake, by them? Do you read? Snake. Major. Snake, are you alright? Yeah. I'm okay. You're far from okay. Look at your life gauge. You're on your last leg. No. I can still. <clears throat> See? Snake, this is a solo sneaking mission. Do you know what that means? Yeah. No, you don't. Huh? It means there's no backup. No cavalry. If you're taken out, nobody is there to take your place. Pull out for now and recuperate. Find a hiding place and get some rest. Your life gauge will gradually recover with time. But the speed of your life gauge recovery depends on the level of your stamina gauge. So get plenty to eat, then get some rest. You hear me? Do you hear me? I hear you. Whoa. I'm dead. I didn't mean to roll over there. <laughs> Snake, respond. Snake, Snake. Should have listened to you, paramedic. I'm sorry. But yeah, either way, I was just trying to show that normally with regular stabs, it takes like 30 stabs to kill them. But if you go for their head and you go for a hard press, you can one-shot them. Like that. Whoop. Oh my god, I'm getting fucked up today. Use the cigar to get rid of the hornets. I see you've captured an Indian gavial. The Indian gavial is a crocodile that originally lived in freshwater regions in India and Nepal. Why are Indian crocodiles way out here? They're captive crocodiles that were brought here for research purposes but escaped and became wild again. Indian gavials are large creatures. Adult males grow to over six meters in length. You'll never catch one alive, even if you use the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So... How do they... Taste? Yes, I did look into that. <clears throat> you know what they always say. Tastes like chicken. Sounds delicious. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures. But the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. What do you mean? They weren't the direct subject of any serious research. But some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby. Do you want to save?
I do miss the uh, loading times on the Master Collection. Snake, do you know the creature from the Black Lagoon? Nope, never heard of it. These scientists are investigating a place deep in the Amazon called the Black Lagoon, and they get picked off one after the other by this fishman thing. And there was the scene when the heroine is going for a swim, and the creature sneaks up on her from underwater. Oh, I thought my heart was going to stop. I mean, of course, the 3D effects in It Came From Outer Space were a lot more intense, but... It wouldn't be referring to you coming from outer space, would it? How rude! Why do you say that? Because no one on Earth could be as charming as you. Hey. <sighs> Fine. I'll just get to the point, Snake. Be careful of what's around you when you're in the water. Just imagining you swimming mm. in those jungle rivers makes me think of you being attacked by a fish man. I appreciate the concern. Fishmen aren't the only things that'll attack you in the water. Really be careful out there. Okay. And don't be attacking any pretty girls going for a swim, either. Are you calling me a fish man? You started it. I've spotted two enemy soldiers. They're probably KGB troops sent to guard Sokolov. AK-47s and grenades. Snake, your presence in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. We can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Don't engage them in battle, either. This is a stealth mission. Got that? The Major is right. The point of this mission is to sneak through the jungle without being seen. The success of the mission depends on how well you use your camouflage. Change your camouflage by selecting Camouflage from the Survival Viewer. The Uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the Face option lets you change your face paint. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. But if you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by without being noticed. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot, and vice versa. The key is to make yourself one with nature. Keep that in mind as you go along, okay? All right, so now we get introduced to our first few enemies in the game. Normally, I'll just shoot this guy from here, but let's just wait for him to come up. Ooh, still pretty good camo with this olive drab here. 80%. And the guards behave quite differently to how they are in MGS 1 and 2. Where in MGS 1 and 2, they move quite quickly up and down the linear halls. In this game, they're quite slow. Ooh, wow, you can actually see me from there. Who's that? Okay. I don't think he'd see me at 80% there. Up here, we can get a sniper rifle.
Let's test it out. Oh yeah, we're on NG Plus. I have the uh, the SPD. Uh, I'm gonna die, man. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Yeah, this will change dialogue now that we get later on if you trigger an alert. Snake will have to admit that he's been spotted. I'm going to get insulted for my performance. Is the SVD only on NG Plus? No, it's here on New Game. The Virtuous mission gives you a load of weapons to play around with. You can find um, an assault rifle later on. Um, the M37 shotgun as well. Thermal goggles. Loads of stuff here on the Virtuous Mission. Almost as if it's too good to be true. Because it is. When the game restarts at, uh, for Operation Snake Eater, it takes a lot longer to get these weapons again. You don't get them straight away in Operation Snake Eater like you do in the Virtuous Mission. Uh, I'm going to get caught. Huh? Right oh my there. god. Oh my god. That was crazy. Oh my god. HQ. HQ. This is HQ. Patrol here. We've lost sight of the intruder going into high alert. Bum, ba -da 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 -bum, bum. Probably missed it on the first playthrough. It's fairly easy to find up here. Most of most of the stuff isn't too well hidden. But yeah, with the shotgun, you get it at the very end of the virtuous mission, anyway. So. You're not going to have too much time to play around with it. Yeah, this caution theme is a classic. Uh, this is a remaster, Blue Points remaster, HD collection. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum. You saw that. Um, the master collection is a bit of a mess. I guess it depends what you buy it on. Depends on the person as well, really. Um, the, the sound issues are still there across the board, aren't they? I would probably wait until it gets... I, I would wait for another few patches before buying it, personally. Because I think there are still significant issues across the board that need to be patched. There was another patch today, was there? Huh? But if we go into this area in a caution 
Will the cutscene then cancel the caution? Will we get the cutscene? I'm sure we will. Oh! Oh, wow. I wonder have we fucked up the ability to even get the scene now. I had no idea that was the case. Can't remember the last time I tried going up there in, in a caution phase. That's interesting. Bum, bum. Yeah, it seems like if you go up there in, a, in caution, you don't get the scene. So we're probably not going to get the scene at all now. <laughs> maybe it'll play this time. Maybe, maybe it'll play when I go back up outside of a caution. We'll see what happens. Bum, bum, bum. Battle might get in trouble here when this caution dies down oh. if a guard comes over here from the other end love how you can circle them like this in this game oh. when you hold them up another new little addition hey that's what i'm after HQ. give me the porn Now, let's see. Will the scene trigger? A no. Damn. Wow. So that's actually an optional scene. I had no idea. Yeah, usually I don't get caught at all in that area. Probably years since I came up here in a caution phase. No, we miss out on the, the smile. Uh, let's get naked. Actually. Camouflage is an indispensable tool when you're sneaking through the jungle. To use camouflage, first press the start button to go to the survival viewer. Then select camouflage. Yeah, shut up. Visibility is... Oh my god. Some of the tutorial calls go on forever. Jesus, the size of that call. You can only use CQC... Snake. What's up, boss? Don't you what's up me. Just what do you think you're doing? What do you mean? What do I mean? What is that camouflage you're wearing? Oh, this. What do you think? Of all the... Looks pretty good on me, doesn't it? Are you out of your mind? You can't wear that in battle. It's like saying to the enemy, Hey, here I am. Shoot me. Well, I'll admit it is a little on the flashy side. Then why don't you... But it does look good on me, doesn't it? You don't think so? Listen, wise ass. Camouflage isn't going to do jack if it doesn't help you blend in with your surroundings. Well, I think it looks good on me. Fine. Wear whatever you want. Thought you'd like it. 
What is that you have in your hands? <laughs> Honestly, when did you start reading magazines like that? I, uh, uh, Didn't I teach you how to take care of business without having to rely on that sort of thing? <laughs> anyway, I'm sure some of the enemy grunts will find that sort of magazine as appealing as you seem to. Place it on the ground and you might be able to divert their attention. <clears throat> Are you smoking a cigar? Uh huh. I don't approve of you smoking during a mission. Hey, you used to smoke them. Never mind what I did. Uh. But that being said, cigars can be useful in a number of different ways, like getting rid of leeches. Did you say leeches? Yes. If a leech clamps onto you, try pressing the lit end of a cigar into it. The leech should cringe and detach itself from you. If you try to yank it off by yourself, you run the risk of it leaving its teeth inside you. With the cigar method, you won't have that problem. Fascinating. And unlike a cigarette, a cigar burns slowly, so you can use it in place of a torch in dark places. I never knew a cigar had so many different uses. Now you know, but quit smoking them during the mission. Her. Hear me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Normally, you would ask a fellow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think she should get angry if I get naked as well. Snake, did you take off your uniform? Yeah. What's the matter? Just needed to loosen up. I know there's a naked option under uniform in the camouflage window that lets you take off your uniform. But without a uniform on, your camo index will remain low, and you'll burn through your stamina more quickly. So stop acting like a fool and put some camouflage on now. Did you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see you're not wearing any face paint. Oh, leave me alone. In my day, I did my share of sneaking Fuck into your enemy day. territory. You mean since World War II? Yeah, mostly snatch missions. Snatch mission? That's where you abduct an enemy officer without killing him, right? Right. That's where I got the original idea for CQC. In a snatch mission, taking out the target's escorts by shooting them is not an option. If the enemy hears the gunshot, they'll know there's an intruder and tighten security. And the target will sense danger and try to get away. You needed a way to take out the guards and secure the target without making a sound. That was the idea. The CQC style that you and I developed is based on the techniques I cultivated during those missions. So... First time I've heard this. Huh? You've never told me any of this before. I didn't? No. Why? Hmm. Why didn't you tell me this before? Why now? I have my reasons. <clears throat> it's an interesting little moment there. Almost as if she knows she might be spending her last moments with Snake. Saying things that she wouldn't normally say, like someone on their deathbed. Last words. All right, what is the layout going to be like in Dali Nevadno now that we don't have the cutscene? Oh, that guy still stands there. Okay. Oh, damn. Okay, well, now I know. I've learned something new today. I know not to go up here in caution mode. Shoot down the hornet's nest and you just get rid of everyone in this area. They all run through to the next area. And Malinky, thank you for gifting that sub to Storm. Don't think I thank you for that. Cheers, man. Enjoy your free sub, Storm. Yeah, so they all run through to the next area. It's one new th another new thing about MGS3 and the way guards behave. Sending them through loading zones into other areas and then having them come back. You don't really get this kind of stuff in uh, MGS2. 
you'll get a little audio cue as well to warn you when they're about to come back. I think it usually takes like 30 seconds or so, and then they'll come back. Hey, what's up, Mitch? There it is. That little groan, that's your cue. That's your warning. Now, any second, you'll see them all come back. Here they come. Pretty cool little detail. Hashtag with the with the ninety five months. Thank you. These three guys are going to come back across the bridge, I think. What's wrong? <laughs> Wait, no, get the other two guys. No! Yes! Gotcha. Oh, you lucky bastard. Ba -ba -da -ba. Mont, thank you for gifting the sub to Fat Man. Now the bridge just becomes a pain in the ass to cross. We drop down here, we can get another weapon. Oof. We get the M16, the XM16E1. Whoop! Oh my god, it's so annoying. Uh, let's reload this area. We'll do a few weapon calls with the boss. What are you cooking, Storm? Ooh, hello. I see you're wearing the lead. I see you've got your hands on an SVD. The SVD is the Soviet Union's most advanced automatic sniper rifle. It's said to be better designed and more durable than anything the West has. It looks kind of like an AK-47. The shape is similar, but the internal mechanism is one of a kind. It uses 7.62 by 54 millimeter rimmed cartridges, which are more powerful and precise than the ones the AK uses. It can be a powerful weapon if you know how to use it. 
Sniper rifles aren't meant to be used on the move. When you equip one, you'll immediately go into first-person view. The more stable your stance, the less your hands will shake when you're aiming the rifle. Make sure you're lying down before attempting to make a long-distance shot. To use the scope, press the aim button. You can also use the action button to change the level of magnification. By taking out enemies from a distance with the sniper rifle, you can shift the odds in your favor. Use it well. Oh, nice storm. Sounds good. EMT with the 79. Thank you. Always fascinating. Even though I've been through it a thousand times, you keep showing things I've never seen before. There's a lot of stuff in these games. Lots of secrets and hidden details. This is a solo sneak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, actually, I think there might have been some relevant stuff in that call. Maybe I shouldn't have skipped that one. So, on the Virtuous mission, the boss serves as our weapons expert. Uh, in Operation Snake Eater, it is Sigint. And if the game recognizes that you've done these weapon calls with the boss, you won't be able to get uh, Sigint's versions of those calls. So what we're going to do is we're going to do these weapon calls with the boss. Then I'm going to kill myself, which will trick the game into thinking we haven't done these calls because it'll send me back to my last checkpoint. And then we'll be able to do all the calls with Sigint later as well. And you'll get some slightly different information with Sigint. So it can be worth showing both of them. They won't have the same things to say. Um, the boss will not comment on the Patriot, however. Sigint will. Got a fancy bit of camo on this weapon. You can change it between fully auto, three shot burst. Or single shot. The weapon you're equipped with now is called the XM sixteen E one. It's a new type of rifle currently being developed by the US Army. If it's still in development, then what's it doing here? My guess is they captured it when it was being battle-tested in Southeast Asia. But the one you've got there is quite a bit different from the ones I've been hearing about. For one thing, it's camo-painted, and it's fitted with a three-shot burst mechanism. It even looks like you could attach a suppressor. All of these modifications are geared towards jungle combat. This doesn't look like the work of the Soviets. My guess is they were added on site by an American gunsmith during army field trials. Open the weapon window and press the enter button to attach or remove the suppressor. Press the action button to switch between semi-auto, full auto, and three-shot burst modes. Make use of each of these functions as the situation warrants. Yeah, Nick, I think they just wanted to give you like a taster for all the different weapons and whatnot, kind of turning the Virtuous mission into its own, like, mini-game. Kind of like it's its own little full game. With its variety of weapons, and then they... Which you, which you can't hold on to for very long. Choose battle fatigues that match the surrounding environment. It takes more than just clothes to make a good disguise. To camouflage yourself effectively, you'll need to wear face paint. Face paint is camouflage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Camouflage is about. Hunters have known about camouflage since ancient times. But it's only quite recently, since the 18th century, that it's been applied to military operations. The first camouflage introduced to the military was a solid colored uniform designed to blend in with the battlefield. It was really more of a protective coloring than true camouflage. 
Camouflage in the modern sense of the word wasn't introduced until the First World War. During that war, weapons such as aircraft, cannon, and warships were painted in camouflage colors. But it was almost never used to disguise individual soldiers. The widespread use of camouflage began in World War II. The Germans and the Russians in particular made active use of it in battle. Nowadays, with the Cold War raging, the Eastern Bloc has been hard at work developing all sorts of camouflage patterns. In the West, okay. the French implemented it in their paratrooper corps, and SAS during the wars of independence in Indochina. I never saw it used in Korea, though. America has lagged behind other countries in incorporating camouflage. They're only just beginning to consider introducing it into certain units. Why is that? Apparently, there are those in the U.S. military who consider camouflage too passive a technique. Morons. You're telling me. But now more and more people are beginning to appreciate how useful and important camouflage can be. I'm sure the brass will see the light soon enough. The Virtuous Mission demo, it ended at Sokolov. So you didn't get, you, you pretty much got the entirety of the Virtuous Mission, apart from that one screen where you have to run back to the bridge. I don't think I've ever seen the MGS3 demo. I always forget that there was an MGS3 demo. Which was just basically all of the Virtuous Mission. Uh, I wonder what differences there are between that, uh, between the demo version and the, the full version. Oh, nice one, Shailene. I hope you enjoy it when you get round to it. To place a weapon on your person, go to the survival viewer. Uh, oh, wait, no, I don't want to be doing these calls anyway. Let's just focus on our weapon calls for now. I see you found yourself an RGD-5. RGD stands for Rochnaya Granada Degtereva in Russian. It basically means hand grenade of the Degtereva design. It's the standard issue blast fragmentation grenade of the Soviet Army. It's lighter than the M26. And it carries fewer explosives as well. But I'd say it's more or less equal to an M26 in terms of performance. Be careful though, the safety pin ring is on the opposite side. You'll be fine as long as you keep the safety lever pressed down with your finger. I'll keep that in mind. Blast fragmentation grenades use a combination of blast and shrapnel to kill their targets. This makes them effective against standing targets, but significantly less effective against targets lying on the ground. Remember that. The sooner you find... That's certainly a strange-looking grenade you've got there. Yeah, I've never seen one like this. What is it? It must be a new type of grenade developed by the Russians. From what I can tell, it's a non-lethal weapon that uses a flash of light and intense sound to overpower the senses of human targets. You can probably use that grenade to knock out the enemy without killing them. It might prove useful. Uh, Mont, thanks for the gift subs again. Uh, anything to say about this knife? I see you've got the survival knife equipped. The survival knife is a necessity in the field. Press the weapon button to swing the knife. Press it repeatedly to perform a combo attack. The knife lets you kill an enemy silently, so you should find it useful when the situation calls for stealth. In addition to fighting the enemy, you can also use the knife to capture wild animals. That one knife can provide you with everything you need to survive in the field. Use it well. So here's another little detail regarding the radio system in MGS3. The more calls you do with your support team, the more information you unlock related to them. And the more pictures you unlock. Um, like right now, we just unlocked the boss's fifth image which comes with some extra information as well. When you aim your handgun in first person view, align the front sight and the rear sight of the gun with the Talks target. Talks about the motion cap fire. actor, voice actor. Stalking is a movement technique that eliminates even the sound of your footsteps. 
Stalking involves putting your weight on your rear foot, then stepping forward slowly with your front foot. We only get five uh, pictures for the boss, just because she doesn't stay around for long like the other characters. We get a lot more with the other characters, up to seven. Uh, anything to say about the mic, boss? Ah, you've got a directional microphone. The directional microphone is a high-performance... No bikini, device. boss. When you equip it, you'll go into first-person view, where the microphone will pick up sounds in whichever direction it's facing. By pointing the microphone into the forest, you can sometimes hear the footsteps of enemy soldiers lurking beyond the trees. In jungle combat, Success depends on how well you can sense the enemy's presence. Use it wisely. <laughs> yes, stalking, of course. The boss was uh, gave me the stalking tutorial call there. I skipped through it. In MGS1, of course, Miller teaches you how to stalk by putting your socks over your shoes. Giving you all of these complex instructions about how to do something that's actually impossible to do in the game. In MGS1, you can't even walk normally. You can't even do this in MGS1. All you can do is run or this. So that stalking call in MGS1, it always seemed to me like some kind of game design fantasy. You know, something Kojima wanted to put in the game, but something that he just couldn't. But now, a few years later, and the dream becomes a reality. Not only can you run, walk, but if you use the D-pad, you can even stalk. Enemies will hear you in this game if you just walk up behind them like this. But if you stalk, they won't hear. You only really need to stalk when you're in caution phase. If you're just in normal phase like this, Outside of a caution, your CQC range will always overpower their hearing range. If you run right up to them and they hear you, you can CQC them before they can trigger an alert. But if you're in caution, they will trigger an alert as soon as they turn around to see you. So, in caution, it's uh, much wiser to actually stalk. Uh, I think I'm going to kill myself. So, as I was saying before, the reason we do that is to reset the boss's calls. So now we can do those weapon calls again later on with Sigint and get some different information. Uh, let's eat something. We're getting a little bit hungry here. You can crouch walk if you play the DS version of this game. There is a Nintendo DS version of MGS3. And you can crouch walk and run in that game, apparently. I haven't played the DS version. I see you where This is a solo sneaking mission. Or the, uh, the 3DS. Yeah, whatever the fuck it is. I don't know anything about Nintendo DS's. <laughs> Choose battle fatigues that match the surrounding environment. The most effective camouflage is attained by... Yeah, 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 yeah. It takes more... Camouflage is about... Hunter's... To place a weapon, the sooner you find the enemy, the better you. When you aim your handgun, stalking is a movement technique that. 
Yeah, there's the stalking one. In the jungle, it's absolutely crucial to keep your position secret from the enemy. Sometimes even the smallest sound can be enough to give you... Huh, it seems like there might actually be some interesting stuff in that stalking call. I'm going to kill myself again. I want to hear what she has to say there for the stalking call. Some of the calls in this game are very deceptive, you know? They seem like they're just tutorial calls with, with nothing interesting in them. But some of them are actually interesting. Some of the tutorial calls are interesting. I see you're wearing the leaf pattern cap. This is a solo sneaking mission. There's no one out there to support you. You'll need to be more than just a soldier. Choose battle fatigue. It takes more than just clothes to make a good... Yeah, 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 yeah. Camouflage is about blending in with... Na Hunters have... To place a... The sooner you find the enemy, the... When you aim your hand... She doesn't want to teach me about stalking anymore. Stalking is hey. a movement technique that eliminates even the sound of your footsteps. Stalking involves putting your weight on your rear foot, then stepping forward slowly with your front foot. Before putting down the front foot, use the tip of your foot to check for dangerous objects or branches that might create a noise when stepped upon. Once you've determined the spot is safe to step on, slowly lower your foot to the ground, placing it down from the outside edge first, and then slowly lowering your weight onto the foot. Throughout the entire process, you have to strain your calves to retain balance. But all you need to do is press the directional <laughs> button in the direction you wish to move. When stalking, you can move without creating sound with your footsteps. And since your posture is low while stalking, you are that much less likely to be spotted by the enemy. Since you move cautiously while stalking... Yeah, right, whatever. Okay, there isn't really anything too interesting about that. I think it was just when I saw that uh, silence from Snake in the middle of the call. I was like, huh, what's going on there? But no, he's just fucking grumbling for no reason. He's just thinking. He's just grumbling. In the jungle, it's absolutely crucial to keep your position secret from the enemy. Sometimes even the smallest sound can be enough to give your position away and get you killed. You'll have to make sure your weapons and equipment don't make noise bumping around. Use tape to secure metal objects and other items. Select map. Keep in mind that your weapons and equipment each have their own weight. Storing a heavy item on your person will cause your stamina to drain more quickly. If you're getting tired or want to conserve your stamina, it's a good idea to put any items you're not going to use back into your backpack. There is one weapon greater than any other in battle. Do you know what that is? Yeah. What? Do we have to go through this again? Yes. Will. An unflinching will to survive, no matter what. Exactly. The will to carry out your mission and return home alive will see you through even the most desperate of situations. It's the most potent weapon in your arsenal. Don't forget that, no matter what. Treetops, bushes, hollow logs. There are plenty of places in nature you can use to hide yourself. Search each area. Ca yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to survive in the jungle, you're going to need to hone all of your senses. An unnatural movement in the undergrowth, a tiny shadow peeking out through the trees in the distance. Always keep an eye out for any signs of the enemy's presence. Your sense of hearing is equally important. Visibility is poor in the jungle. So you've got to learn to pick up the enemy's presence from the sounds you hear around you. Always be listening for that one snap of a twig among the chirping of the birds and the babbling of the brooks. Your sense of smell is also important. Body odor, sweat, gunpowder, food. These faint smells wafting in the wind will tell you where the enemy... Uh, no. No? I can't smell. You? What now? I can't smell. Not at all. Nope. Not even a little bit. Not a thing. Oh. Well then, you'll just have to trust in your instincts as a gamer. 
<laughs> yeah, because we can't smell. The player cannot smell the world of this game. We can hear it. We can see it. But we can't smell it. If you rapid fire the assault rifle, the recoil of the gun will cause your shots to stray from their intended targets. Firing from a crouched position or while lying on your stomach will stabilize the recoil and keep your hits more consistent. Now I'm just thinking of uh, Kojima in, with one of his previous games, he did actually want the player to be able to smell the game. Uh, he wanted Snatcher to emanate the smell of blood. You know how Snatcher is like a detective murder mystery game and you investigate crime scenes? He wanted you to smell the blood of those crime scenes. And I forget what the idea was. Exactly. Let me just Google it real quick. Snatcher, Kojima, smell blood. Yeah, Kojima's idea for the PC-88 version of Snatcher was to coat the floppy disk in a special paint that would melt when it got hot and release the smell of the crime scene. <laughs> Amazing. Hold on, let's see if I can find some of the actual quotes. Hold up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't, th yeah, here's a quote. I don't think people know what floppy disks are anymore. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, here's the one that became the album jacket for New Order's Blue Monday. And he posts uh, a New Order cover. I wanted to plant gimmicks and surprises in the game, even when replacing the disc. This is the story. It wasn't implemented in brackets. I told you some time ago, going to a murder scene in Snatcher... Floppy disks get hot from the heat made inside the PC, so I printed a dying message on the surface of the disk using paint that changes color with heat mixed with iron, in brackets. When you smell blood and pull out the disk, you see the message. Oh, you were, you were also going to, like, get a solution written on the disk after it melted? Shape memory alloy. <laughs> of course, he uh, also worked on Boktai. Boktai being the game where you actually had to go outside to charge your weapon with the solar sensor that came on the game cartridge. Boktai came with a solar sensor. So the player would have to go outside and charge their solar gun with the real-life sun. Boktai is a really cool game. Boktai plays around a lot with time-of-day mechanics. You know how this game has lots of that sort of stuff tied to the in-game clock? How, how your food will go rotten while you're not playing the game? Uh, you come back a week later and the end has died of old age. Shit like that. Boktai kind of takes that to the next level where it has just has loads of mechanics and weird shit that revolve around the time of day um, you know much of the games revolves around the sunlight the daylight needing to charge your solar gun with with the sun uh, it's a strange game cool game Boktai <clears throat> I played it 
uh, for the first time was when was it la was it last year? No, I think it was a couple of years ago now. Uh, I played it on emulator and cheated. You can cheat on emulator and uh, charge up your solar gun just by opening up one of the menus. There you you have an option on the emulator to just charge the solar gun. If you want to watch that playthrough, it should be on my YouTube channel. I think it's there. I think the full playthrough is there. My first Boktai playthrough. Even while hanging, you can fire your hand. <clears throat> Hold on, let me scroll up here. Kojima making gamers touch grass and feel the sun on their skin by any means necessary. Unironically true, I think. Kojima really does want his audience to stop playing his games and go outside. Forget about us. Live for yourself. He made MGS1 for all the fat kids that thought they were doomed because their parents were fat. He said, no, no, you don't have to be like your parents. Your genes don't control you. You can go outside and lose that weight. Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north, so head in that... There's a NES game where you have to find the secret message on a letter that comes with the game. Oh, cool, this NES. How's it going, man? Good to see it. I didn't listen. <laughs> uh, let's do another save call. You want to save? Death Stranding really made me want to go outside. Out of all of his games, Death Stranding really made me want to go hiking. Snake, have you heard of It Came From Outer Space? Yeah, you told me already. So this astronomer sees a meteor, but it's really an alien spaceship, right? And the aliens start replacing the townspeople with clones and forcing them to help repair the ship. The 3D effects were quite realistic. I've got all the real I can handle here in the jungle. No, you don't get it precisely because it's realistic with the images jumping out of the screen at you it makes for a nice escape from reality i have to admit it made my eyes tired but it was really intense unfortunately they don't make very many of those movies anymore when did it come out i was still in college so probably about 10 years ago guess i'm out of luck then you know they're coming out with household versions of video cassette recorders one day you'll be able to see old movies anytime you want It'll be like having a movie theater in your own home. Really? It's like if you had a record with movie film etched onto it instead of music. It'll work the same way. You're kidding. No, really. And someday they might make movies where you control the characters yourself. Sounds like magic. It'll happen. Make sure you stay alive to see it, Snake. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, let's keep going with Zero's calls. We have a good few more to get here. Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north, so head in that direction. <clears throat> Snake, that region is inside the enemy's area of control. I know. Time for the real deal. The enemy is running regular patrols. You don't know when or where you might run into them. Use camouflage prudently and proceed with caution. Snake, camouflage uniforms alone are not enough. You'll need to put on face paint as well. Snake, camouflage and face paint alone won't make you... Shut the fuck up! Major, you said the enemy was KGB, right? I did. 
What unit are they from? The Sixth Directorate? No, the Ninth Directorate. The Ninth? Yes. But I thought that was... Exactly. It's the unit that protects the Kremlin and provides bodyguards for high-level VIPs. But they're assigned to protect party and government figures. I thought that only meant high-ranking officials and their families. And now they're being sent out to stand watch over a field exercise? That's the idea. What's really going on? I don't know. <sighs> what I do know is that the director of the Ninth Directorate is a well-known protege of Khrushchev. The Premier may have wanted to assign this mission to someone he knew he could trust. So he can't trust any other units? Ever since the withdrawal from Cuba, Khrushchev's position has been getting weaker day by day. This secret test is an act of desperation by a cornered man. If nothing else, the completion of Sokolov's new weapon in this test should help re-establish Khrushchev's authority in Moscow. So what you're saying is, there's also a good chance that whoever doesn't want to see that happen is going to try and interfere. Most likely, Khrushchev must have anticipated this and sent his most loyal unit, his trump card, to make sure that all goes well. Yeah, our very own Raguchi uh, went on a trip to Iceland recently because of Death Stranding. So it seems like it has inspired people to go on pretty lengthy trips. I think I saw... A, uh, who is it? Adam Online, another MGS content creator. He went on a trip to Iceland as well. I think he documented it on YouTube. Documented the whole trip. Raguchi posted a lot of pictures from his trip on my Discord. It was really interesting to see some of them. Like one of the... He went to visit some huge crater, which seemed like an obvious um, thing that they got the void outs from. Obvious bit of in, an obvious bit of inspiration. The, uh, the black sand beaches as well. Some of the pictures that he took were just, like, straight out of the game. In the two years since Sokolov's asylum operation, I've spent all my time making preparations. And now is the time to show some results. Fox is a next-generation espionage organization designed to update us for 21st century operations that I propose to the CIA. Fox sends individuals who excel in espionage and special tactics on solo sneaking missions like this one. A next generation unit that combines the skills of special forces units like the SAS and Green Berets with the know-how of an infiltration and espionage unit. Military politics never was my strong suit. What I'm trying to say is stealth. This is a stealth mission, crucial to the coming Cold War. The CIA director has always frowned upon Fox, but if this mission succeeds, Fox will be added to the CIA as an official unit. I intend to make Fox the leader in special operations. And to that end, this mission must succeed. Right. I'm counting on you, Snake. All right, all right. Snake, the Soviet troop. Yeah, right, whatever, whatever. Snake, I don't... Snake, there are other ways. Snake. In most areas. We're getting close to the end of Zero's calls now. Major, tell me about Sokolov's past work. Hmm. I assume you already know that Sokolov was the developer of the multi engine cluster. The multi engine cluster is exactly that a system for fitting a single rocket with multiple engines. The Vostok rocket, for instance, had 32 engines. With the technology they had, it was difficult for the Soviets to develop large engines with massive thrust. So instead, they decided to focus on using multiple smaller engines to achieve the desired thrust. With this method, though, maintaining the fuel balance between the various engines was a major problem. Sokolov was the man who provided the solution. And that's what earned him the job as the head of the design bureau? Apparently so. So this secret weapon is some kind of ballistic device? That's my best guess. We don't know for sure, but... You'll find out soon. As soon as I get Sokolov out of here. I'm counting on you. <clears throat> I'm just reading something again from this Snatcher article related to Kojima. Uh, he's talking about, um, like, unique ways to use vibration. 
Uh, he's talking about Mantis. And then he brings up Naomi's vibrating massage. You know when Naomi gives you that vibration massage in the cell in MGS1? Well, he said that he apparently had to get approval from Sony for this. <laughs> what, did they think it was going to be, like, too sexual or something? You know, Snake's response there is like, ah, you know, you're kind of getting a bit frisky. I have to check with Sony to get their approval for this. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's do another save call. Make sure we're keeping up to date. Want to save? Hold on a sec. Hey, Snake. Have you ever seen Forbidden Planet? No, can't say I have. It's about this expedition that goes to the planet Altair IV in an ultra-fast spaceship. When they arrive, they meet the survivor of the last expedition, Dr. Morbius. Dr. Morbius was exploring the planet along with his daughter, Altera, and the versatile Robbie the Robot. Ignoring the doctor's warnings, the expedition team is suddenly attacked by an invisible creature called the Monster from the Id. The special effects they used for the science stuff were really neat. I wish I had a robot like Robbie that could make anything I wanted it to. I'm more interested in that invisible monster. If I were invisible, I wouldn't have to bother hiding or wearing camouflage. Maybe someday you'll be able to turn invisible. Yeah, that'll be the day. Um... I didn't get the thermal goggles. Let's get the thermal goggles. Just for the hell of it. Tasty. No. Ooh. Oh, I do have another suppressor. Nice. They're very generous. So that I could become the emperor among detonation devotees. You're nothing but a common criminal. How dare you! I'm an artist! Uh, okay, let's go back to where we were. Does boss, does she tell you about the pentazamin and the life med as well? The bug juice? Oh, was he talking about Snatcher recently as well? Yeah. The gun you're using is a test model of a suppressor-equipped pistol currently in development by the Navy that's been modified by the CIA into a tranquilizer gun. The suppressor-equipped pistol it's derived from is itself being developed for use by special forces based on the M39. The Mark 22. That's what they're going to call it if they decide to adopt it for official use. It uses a slide lock mechanism that will keep the firing sound down to a minimum. But I'll have to reload it by hand every time I fire, right? Right. You won't be able to fire multiple shots at once, so make every shot count. 
Aim for the enemy's vital spots. There's talk of designing the Mark 22 to accommodate special subsonic rounds, but for this mission, you'll be using specifically designed tranquilizer rounds. In a way, these tranquilizer rounds are like miniature syringes. When one of them strikes a target, the impact causes a needle contained within to shoot out. At the same time, chemicals inside the round are mixed to create a gas, which pushes the plunger and injects the tranquilizer into the target. You can knock out an enemy immediately by shooting them in the head, but if you shoot them in the arm or leg, the tranquilizing agent will take some time to set in. Aim carefully. Hey, uh, I already went to see it, Storm. Um, I was fairly mixed on it. I wasn't super crazy about it, but I think I might watch the director's cut as well. Just because it seems to be pretty significant. Like adding in a whole extra hour and a half to the film, I think it is. So, yeah, kind of interesting that they cut an hour and a half from the film for the theatrical release. I could definitely see it being better with certain aspects of it being more fleshed out or, you know, having more room to breathe. Yeah, I might have waited as well, Storm, if I knew the director's cut was going to be that much longer than the theatrical cut. You know, because oftentimes it's just a couple of scenes or it's just a few minutes, but it's like a whole fucking film's worth added onto it. Those things you're wearing, those are... Thermal goggles. Some kind of electronic gadget that shows the distribution of heat sources in image form. I know they're based on the same principle behind the FLIR system on gunships, but to think they actually made it small enough to carry with you. They're not just making good rockets, huh? Never underestimate the power of Soviet science. Tell me about it. In any case, those thermal goggles should allow you to easily see through enemy camouflage and spot traps. Just don't leave them on for too long, or you'll drain the batteries. Kingdom of Heaven was a different movie with the director's cut. I think Ridley Scott does this a lot with his films, from what I've seen. Or at least his films over the last decade or so, where he'll have, you know, where his director's cuts will be, you know, will add significantly to the film. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forgot what I wanted to do with the boss. Yeah, I can't remember. Does she talk about bug juice? Let's see. You said the enemy is equipped with AK-47s, didn't you? The AK-47 is the official assault rifle of the Soviet Army. It's employed not only by the Soviets, but throughout the entire Eastern Bloc. It uses 7.62 millimeter by 39 ammunitions, with a magazine capacity of 30 rounds. The AK is reliable, precise, powerful, and easy to handle. In short, one of the best assault rifles there is. Don't even think about getting into a one-man firefight against an enemy unit equipped with AKs. Avoid battle as much as possible. Are we clear? Yes, ma'am. You mentioned the enemy was also carrying grenades. Yeah, yeah. I don't think she does comment on the bug juice. What about the pentazamin? When you see an enemy... Nah. Your ultimate... Okay, now we'll kill ourselves again. We want to get these same calls later with Sigint. We're going to be super thorough. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think we are almost done. We still have a few more calls to do, though. Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north, so head in that direction. 
circle. With an equipped weapon in overhead view, press and hold the. The degree to which you move the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Part of your mission is to demonstrate to the brass the core concepts behind Fox. Leave no evidence. That's the essence of Fox, and avoid engagement with the enemy. Understood. Not only that, I mean leave nothing behind, including weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, even bodily waste. Yeah. When I do my business, I bury it good. What? What's wrong? That's the American way. American way for what? To handle defecation. You're gonna bury it? Yeah. Bring it home with you. What? That's what we did in SAS. The US Army is sloppy. They do things well, but not perfectly. Here in Fox, we're doing things my way. Got it? Yes, sir. Snake, if you... Equip food. Snake. Major, didn't you say that the boss was in the SAS with you? Yes, we formed the 22nd SAS Regiment together. When the SAS, the British Special Air Service, was first established, they invited the boss on board as a special advisor. In fact, you might say it was the boss who put together Rayforce and L Detachment, which laid the groundwork for today's SAS. You won't find her name in the history books, but her contributions were many and great. Yeah, the real heroes are never made public. Not in our line of work, anyway. The dummy run on Heliopolis and the nighttime raids on German air bases in North Africa were her idea as well. Yes. She was always one step ahead of the rest of us, both in thought and action. It's true what they say. Who dares wins. The motto of the SAS. Precisely. The motto itself is a tribute to her service. Needless to say, the SAS has become a model for special forces units all over the world. In that sense, the boss really is the mother of special forces. Snake, let me explain. After you've grabbed, press the crawl button. Come on, Snake. Remember that, Major. What about my code name? You mean Naked Snake? Yeah. What does it mean? It's because snakes slither through the grass unnoticed to those around them. No, I mean the naked part. It means without embellishment, devoid of a specified quality. In other words, basic. Why is that my code name? I explained that the Virtuous Mission is designed to test the effectiveness of Fox, right? Right. And the procedure used for this mission will represent the modus operandi of Fox for future missions. In other words... The essence of Fox. Naked and pure. Exactly. And there's the fact that you went in practically naked. No weapons, no equipment. I see. Means more than I realized. Yes. <laughs> clever, isn't it? But don't leave yourself naked to the enemy. Roger that. So there we go. We finally learn about his code name. At the start of the game, he's, Snake asks about his code name, and he says, I'll tell you when the time is right. But he'll only ever tell you in this optional call. It's kind of interesting. He tells you they first talk about it in a scripted, mandatory call. But you can only ever get the follow-up in an optional call. It seems to kind of tie in with the whole idea of the Cobra unit as well. You know, he says they're naked and pure, devoid of a specific quality, without embellishment, pure, basic. Uh, and obviously all the Cobra unit members are the opposite of that. They all have their very specific quality. And later on, when we get to the bridge scene, Volgan asks the boss, are we taking him with us? No, this one is still just a child. Too pure for us Cobras. He has not yet found an emotion to carry into battle. So it all seems to tie in with that. The, uh, we learned that the, the first area of the game as well is the Virgin Cliffs. Which again is probably supposed to tie in with Naked Snake's character. What they say about the, the code name, Naked and Pure, the Virgin Cliffs, the Virtuous Mission, Morally Good, Morally Pure, Righteous.
Anything else? Zero? Snake, certain enemy soldiers are equipped with radios. These signalers can use their radios to tra- Yeah, 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 yeah. It's possible to destroy the radio that enemy correspond- Then at the start of Operation Snake Eater, when we first encounter the boss, she has that line. What does she say? You know, where she just- or where she just tells Snake to go home. This isn't America. There's no need to prove that you're virtuous here. Uh, we're almost done here with Zero. Hopefully. Snake? Snake? I recommend against leaving the body- Yeah, 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 yeah. Snake? Snake, I've completed the double check on the Fulton recovery system. Any problems? None. Leave your recovery to us. Excellent. I suppose I should explain the procedure once more before the actual maneuver. No. I see. Well, the Fulton recovery system allows for rapid recovery of personnel from enemy territory. And it's perfect for these kinds of special operations. Basically, how it works is the plane flies by and snags a nylon lift line that the soldier has grabbed onto and that's been elevated by a balloon. The Fulton recovery system was first designed in the 1940s as a method of picking up mail for the American Postal Service. During the Korean War, that system was redesigned to recover personnel. Jack, an ancillary organization to the CIA. Yes, good old Jack. It stands for Joint Advisory Commission Korea. Isn't that something? <laughs> so, Jack first used the Fulton surface-to-air recovery system to extract agents from North Korea and mainland China. Let's go over the procedure once more, to be on the safe side. First, the plane drops a canister about the size of a coffin to you. Inside, you'll find a balloon, a 1,500-foot cable, and a harness that attaches to your suit. Take the items out, attach the line to your suit, fill the balloon with helium, and send the line up. The plane will approach at 125 miles per hour. Snag the cable just below the balloon with a hook on the nose of the aircraft and whisk you away. Assuming the pickup is successful, you'll be reeled in with a winch and pulled to safety into the rear of the aircraft. Got it? Mm. Snake? Yeah, I got it. I got it real good. Were you listening? Yeah. All right, then. I got it real good. Okay, now I just want to find one particular call with paramedic, and then I think we can finally continue. I see you've got yourself a Baltic hornet's nest. Baltic hornets are a variety of hornets that inhabit that area. The difference between them and other hornets is that they produce honey in their nests. Inside the nests are larvae, pupa, and adults. You can eat them all. In particular, the honey you find inside the nest is delicious and full of nutrients. It's easy to digest and helps pep you up when you're feeling tired. In short, it's the perfect survival food. Honey can also be used as a burn ointment. When honey is applied to a burn, it creates a protective coating over the skin. When you knock down a hornet's nest, a burn ointment will appear along with it, so don't forget to pick it up. Of of course, the hornets aren't going to give up their nest without a fight. If you knock a nest down, a large swarm of hornets will come flying out, so be careful. Snake, that area should be inhabited by tree frogs. The tree frog is a green frog that's found throughout Asia. It's arboreal, spending most of its time in shrubs and bushes. Use the tranquilizer gun to catch one alive. I bet you could scare an enemy good if you toss one at him. But the tree frogs that live in that jungle are a lot bigger than ordinary tree frogs. They've got an appetite, huh? You've got a one-track mind, don't you? But seriously, that is one theory. However, there are people who think it's a mutation caused by nuclear testing and waste from the research facility. Do you think they're safe to eat? Is that all you ever think about? <laughs> what else is there? Lots. Like what? Like why a frog would get so big in the first place. Whether it's a temporary phenomenon created by a unique environment, or a permanent mark of evolution, or a product of the toxic waste coming out of the research facility. If it is the waste that's causing it, then it means humans are interfering with the ecosystem. It really makes you think about the changing relationship between... This isn't interesting. Oh, fine. Be that way. So, how about it? You mean, is it edible? Yeah. 
Hmm. Well, I guess it's probably okay. Probably. I don't know. The guide doesn't say anything. A pretty useless guide, if you ask me. Well, try one for dinner and you can help improve it. Legendary, thank you for the four. If I didn't thank you earlier, cheers. You should be able to find Siberian ink cap mushrooms growing in that area. The Siberian ink cap is a mushroom from the ink cap family. Its life cycle is transitory. As soon as the spores mature, the cap starts to turn black, liquefy, and melt away. And that's why they call it an ink cap? That's right. It doesn't really turn to liquid, but you get the idea. In its immature state, before it melts away, it's valued as a source of food. Just be sure not to eat them while you're drinking alcohol. Why's that? Ink caps contain coprin, which inhibits the function of aldehyde dehydrogenase. This prevents the body from breaking down alcohol, causing a buildup of acetaldehyde. Meaning? Meaning it will give you the hangover from hell. Oh. Wait a minute. What? You think I'd drink alcohol in the middle of a mission? Wouldn't you? Hell no. Well, I'm knocking a shot back now. What? Just teasing you. No. Oh, come on. Where's your sense of humor? I need a drink. The gauge below your life gauge is your stamp. Eat food. To eat. Paramedic. What's up? Are you a medic or a doctor? I'm a well-respected physician. Or I was until I joined the CIA. How is your reputation? My what? Your reputation. Oh, that. How was it? Why? Don't you trust me? That's not what I meant. Fine, then. Uh -huh. So? So what? Your reputation. How was it? My! You're relentless! Hey, I'm a snake, so... My reputation is spotless. I'm highly skilled, patient, and good-looking to boot. Everybody wanted to see me. What else would you expect? Hmm. No, seriously. Incidentally, her nickname back then was Quack. Major! Is that true? Hmm, is what true? About your nickname. No! Well, maybe a few people did call me that. So you were a quack? No. Well, yes and no. I mean, in a sense I was, but then again I wasn't. <laughs> Snake, her skills as a doctor are beyond reproach. You have my word on that. Yes. That's exactly what I was trying to say, Snake. Then why did they call her a quack? It's because she... Never mind that. It doesn't matter. We've got a job to do and we have to stay focused. Besides, my past doesn't have anything to do with the mission, and... Because she never shuts up. Yes, that's it. No, that's not it. Snake, tell him that's not true. <sighs> Say something. I'd better get back to the mission. Yes, you do that. <laughs> Just a minute. Snake, don't you hang up on me. Troller, thank you for the 49. Maru, thank you for the 18. You'll find a fruit called the Yabloko Maloko growing in that Damn, area. there's lots of shit in this area. Y Yablo, what now? Yabloko Maloko. It's a Russian name that roughly translates as milk apple. It's a type of star apple. The juice is thick and sweet, like milk, hence the name. And if you cut one in half lengthwise, you'll see a star-shaped ring radiating out from the center. Hence the star apple. Right. The star-shaped part has a gelatinous texture and is said to be especially tasty. Sounds useful. You're welcome. For once. Did you say something? No, uh, back to the mission. If you have any qu- Snake. Snake. The Snake. Snake. I want her, I want him to ask her about the great escape. Snake. 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 Say snake. About that helmet and oxygen. Oh yeah, and this one. Right after you parachuted in. Oh, those? Those are the helmet assembly and oxygen system assembly I used to make the halo jump. The helmet is fitted with a bayonet fastener that attaches to the oxygen mask. It's also got earphones and a boom mic. I'm not interested in all that stuff. So why did you bring it up? It reminds me of something. Reminds you of something? 
Yeah. The mask? Yeah, but I can't remember what it is, and I can't stop thinking about it. That's what you've been thinking about? Yeah, every time I'm about to remember it, it slips away from me again. Don't you just hate that? Mm-hmm. I know I've seen it somewhere before. Any ideas? MGS2? How would I... That's it! What? The fly! The fly? Yeah, it finally came to me. You look just like him. Ah, oh, I feel better. The fly? From the movie, The Fly? You've never seen it? No. Jeez, where have you been? It's about this scientist who's conducting teleportation experiments when he gets mixed up with a fly and ends up with the fly's head attached to his body. Never heard of it. Mm, that's too bad. It's a good movie. Paramedic. Hmm? You said you like movies, right? I love them. About the Major's code name. Major Tom? Yeah. He sounded like he wasn't sure whether or not Tom was the name of the tunnel that worked in The Great Escape. So I heard. So was it? Was it what? Was Tom really the name of the tunnel that worked? Right. So it was Tom. Maybe. Maybe? I don't know. Why don't you know? Why should I know? You watch a lot of movies, don't you? Yeah. But you've never seen The Great Escape? No. Why not? It didn't look interesting. <laughs> You don't watch movies that don't look interesting? That's right. And yet you've seen The Fly. The Fly looked interesting, and it was. Hmm. Something wrong. Nothing. Tell me, what other kind of movies do you like? Let's see. There's The Quarter Mass Experiment, and It Conquered the World, and Earth vs. the Spider. Oh, and Mondo Kane. Hmm. Did I say something weird? Forget it. Hmm. Yeah, so the subtitles just bug out completely for that call. That's another HD collection issue. We'll find out later that her favorite monster comes from one of those movies she mentioned. It conquered the world. The Venusian. Which she compares to Raiden later on, to the Rykov mask. When you get her... Okay, I think... Let's save again. Do you want to save? It's just insane the amount of optional calls that there are to do on the Virtuous Mission. My god. Uh, I think I still need to get the one about the Halo Jump with zero. And... I think then we can finally continue. Snake, have you seen Earth versus the Spider? Nope. It's about this spider that suddenly mutates into a giant monster. They bring it into the city in a state of hibernation, but it wakes up and starts wrecking the place. So why did the spider turn huge? I told you, it suddenly mutated. Yeah, right. Snake, it's people like you that take all the fun out of watching movies. Always nitpicking and taking things too seriously. Honestly, why even bother? Look, the important thing isn't that it got big. Then what is important? The fact that there's a huge spider destroying the city. Suspend your disbelief. That's the whole point of movies. All right, zero. You can get it. Tell me about this halo jump. Circle. Compliment me on my halo jump, please. Snake. In the. Move the. If you. Bye. You did an excellent halo jump. Thank you. Not really. I didn't land in the right spot. A jumper who lost his pack on the first real halo jump. That'll make a good story for you. Who cares? There are no records of your operations. I know, but... What? You're embarrassed? No, I'm not embarrassed. It's the boss, isn't it? Yeah. What about the boss? Nothing, paramedic. Doesn't sound like nothing. Nothing to do with the boss, I mean. It has something to do with the boss, but you don't want to say so. Yeah, kind of. I understand, Snake. The boss has done a lot of work on the military study of Halo jumps. And Snake here wanted to give a perfect performance on the first real jump. You know, to show respect to the mother of the technique. Major! Snake, uh, I thought you were over and out. <laughs> wow, is that right? You got something to say. No. 
I bet you do. Not really. I just think it's kind of sweet of you to think like that. I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or an insult. It's a compliment, Snake. So tell me, is it true? What? Not that. Is it true that the boss really worked on research for Halo jumps? Oh, that. Yes, it's true. Halo stands for High Altitude Low Opening. It's a jump technique developed for covert insertions into enemy territory, just like the area you're in. A plane flies at 10,000 feet or above to avoid detection by ground forces, and the jumper free falls until he's within a thousand foot altitude above the target area, when he finally opens his chute. By using this technique, the chances of revealing the parachute landing to the enemy are marginal. The halo technique was originally developed in France. This was partly due to popularity of parachuting as a sport since the end of World War II. And the boss was an instructor for the research that was carried out there. In 1957, at the JFK Special Operations Center at Fort Bragg, the boss was invited to instruct at the first ever US military halo school. Of course, none of this is on the record, but she's the mother of modern day special forces. All right, let's continue. Uh, let me just catch up with chat a bit here. Oh, nice, Bilbus. You watched Mondo Kane the other day. It was a shock horror, to be sure. Some very disturbing live animal footage. I was honestly quite shocked by it. Really? I'll, uh... I'll have to give that one a watch one of these days. Live animal footage. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I have seen uh, the Quartermass experiment. I think we watched two of those Quartermass films, didn't we, Storm, for movie nights on Discord? Uh, I enjoyed those. Those were good. I think I've probably only seen like a quarter of the films that she mentions. Seen uh, Hitchcock's Rebecca. I love that movie. That's a great film. Um, I haven't seen the original Fly. I've seen Cronenberg's The Fly, the 80s version. I've seen the original Godzilla. I've seen The Great Escape. Dr. Strangelove, trying to think of all the ones that she mentions. Uh, I didn't say quarter mass, I said quarter mass. Oh, is it Quitermass? Quitermass? That's that's how it was pronounced? I don't remember how it was pronounced in the film. <laughs> Major, I've reached the abandoned factory where Sokolov is supposedly being held. This place is a dump. All right, I got it wrong then. I can't see Sokolov from here. Oh, Quay. Quitermass. The security is pretty tight. There are sentries posted around the perimeter. I wonder how many are inside. Your objective, Sokolov, is inside the factory. They should be holding him in a room in the northeast section. Northeast section. Got it. Be careful. Your mission is to bring Sokolov back alive. He must not be exposed to any kind of danger. And do not approach Sokolov while in the alert phase. Right. Oh, and one more thing, Snake. You mean there's more? No, it's just that when you get to Sokolov, I want you to tell him something from me. And that is? Sorry for being so late. Is that all? Yes. 
Understood. Beginning my approach to the target. Um. Okay. Right, I think I'm good. Let's take out these guys first. Oh, nice. Hey, thanks for the shout out. Are those shout outs kind of bugged now in chat? Huh? Oh. Ah! Are those footsteps? No. I just I'm not seeing the, the the thing appear at the top of the screen like I used to. At the top of the chat. You know, that says, like, join us in following 3Dog or whatever. I'm just seeing the message come up in chat, but I'm not seeing the tab at the top anymore. But maybe Twitch have just changed how it works. Maybe if, you, if you've already followed or something, you just don't see it the same way. But, yeah, I appreciate the followers. The followers. The follows. If you're new to what we do here with these marathons, we alternate from month to month. This month we're doing the marathon on this channel. Uh, DRK's channel, and next time we do one of these marathons, it'll be over on my channel. Guys are going to be waking up soon. Uh, here's where we can get the M37. Not really much need for it now. Yeah, I'm not sure if we'll be doing a marathon next month. I'm just not sure if I'll have time to do one. Maybe we're due a bit of a break as well. But yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be away for Christmas. So maybe we'll take it a little bit easier next month. Of course, I'll do my Snatcher playthrough, my yearly December Snatcher Christmas stream. Kind of thinking about doing a full Sekiro playthrough as well. Sekiro. Which I also think might work well as a Christmas game. Because it's a very snowy, wintry game. With all that, with all that slow snow falling on Ashina. I'm kind of in the mood to play Sekiro again. Do like a slow lore playthrough. We'll see. We'll see. I've played it before, yeah, a few times. Uh, so now we have cleared out this whole place. We can approach Sokolov. Do I have a favorite camo in general? Like, nothing to do with camo index or its unique ability? Favorite camo, like, aside from the the abilities? Like, just visually, which is my favorite to look at? Oh, I don't know, really. Um, I like the, the sneaking suit. Um, although, maybe I'm not so crazy about it visually. I, I think I, I just like the contrast with the boss's sneaking suit when you're fighting against her. When you're both wearing the, the black and white sneaking suits. Um, 
I think maybe the Sorrows camo looks cool. His spirit camo. Maybe the Moss camo. And so normally when you approach the door here, you trigger the, the cutscene, right? But if we wear the mask... Check out what happens. No cutscene. Why is that? Snake, when you meet Sokolov, don't go in wearing that mask. Why? He won't like it. Won't like it? No. Why not? Just trust me, he won't. Yeah. You'll need Sokolov's full cooperation to complete this mission successfully. Don't do anything to make him lose confidence in you. When you go in to meet Sokolov, make sure you remove your disguise. Got it? <laughs> Sokolov, uh, one of the many MGS2 haters, I guess. Not a Raiden fan. I won't let you in here! <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of content in this game that plays off the MGS2 backlash. Obviously, when MGS2 first came out, um, it received quite a backlash. And that's what Rykov's whole character in this game kind of revolves around. Where they're playing off the backlash and poking fun in certain ways. And if we go around to the side, now that we know where Sokolov is, if we go around to the other side of his room, see, this is where he is, inside this room here. We can scare him here. <laughs> Please stop. And here's something I prepared earlier. We have a live reticulated python here. Let's let's throw this in. <gasps> oh, I fucked it up and actually clipped through the wall. Immersion ruined. <laughs> okay, that doesn't usually happen. Um but if you actually look in the room here, you can see that there's no one inside, which will also break the immersion. However, this is something that you shouldn't really be able to see. Because originally, the game didn't have this camera. Originally, you only had this camera. So there was no way to see if the room was actually empty. So, yeah, when you use the new camera, it kind of breaks the immersion a bit. The shame they didn't put his model in there. And if we throw a grenade in, we'll just pretend he's there. Yeah, you could even kill him. Lots of people know about the Ocelot time paradox, right? Where you kill Ocelot, but you can also do it with Sokolov. <laughs> Pretty cool.
Freeze. Jesus, why didn't he freeze him? Please don't. Did I uh, do it too early? Pop. In the dick. One shot in the dick. Yeah, that should be enough. Dick shots are like headshots. So another thing that's interesting, once we get to this part of the game, if we try calling the boss, we get no response. However, if we keep trying to call her, something might happen. Boss? That's pretty crazy, right? And there, if you listen really carefully, you can hear that it's the sorrow that's on the other line, that's on the other end. And I always struggle to make out what he says. I think he you hear a different line in the Japanese version. Now you will know the sorrow of, of, of the lives you have ended or something like that. I forget what he says. I always struggle to really make it out, but yeah, that's the sorrow that you're hearing there. So, kind of foreboding. And of course, very soon we will be getting thrown off the bridge and our body lands right beside the skeleton of the sorrow. So we're going to be seeing the sorrow shortly. When we get to the next major cutscene. Yeah, he says one of his lines from the boss fight with him there. I always just forget which one it is, cause it's, and it's always so hard to actually hear what he's saying. But yeah, crazy little detail. Uh, there's another thing we can do here as well. If we leave Razvet and go all the way back to Dramuchi. Yeah, that skeleton down there is the Sorrow. That's the Sorrow skeleton. That's where the boss killed the Sorrow. Hey, what's up, Music Box? Yeah, you can see that he's uh, even wearing the same um, thing, right? And he's holding onto his glasses. I think he's holding his glasses as well. The broken glasses. And you also see the same skeleton at the very end of the Sorrow's boss fight as well. You see his skeleton again during his boss fight. The same turtleneck, yeah. Snake, <clears throat> where are you going? Oh, I, uh... Are you abandoning your mission? Absolutely not. I didn't think so. I didn't think you thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Sokolov is back there in the factory. <laughs> Head back north. Roger. <laughs> So yeah, there's another unique little call if you just decide to go back to Dramuchi and call Zero. <laughs> they like to get quite playful and silly with this game. You know, that kind of reminds me of Ocelot in the next scene with the Ocelot unit. 
you know, or he laughs as, as if to command his men to start laughing. You know, the, the very theatrical laugh that they do when they follow suit. <clears throat> Kaskadar with the 11. Thank you. Um, Potato Cat with the Prime sub as well. Thank you. Over Gamers. Over 30 Gamers with the 8 as well. Thank you. Uh, some wild poos. Thank you for the seven. Uh, are these guys still going to be dead? No, they're not going to be dead. Oh, you assholes. Uh, let me go back and see if I can get some quick ammo. Yeah, I thought I remembered them respawning. Look at these guys. These guys don't respawn. Oh, wow. Talk about easy. MGS3 is so kind compared to MGS2 on its higher difficulties. Fuck you. Uh, I might make a mess of this. Nah, we're good. Oh, he's only coming back now? Who's that? Oh! What's going on? What? Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> Where can I get away with this? Just chilling here. Oh. Oh, he knows. <laughs> Hold on. Messi, I'll take it. I did it two times flawlessly. I'm allowed to fuck it up the third time. You must be so glad. Are you? One of Vulcan's men? You'll never get it from me. No. I'm a CIA agent. I've come to escort you back to the other side of the Iron Curtain. Your CIA? Yeah. I was sent by Major Zero, the man who got you out two years ago. Zero? I have a message from him. What is it? He said to tell you sorry for being so late. Did he now? What does it mean? It means he's a man of his word. We've got no time for this. You have to get me out of here before they arrive. Who's they? Colonel Vulcan of Gru. You in the West know him as Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt? Never heard of him. He's a member of the army's extremist faction, a man who seeks to seize control of the Motherland. 
Ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis two years ago, Khrushchev has been pursuing a policy of peaceful coexistence with the West. Despite resistance and criticism from hawks in the army and the provincial authorities, Khrushchev has managed to suppress the opposition so far. But the failure of his agricultural policies has put him in a precarious position. And on top of that, the tragedy last November. President Kennedy's assassination. Precisely. In a sense, Khrushchev has lost his biggest partner and his power base is rapidly crumbling away. A certain group is plotting to use this opportunity to seize power by rallying the anti-government forces, overthrowing Khrushchev, and installing Brezhnev and Kosygin in his place. The mastermind behind this plot is Colonel Volgin of the Gru. He has control over another secret weapons research facility much like this one, OKB-812, known as the Granin Design Bureau, and is using it to further his plans. But that is not enough to satisfy him. Now he's plotting to seize the secret weapon I have been developing here and use it as leverage in his bid for power. The intelligence says that they are going to make their move during the test. Then, the soldiers outside. Exactly. They wouldn't need that many men just to keep me inside. Their orders were to prevent Colonel Volgin from capturing me. Even if it meant killing me in the process, or so it would seem. Volgin will come, I'm sure of it. You must get me out of here before then. Leave it to me. By the way, your Russian is superb. Where did you learn to speak it? From my mentor. Is that so? America is truly a frightening country. Having second thoughts? No. I have no love for this place. Let's go. Major, this is Snake. Sokolov is safe with me. He's doing fine. No injuries. Good work, Snake. Now hurry up and get Sokolov to the recovery point. We'll rendezvous with you there. Roger. What about the sentries? I had to kill them. There was no other way. But no one will know we were involved. I see. What about the boss? We lost contact with the boss some time ago. What happened? It's probably just a weak signal. Just hurry and get Sokolov out of there. Loads of people will know we were involved. We didn't kill everyone, Snake. Maybe in this area I killed everyone. Maybe that's all that matters. Actually, maybe I did kill everyone that saw me. Huh, maybe he's right, actually. So this is the legendary boss. Huh? Huh? We meet at last. Hmm. 
You. You're from the Ocelot unit of Spetsnaz. Huh. What's a crew soldier doing here? Soldier? He's the Ocelot commander. <laughs> That's Major Ocelot to you. And don't you forget it. Sokolov is ours. Now get out of here. And Ocelot never lets his prey escape. What? I can't say it feels good to kill a comrade, even if it is for the Gru. <gasps> Sokolov, take cover. Huh. You're not the boss, are you? What is that stance? Huh. That gun. <laughs> if you're not the boss, then die. <laughs> Another one. Ejected the first bullet by hand, didn't you? I see what you were trying to do, but testing a technique you've only heard about in the middle of battle wasn't very smart. You were asking to have your gun jam on you, huh? Besides, I don't think you're cut out for an automatic in the first place. You tend to twist your elbow to absorb the recoil. That's more of a revolver technique. You filthy American dog! <laughs> Ah! 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 
But that was some fancy shooting. You're pretty good. Pretty good. Major, do you read me? I read you. Snake, are you all right? I've run into a few snags. These guys were after Sokolov, too. Apparently, they were taking orders from a Gru colonel named Volgan. A Gru colonel? Part of an internal Soviet power struggle, according to Sokolov. Something between the KGB and Gru. Between Khrushchev's supporters and Volgan's. Sokolov was being guarded by the KGB and hunted by Gru? Snake, it sounds like this could be even hotter than Cuba. I don't like it. Something about the whole thing stinks. I agree. You'd better hurry. Sokolov ran off by himself, but I'll catch up to him. We're counting on you. All right, we're back. Hold on one second, guys. Let's see. Uh, let me just make sure I'm up to date with everyone. Kadaskar is the last name I see here still, I think, with the 11. Thank you again, Kadaskar. So here we have Ocelot. We can fool around with him. What are you holding on to here, Ocelot? What are you carrying? A mousetrap. Get it? Because an ocelot is a type of cat, and cats like to catch mice. And ocelot likes to set people up. You get it? Anything else? I don't think he has anything else, does he? Another paradox. Problem solved. Series over. Snake, stay alert. The KGB and Gru both have their sights set on Sokolov. Gru is a military espionage outfit, the intelligence wing of the Soviet Defense Ministry's General Staff Office. It competes with the KGB, which is under the Ministry of Internal Affairs, and the two are always watching each other. Never let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Exactly. Now, added to that rivalry, there's a vicious power struggle going on between the Khrushchev faction and the anti-Khrushchev faction. So Khrushchev is using the KGB, and Volgan and the anti-Khrushchev forces are using the Gru? That's the idea. The two factions are fighting over Sokolov. We're in an extremely dangerous situation here. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Get Sokolov out of there safely. He must not be turned over to the KGB or to the Gru. Sokolov took off in the direction of the rope bridge. Get after him. Hurry! Uh, you're gonna have to wait a second, Zero. Guys, I need to run out to get a food delivery. Uh, I should just be one minute or two minutes. Uh, let me play some music while you wait. Be right back.
Okay, I'm back. I had some complications. I ordered a McDonald's and the uh, the Coke was dripping through the bag, was tearing through the bag. I lost like a quarter of it, maybe. Yeah, the Coke was in a bad state. Uh, let's see. Major, have you been able to contact the boss? No. What about you? No good. You really think it's bad reception? We're looking into it. Major. Snake, you've got more important things to worry about than contacting the boss. Right now, Sokolov is out there wandering around the jungle alone. What are you going to do if he gets caught by the enemy? <sighs> We're still looking into why we lost contact with the boss. I'll let you know as soon as we find anything out. In the meantime, it's your job to find Sokolov and get him to safety. Got it? There was a drink rack in the bag as well, and it's still, it was still fucked up. Um, <clears throat> the rider was on a bicycle, though, so maybe that had something to do with it. Uh, and that's still good. I didn't lose a quarter of it. I think I lost maybe like a fifth of it. It's still pretty good. Get Sokolov out of there safely. He must not be turned over to the KGB or to the group. Sokolov took off in the direction of the rope bridge. Get after him. Hurry! Major, do you know anything about this Gru Colonel Sokolov was talking about? Yes. Who is he? A most dangerous man indeed. His name is Yevgeny Borisovich Volgin. His code name in the West is Thunderbolt. He's gained a reputation as the most brutal and cold-blooded of the Soviet spymasters. During the war, Volgin was assigned to the domestic branch of the NKVD. He was stationed in the rear of the Soviet line to catch and punish any troops who tried to retreat or desert. He's also notorious for his accomplishments in anti-guerrilla operations in the Ukraine and the Baltic states. Apparently, he likes to boast that he disposed of over 100,000 anti-communists. We also know that he was instrumental in putting down the 1953 insurrection in East Germany and the 1956 uprising in Hungary. He is truly a fearsome man. There's no telling what he might be plotting. Be careful. I will. Major, what's this Grand and Design Bureau Sokolov was talking about? OKB-812. It's the same type of top-secret facility as Sokolov's own OKB-754. The director is a man by the name of Alexander Leonovich Granin. He's Sokolov's arch-rival, and the two have competed fiercely against each other since the days of the war. To hear Sokolov tell it, though, the rivalry was really all in Granin's head. In any case, Granin seems to harbor an unusually intense hatred for Sokolov. Knowing that Sokolov was protected under the aegis of Khrushchev, Granin threw in his lot with Volgin, the vanguard of the anti-Khrushchev movement. Apparently, Granin meant to use the funds provided by these opposition forces in order to defeat his old foe. Volgin, for his part, was intrigued by the possibility of using the high-tech weapons Granin created in the fight against Khrushchev. Thus, the two formed an alliance, and Volgin took the Granin Design Bureau under his control. But now, Volgin's got his sights set on Sokolov. Yes, it would seem that he and Granin aren't getting along so well after all. By the way, Snake, what were you doing back there? Back where? You were giving some kind of advice to a Gru commander, weren't you? Yeah. He's your enemy. What the hell were you thinking? Really? What was all that about doing the thing with your hand on the first round or whatever? Whenever he put a new clip in his gun, he'd always load the first round by hand, whether there was a round left in the chamber or not. It's a technique they teach in the Middle East. By making sure there's always a round in the chamber, you eliminate the risk of pulling the trigger with nothing to fire. He must have heard about it from someone or read it somewhere. In any case, he probably wanted to try it out for himself. And he was obviously motivated by vanity to show off his new technique. That's when you make mistakes. The battlefield is an unforgiving place, 
The only techniques you can rely on are the ones you've mastered through experience and practice. Uh-huh. And what were you saying about him being more suited to revolvers? When he fired, he was bending his elbow sharply to avoid the recoil. It looked like he wasn't aware he was doing it, but that habit can be either a fatal flaw or a gift. What do you mean? Automatic weapons use recoil to operate, so if you don't let the recoil hit you, it interferes with the operating cycle of the gun. Basically, he shouldn't be trying to avoid the impact like that. But with a revolver, there's no need to let the recoil hit you. Just the opposite. Avoiding the recoil lets you reduce the strain on your hand and arm. That kid might just be handy with a high-caliber revolver. Handy? Are you listening to yourself? What do you mean? He's the enemy. Why are you giving him advice? Uh, I... Snake. I don't know. For some reason, I couldn't help but point it out to him. Snake, are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite little calls. I always find Snake's reaction there to be quite interesting. <clears throat> like, even he's kind of concerned about his own reaction at the end there. Yeah, like, why did I, why did I do that? And then it makes you wonder, you know, why did he do that? I like to think that maybe he sees something of himself in Ocelot, or, or sees something, yeah, yeah, the, the, that he kind of sees something of himself. Maybe some relation to the boss, given that they're both sons of the boss in different ways. I think it's interesting as well how later on we see the boss scold Ocelot in a in similar in a similar way that she does with Snake. You know the way she disarms Snake, takes his gun apart. She does the same thing with Ocelot later, scolding him like a child. And that's definitely a part of Snake's character as well. The kind of the uh, the child in him. Naked and pure, devoid of a specified quality, not fit to be, not fit to join her and the Cobras. Still just a child. <clears throat> I've seen people theorize as well that maybe it's, it's to foreshadow Snake's aptitude for picking out weirdos in the battlefield, like who he is to become later on in the series. You know, taking in people from any background, no matter where they're from. Like there, they're highlighting, but he's the enemy. Why are you doing this? Why are you teaching him? Maybe foreshadowing the sort of mentor figure he is to become later on in the series. Yeah, it's an interesting call, anyway. <clears throat> Press the action button when you're on top of a branch or in front of a railing to hang down from that spot. This action is called hanging. Sometimes it's advantageous to move while hanging rather than walking on the surface. Also, by hanging, you can hide by staying out of the sight of your enemies. <clears throat> yeah, the boss is Ocelot's biological mother. But then, of course, you have Snake, who is also referred to as the son of the boss, along with the Cobra unit. They're described as her sons. But Ocelot is the only biological son. The others are students. crew has to offer. They're coming for me. I'm finished. Calm down. 
I'll get you out of here, I promise. And we've got some of the best backup we could ask for. Look. That's what they were making you build? Yes. The Shagahod. The treading behemoth. A tank capable of launching nuclear IRBM. It can launch nuclear missiles from that kind of terrain? Oh, yes. And without support from friendly units. A nuclear-equipped tank capable of operating solo. Is that thing finished? No. This is only the end of Phase 1. It won't be truly finished until we complete Phase 2. Phase 2? The weapon's true form. If it is completed and the Colonel gets his hands on it, it will mean the end of the Cold War. The end of the Cold War? Yes. And then the Age of Fear will truly begin. A world war. I had no choice but to cooperate. I didn't want to die. I wanted to see my wife and child again in America. Please, take me to America, quickly. They cannot complete it without my help. Got it. Let's go. Good work, Jack. What are you doing here? Sokolov comes with me. My friends, let us fight together again. I have waited long for this day. We will fight with you once more. Welcome back, boss. Now that all five of us are together, it's time we go to the depths of hell itself. It's raining blood. Is he crying?
Kuabara, Kuabara. Ah, what a joyful scene. Colonel Vogan. Welcome to my country. And to my unit. Boss, what is this? I'm defecting to the Soviet Union. Sokolov is a little gift from my new hosts. Recoilless nuclear warheads. These will make a fine gift for me. This can't be happening. Who is he? Another one of your disciples? Are we taking him with us? No, this one is still just a child. Too pure for us Cobras. He has not yet found an emotion to carry into battle. What are you talking about? Think you can pull the trigger? Seen my face. We can't let him live. If Khrushchev finds out about this, we're finished. He must die. Wait. He's my apprentice. I'll take care of him. <clears throat> Jack, you can't come with us. has been rejected. Are we done here? Now, on to Sokolov's research facility. Shagohad is ours. drift away. My place is with them now. Snake, can you hear me? Yeah, just barely. Snake, 
Listen to me, you need emergency medical treatment. Can you move? You've got to get those wounds treated. Hang in there. All right, let's get you fixed up. Paramedic? Okay, Snake. Just relax and it'll all be over before you know it. Stay with me. I've seen people in worse shape before. Think you can handle it? Major. The boss. She's defected. We'll talk about that later. First, we've got to get you patched up. Okay, here we go. First, open the survival viewer with the start button. If you select cure, you can start the treatment. Healing is divided into treatment using medicine with the item window button and surgical treatment using the weapon window button. Your injuries include a fractured left elbow and rib bone and lacerations on your upper arms, right elbow and abdomen. They need to be fixed using surgical treatment. Move the healing cursor with the left stick to the affected part of your body. Once you've selected the affected area, hold the weapon window button and use the left stick to select the medical item and then press the inner button. With this method, you can use items to help your recovery process. To treat a bone fracture, first secure the affected area with a fastener and then wrap it in bandages. That should do it. For lacerations, you'll need disinfectant to clean the wound, sutures to stitch it up, styptic to slow the flow of blood, and bandages to wrap the wound. If you do everything I mentioned, the wound should heal completely. Understood? Yeah. Stay with me. Go into the survival viewer and treat those wounds. All right. Well, first, we'll actually just take a look around the environment. As we were talking about earlier, the sorrow is here, lurking behind us. You can't see him now, but if we move the camera back, there he is over on the left side. And in the original version of the game, that's all you could really see here during this scene. Because this was the only camera that you had. But now, of course, we have this camera so we can turn it around here to get a better look at him. We'll also get a prompt during the next scene as well. To look through Snake's eyes. And when we get that prompt, we can also get another good look at him. Even from here, you can see him, you can see his glasses. You can see that he's holding his glasses. All right, let's heal these wounds. We have a lot of wounds. Cut, suture, bandage, styptic, disinfectant. Another one with the same thing. Another cut, same thing. Broken bone, we go for the splint and the bandage. Another cut. Another broken bone, splint, bandage. Hey, what's up, Glassy? Good job, Snake. We're coming to get you now. Just stay where you are. We'll drop a recovery balloon. Can you set it up?
<laughs> Excellent. A great success. Thanks to the boss and her cobras, I have both Sokolov and the Shagohad. going to do with the girl who is she apparently she's Sokolov's woman So fast, my dear. A kiss of death. Are you KGB. We may be able to use her. Shall we take her back to the base? Perhaps we should. We have no further use for Sokolov's research facility. I think it's time I gave this marvelous new toy what? a try. Colonel, even if they are our enemies, they're still our countrymen. But it won't be me that pulled the trigger. It'll be our friend, the American defector. You're going to nuke your fellow Russians? <laughs> the Alamo. Colonel!
tree frog And it's so deep the trial to survive Currently flying over the Arctic Ocean, altitude 30,000 feet, approaching Soviet airspace. Arriving at the designated drone launch point. Drone oil pressure and voltage are nominal. Payload oxygen supply is nominal. Power supply to payload antifreeze system shows no problems. No gusts. All systems go for drone detachment. Snake, we can't risk a halo jump this time around. Thanks, Kaz. Airspace security has gotten tighter since we were last here. We can't get as close to the ground as we did during the Virtuous mission. So instead, we'll be using one of our newest weapons. Snake, you're being given an honor on par with Alan Shepard. This is our last chance. Show your patriotism. If you fail, you'll be back in a hospital bed again, waiting for the firing squad. <laughs> So how does it feel to be a patient in one of the most advanced ICUs in the world? Would you do me a favor and tell the suits about visiting hours? I'll never get better with them assaulting me day and night with their questions. Must be part of the top brass's inquiry. More like an interrogation here. According to them, I'm a traitor and an accomplice to the boss's defection. They're just looking for a scapegoat. Does that mean they're after you too? Mm. Let's just say neither one of us is going to be made a national hero out of this. Does this mean Fox is going to die? No. This Fox is still one step ahead of the hounds. The reason I came to see you today... Jack, it's time for Fox to clear its name. What are you talking about? The situation has changed. We've still got a chance to come out of this one alive. Yeah, what kind of chance? Don't get too excited. Here, have a cigar. It's Cuba. This morning, I had a meeting with the CIA. They decided when they're going to execute us? No. Something even bigger. Yesterday, the White House received an unexpected call. President Johnson? Yes, I hear you, Mr. Chairman. It was a hotline call from Khrushchev to President Johnson. From the head of the Soviet Union? That's right. A few days ago, one of our country's main design bureaus, OKD-754, was destroyed in a nuclear explosion. At about the same time, our anti-aircraft radar picked up a signature that appeared to come from one of your military aircraft. Does any of this sound familiar to you? In retaliation, I have placed our armed forces on secondary alert. Depending on your response, I may be left with no choice but to order the military to maximum alert and unleash Armageddon. With the help of your predecessor, I was able to survive the Cuban incident. But my power 
is not as great as it once was. If I am to survive this crisis, I must have your full cooperation. I should have contacted you myself. Did you know that one of our soldiers defected to your country a week ago? No. So you haven't heard then? The man who arranged the defection was a Gru colonel by the name of Yevgeny Borosovich Volgin. Volgin? Of the Brezhnev faction. Go on. Who is the soldier? Her name is the Boss. She's a living legend. During World War II, she was the one who led us to victory in that war. In Russia, you know her as Voyevoda. You mean... the boss? The mother of your special forces? Yeah, that's the one. And she took two miniature nuclear shells along with her. The boss took two miniature nuclear shells? I'm afraid so. I believe they were a gift for her new hosts. The Davy Crockett Atomic Battle Group delivery system was completed two years ago. But serious problems were found with the launcher's range and precision. Although they were mass-produced, they've never been deployed in battle. But Sokolov's research facility was completely wiped out. The whole area is polluted. I can only offer you my deepest condolences over this terrible tragedy. So, the boss, with Colonel Volgen's help, stole two experimental nuclear shells and took them with her as a gift when she defected. Then, shortly thereafter, Sokolov's design lab, a top-secret military research facility, was destroyed by one of these weapons. Am I right so far? Yes, that's correct. And the American government denies any involvement in the affair. Is that right as well? That's correct. We were not involved in any way. Then what was a U.S. military aircraft doing on our radar screen? It was clearly in a violation of our airspace. And yet you say it was not acting under your orders. That's correct. You expect me to believe that this was all the work of a single soldier? I don't know what else to tell you. The army insists that this is all a ploy on your part. I've said it once and I'll say it again, our government had nothing to do with it. And I would like dearly to believe you. However, I'm afraid my power over the military has weakened since the Cuban incident. I will need some kind of proof that this was not the action of the American government. You have one week. You must catch the boss yourselves and recover the remaining nuclear device. Then, you must find some way to prove your innocence. Prove our innocence? Yes. Preferably something painful. Prove to me that this is not... That would explain everything. Colonel Volgen. How about a little co-action? I would not expect too much if I were you. The political situation here is unstable. And Colonel Volkin is a member of the Brezhnev faction, which seeks to topple my government. One week. You have only one week. And if it is not too much to ask, do something about Volkin as well. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. It means nothing. Call it a modest gentleman's agreement to ensure our continued relationship. What if we can't prove our innocence? Then I will be unable to restrain the military. I will be ousted, and they will seek their revenge. A nuclear attack on the United States? I leave the disposal of this situation entirely to your discretion, Mr. President. Disposal? If you fail, it will mean the beginning of a new world war. Put it simply, in order to avoid a full-scale nuclear conflict, we have to prove that America was not involved in that explosion. And eliminating the boss ourselves will prove America's innocence? Right. The higher-ups have decided that you're the only one capable of pulling this off. You were her last apprentice. Screw this one up, 
and we'll both be six feet under. There's no choice. Are the Russians going to be helping us? The KGB has promised to lend us one of their communications satellites so that you and I can talk to each other. That's it? They've also put us in touch with a couple of insiders. Insiders? There was a defection in September 1960. Do you remember it? You mean the two NSA codebreakers who went over to the Soviet Union? Precisely. Since then, they've apparently been training with the KGB for exactly this kind of situation. Their code names are Adam and Eva. I've been told that Adam has infiltrated Vulcan's ranks. I've also arranged for him to provide you with an escape route. You'll need to rendezvous with him when you get there. Control. Unidentified aircraft detected. Altitude 30,000 feet. Exceeding Mach 3. Bearing south. I'm about to lose it. This is Snake. Do you read me? Loud and clear. Glad to see you landed safely. I got blown pretty far off target. Snake, let's go over your mission objectives one more time. Rescue Sokolov. Find out what's happened to the Shagahod, then destroy it. And finally, eliminate the boss. Eliminate the boss? This mission will be codenamed Operation Snake Eater. Because I'll be taking on the boss and her Cobra unit, right? Don't forget about Colonel Volkin. I'm not a hired killer. I know, but that was the Kremlin's demand. Demand? You mean it wasn't just a request? What's it to us if the Khrushchev regime is threatened by the Colonel and his faction? If supporting the current regime helps us avoid a nuclear exchange, then that's what we'll do. And what are the CIA's demands? Our priorities are the rescue of Sokolov and the destruction of the Shagahod. Roger that, Major Tom. Hold on, Snake. What now? I'm changing my code name. It turns out Tom wasn't the most auspicious choice. What do you mean? Well, the truth is, when I chose my code name, I picked the wrong one. The wrong one? Did you ever see the movie The Great Escape? It came out last year. I oh, must have missed that one. Anyway, it's based on a true story about prisoners who escaped from a POW camp in Nazi Germany. The prisoners dig three tunnels as part of their plan, but the Nazis find two of the tunnels before they're finished. The prisoners succeed in escaping by using the last remaining tunnel. The names of those three tunnels were Dick, Harry, and Tom. I get it. You used the name of the tunnel they escaped in as your code name because you thought it would bring you good luck. Yes, that's exactly right. At least, that was the plan. But? But I got the name wrong. The one they escaped in was Harry. Tom was one of the unlucky tunnels. It was discovered by the Nazis before it was finished. I watched the movie again just to make sure. In fact, I even ordered the actual film from the movie company. 
Yeah, it doesn't sound like the greatest name to use. So what should I call you? Hmm. You know, let's just use Zero, like we've been doing all along. All right, then. Major Zero it is. We'll start over from square one. From square zero. My frequency is 140.85. Oh, I almost forgot. Paramedic is with us again on this mission. Is this her last chance, too? If we fail, she'll have her medical license revoked. It's more or less the same kind of fate. Her frequency is the same as during the Virtuous mission, 145.73. She'll be recording your mission data as well, just like the last time. That frequency is also the same, 140.96. And there's one more person on your support team. His name is Mr. Sigint. He's an expert on the latest in weapons and equipment technology. You'll be going up against some of the world's most advanced weaponry when you infiltrate the research facility. If you have any questions, just ask him. His frequency is 148.41. Mr. Sigint, got it. Adam, your KGB contact, is waiting for you at the abandoned factory up ahead. The same factory Sokolov was being held in last week. Yes, meet up with Adam first. He's cleared the way for you to rescue Sokolov. How will I know this Adam guy when I see him? You'll know once you reach the factory. The whole area's been polluted by the fallout from that nuclear blast. No one else would dare come close. The password is, Who are the Patriots? And Lali Lule Lo. Lali Lule Lo. Gotcha. You've been equipped with a 45 for this mission. Be careful, it's noisy. I thought standard Fox procedure was procure on-site weapons acquisition. The circumstances are different this time. You're now on an official mission for the United States government. It would be necessary to make your presence known to a certain extent, to the Khrushchev regime at the very least. But remember, this is still a sneaking mission. Snake, if you fail this mission, it will mean an all-out nuclear war. Keep that in mind and proceed with extreme caution. Understood. Commencing Operation Snake Eater. All right, we're back. Let's introduce ourselves to Mr. Sigint before we do anything else. Yo, you're Snake, aren't you? And you're Sigint? None other. I heard that you're an expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting edge technology. Close. Huh? I am the expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Uh. I'm the guy that designed your trank gun, active sonar, and motion detect. If you want to know anything about weapons or equipment you find in the field, just send me a message and ask. Later. All right, chirpy guy. Volvo with the 99. Thank you very much. PJ with the 75. Thank you. And uh, Vega as well. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Sounds like the Cobra unit's members' names came from the specific emotions they each carry into battle. Emotions? Yeah. For unbearable torment, the pain. For true oblivion, the end. For infinite rage, the fury. For absolute terror, the fear. And for unsurpassed bliss, the joy. The joy? It's another name for the boss, because of the joy she feels in battle, I suppose. Uh. During the war, she had a partner named the Sorrow. Sorrow and Joy. They say there couldn't have been a more perfect pair. The Davy Crockett's that the boss took with her when she defected are mortars that fire nuclear warheads. They're named after Davy Crockett, the hero who died defending the Alamo in the Texan War of Independence. Remember the Alamo. That's right. The warheads are equivalent to between 10 and 20 tons of TNT. Every building within 150 yards of the hypocenter is completely obliterated. But the warheads the boss had with her were some kind of experimental super bomb. So they're actually even more powerful than that. I don't even want to think about what would happen if she used it again. Snake, you know what you have to do. Yeah, I know. 
You're wearing the tiger stripe pattern camouflage, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do we ever get any clues as to who the real Eva is? No, I don't think it is supposed to be anyone, like, significant from the game. I think that's just left open. We do know that it that, that the real Eva was actually a man. Snake, your first task is to meet up with Adam, the contact provided by the KGB. The rendezvous point is the abandoned factory to the north of your current position. Head north. The abandoned factory. That's where I met Sokolov during the Virtuous mission. Correct, but we can't afford to have the same thing happen this time. I know. Like the Virtuous mission, Operation Snake Eater is a solo sneaking mission. There are no units in the field to back you up. Avoid engaging the enemy whenever possible. Your first priority is to remain unseen. Use the camouflage option in the survival viewer and choose your camouflage wisely. Proceed with caution. Unlike the Virtuous mission, this is a night operation. You'll get lost more easily in the dark, but it'll also make your camouflage more effective and make it harder for the enemy to see you. On the other hand, it will also be more difficult for you to see them. You'll also find that different animals are active. Some of these nocturnal animals are poisonous, so stay alert. Paramedic is with us again to provide information on the local plants and animals. Give her a call if there's anything you need to know. Operation Snake Eater is different from the Virtuous mission in that you won't be able to complete it in just a few hours. The time limit set by Khrushchev is one week. Within that time, you'll have to rescue Sokolov, defeat Volgin, destroy the Shagohod, and... I know. Good. In any event, you'll not be allowed to return until you've accomplished your objectives. Survival in the field will be critical in this mission, and the most important survival technique of all is, of course, finding food. You can get food in the same way you did during the Virtuous mission, by capturing it. The enemy presence in that area is still light. You should try and get as much food as possible while you can. Hey, Raguchi, have you finished your first MGS3 playthrough yet? I'm curious, how long did it take you to beat the end? I haven't been keeping up to date with your, uh, with your updates. Although I don't think you've been posting many updates. You must be getting close to the end, right? Thanks to last week's nuclear incident, the Soviet Union is now on secondary alert. We're one step away from a nuclear war. DEFCON 2, huh? In American parlance, yes. From what Western intelligence has been able to gather, the radical elements in the Soviet command are showing signs of impatience. They say we're on the brink of World War III here. And with Khrushchev's position getting weaker every day, I worry whether he'll be able to hold them back. One week. Yes. America must eliminate the boss by its own hand to prove its innocence. There is no other way to resolve the crisis. Everything rests on your shoulders, Snake. Failure is not an option. I know. <laughs> the end took you probably like half an hour as you chased his old ass around the jungle like it was a movie or something. Did, or did you have like a... You were like running after him a lot of the time? It wasn't a slow sniper battle. I feel like maybe you learned too much about the end from watching us play the game. Major, what should I do with this wreck of a drone? Just leave it there. Are you sure? Yes. But isn't this thing top secret? Yes, it is. After the U-2 spy plane incident four years ago, plans were laid out for future spy missions in Soviet airspace to be carried out by an unmanned craft. That craft was the D-21 spy drone, the basis of the one you came in on. The D-21 is launched from a craft called the M-21. The M-21 itself is a derivative of the A-12, a supersonic long-range spy plane currently being developed as the successor to the U-2. However, for this mission, we used a modified YF-12A, a long-range interceptor version of the A-12. 
After being released from the mothership, the drone can achieve speeds upwards of Mark III at high altitude using its ramjet engine. It can't be shot down by ground-to-air missiles, and it's nearly undetectable by radar. With Selino Yask in such a high state of alert after our last escapade, this was the only reliable way to get you in. This is all top-secret military technology. Are you telling me I'm supposed to just leave it here? That's right. Why? The purpose of Operation Snake Eater is to send an American agent into the field in order to eliminate a defector and traitor, namely the boss. Part of that mission involves making sure the Soviets find out what we're doing. So we have to leave behind some kind of evidence that the U.S. was involved. Don't worry. The technologically sensitive components of the craft were rigged to self-destruct when it landed. The only thing the Soviets are going to find is a pile of American-made scrap metal. Got it. Just one thing, though. What is it? I think they'd better redesign the landing impact buffer. People are going to get hurt landing that thing. I'll let them know. Mm -mm. Rodzilla, thank you very much for the six. Major, I appreciate you allowing me to use weapons, but shouldn't I be carrying some rubles? You mean fake currency? Right. Snake, do you remember the Francis Gary Powers incident back in 1960? Powers was flying a U-2 on a spy mission for the CIA in Soviet airspace. He was shot down and taken prisoner. His confession brought to light the fact that the CIA was spying in Soviet airspace. As a result, the U.S.-Soviet summit scheduled for two weeks later was cancelled. Yeah, I remember. U-2 pilots are required to carry items that mask their identity. Powers was carrying ruble, mark and lira coins, as well as French gold coins. He was also carrying two gold watches and seven women's rings. All of these objects were meant to conceal his national origins. But for this mission, we've got to demonstrate to the Khrushchev regime that America is involved. There's no need to conceal your origins. And besides, all you need to do is complete your mission. As long as you're not captured or killed, the details will take care of themselves. Okay. Uh, paramedic. It's been a long time. Paramedic. Snake, it's so good to hear from you again. Same here. It's been a week, hasn't it? Four days, actually. Huh? I visited you in the hospital. You were still unconscious, though. Uh, then you must have seen me naked. Yeah, but you were all wrapped up in bandages and tubes, so I couldn't do anything but look. Better luck next time. Mm, let's hope so. But seriously, don't forget that you were like that until just yesterday. In fact, you really shouldn't even be on this mission. Keep an eye on your stamina gauge. If you start to run low, don't push yourself. Eat something to replenish your stamina. And try not to get yourself hurt. If you're wounded or get bitten by a venomous animal, go into the survival viewer immediately and treat yourself using cure. Yeah, yeah. I can see you still know how to nag. You're welcome. And I can see you still don't know when to keep your mouth shut. Maybe so. By the way, I heard you're going to lose your medical license if this mission fails. Yes, there was talk of that, but the mission won't fail, will it? Of course not. Good. I believe in you. But you know what? I really don't care about my medical license. Didn't they use that to force you to participate in this operation? No, I volunteered. Why? So that I could watch over you. Huh. Snake, you're the best agent I've ever seen. But you push yourself too hard. You're reckless. Someone has to stop you from getting into trouble to make sure you and the boss don't kill each other. So that's why I volunteered. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better guardian angel than me, right? Thanks. Stop right there. Huh? You can thank me when you get back. All right. Snake, unlike the virtuous mission, this is a night operation. You'll be encountering nocturnal animals that you didn't encounter your last mission. Some of them are venomous, like the King Cobra, so be careful. If you get bitten by a venomous animal, the poison will spread through your body and rapidly drain your life gauge. If that's the case, go into the cure screen and survival viewer immediately and inject yourself with serum. Got it? All right. Let's do it. We are back in Dramuchi. 
Love uh, the colors here. That blue, that sort of cobalt blue or whatever it is. The lovely moon here. The rays coming down through the trees. Really pretty area. Butterflies. Yeah, Sigma, it has a really nice look to it. And of course, when we come through here in the Virtuous Mission, it's uh, daylight. Whole different vibe coming through this time. This time we have a lethal pistol as opposed to a trank. You just heard a horse? You just heard a horse? Yeah. You sure it wasn't something else? I know a horse when I hear one. Paramedic, are there any wild horses in Selino Yask? Do you really expect me to say yes? No. So what should I do? There's only one way through that area. All you can do is move forward. Head towards the sound of that horse. It came from the north. Be careful. I, I really like the classic camera, Gabalo. I usually play with this camera, but I like the old school camera as well. It's just nice the kind of angles you get with it. Makes the gameplay more cinematic in certain areas. I see you caught yourself a green tree python. The green tree python isn't venomous, so no need to worry. It's fairly docile, too, so I don't think it's likely to attack you. The green tree python originally comes from Australia and New Zealand. It's a really pretty green color, and it lives... Oh, my God. What's wrong? Snake, what did I just say? They come from Australia and New Zealand. No, after that. They're a really pretty green color. I thought so. What was I thinking? Seeing a snake and calling it pretty? What's wrong with that? Everything. When a normal woman sees a snake, she's supposed to scream or get sick or something like that. And do you think you're normal? What was that? N nothing. Ugh, it's all your fault. Jeez, I'm sorry. But enough of that. What do you mean, enough of that? This is serious. No, I... I just wanted you to tell me how it tastes. <laughs> how should I know? <laughs> it was awfully pretty, though. <laughs> Genuinely angry that he doesn't get... He doesn't get what he wants there. He doesn't get an answer for how it tastes. <laughs> You can't actually see the snake here, can you? Or the horse, I mean. That's a shame. It would be cool if you could see it here.
makes sense that we couldn't see it, though. We couldn't see over here. Looks like death wasn't ready for you yet. Boss. That arm still hurt? What are you doing here? Sons are waiting up ahead. You don't have a prayer of finishing your mission. You're not even armed. Boss. I'm not your boss anymore. There's nothing for you here. Go home. Go back to your boss. There's no need to prove that you are virtuous here. This isn't America. should stir things up a bit. You'd better hurry. The border is 60 miles south of here. You ought to be able to run that far. Why'd you defect? I didn't. I'm loyal to the end, to my purpose. What about you, Jack? What's it going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me? Your country or your old mentor? The mission or your beliefs? Your duty to your unit or your personal feelings? You don't know the truth yet. But sooner or later, you'll have to choose. I don't expect you to forgive me. But you can't defeat me either. You know me too well. Just look at that bandana. If you can't put the past behind you, you won't survive long. If we meet again, I'll kill you. Now, go home. This is Snake, Major Zero. I read you, Snake. I was ambushed by the boss. You were what? The drone's been shot to hell. It's up in flames. That's not good. Enemy scouts are gonna come looking for you. Yeah, I know. But what was the boss doing here in the first place? There's gotta be a leak somewhere. No, that's impossible. The man the boss is working with, Volgin, isn't exactly on speaking terms with Khrushchev. I lost my gun. The boss destroyed it. Snake, I know how you're feeling. It's hard for me to believe, too, that a legendary hero like the boss would go over to the Russians she double cross us like this. But that's how it is, and if you don't accept it, you'll never be able to beat her. That's not the problem. In terms of sheer technique, I'll never be able to beat her. I know that all too well. You've got to do it, Snake. She's your enemy and your objective. Enemy? We were together for ten years, and now you tell me she's my enemy? Enough. Hurry to the factory where Adam is waiting. Scouts have probably already been sent out to investigate the explosion. You've lost your weapon, right? 
That means you've got no chance of winning in a battle situation. Whatever you do, don't let them see you. All right. So we make it through two areas, and now we lose our gun before we even have a chance to use it on any guard. We had our gun, and now it's gone. Uh, we do have the Patriot, though, because we are on NG+. But we won't use that. Not yet. Um, at night time, the black camo is really, really good. It's especially good right now, at night. Check this out. When I lean up against this tree here, 95%. Almost invisible. Almost stealth camo. <laughs> so you're wearing the black camouflage. <laughs> the black uniform <laughs> isn't really camouflage. I see you're racist, Snake. It was intended Snake. to have a psychological shock effect on enemies and hostage rescue operations and stuff like that. But it should also make you pretty hard to see if you wear it in a dark environment. And it might also work on black, earthy surfaces like you find in swamps. Wearing black face paint, huh? Painting your face with black paint should give you a high rate of camouflage in dark <laughs> areas. I really wish they did more with those calls. Um, anything else, Sigint? I heard you fought against KGB troops in the Virtuous Mission. But this time you're up against Spetsnaz. Spetsnaz is the Special Forces unit of GRU the intelligence wing of the Soviet Defense Ministry's General Staff Office. Spetsnaz troops undergo rigorous training in all types of special ops, from assassination and demolition to intelligence gathering. That and Volgan's loaded, man. His unit is one of the best equipped in the entire Soviet Union, if not the best. I heard the enemies you encountered in the Virtuous Mission were only carrying weapons like AKs and grenades. Well, it ain't that simple anymore. In addition to AKs, some of the patrols you'll encounter might be equipped with Scorpion submachine guns and shotguns. The Scorpion is even lighter than the AK, making it much easier to handle. Basically, a guy with a Scorpion is not going to miss you as often as with an AK. The shotgun is a powerful weapon. One blast is enough to floor you and you're likely to be seriously wounded. Watch for that, man. All right. <gasps> what the hell is this? HQ, HQ. This is HQ. Patrol here. We have evidence of an enemy intruder. Commence alert formation. Acknowledged. Sending reinforcements. Use extra caution. Oh wow, still 95% when I'm uh, crouching, even when I'm not leaning. Go, 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 go. Ba -do -da -do. Ho. The music with this stalking animation is so good. Especially at night with this camo. So sneaky. Ha! Badaloo Go, 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 go. Careful with this guy. Battle. Speak. While falling, 
press the action button above branches. <clears throat> Speak. Under the rope bridge. Flatten yourself against the cliff wall. <laughs> Proceed. Teaching you how to shimmy across there. Let me go. Now he's going to get distracted by the body. Answer me. When throwing a grenade, if shot, blow their asses up. Speak. You lousy. Speak. When throwing a grenade, that's all he has. You can get lots of different information from the guards by interrogating them. Little gameplay hints, secrets, healing frequencies, alert cancels, fire support frequencies. That's funny, that first guy. He teaches me how to shimmy down here and he teaches me how to grab onto branches. Gameplay tutorial for this whole section. Uh, anyone else over there? I think there's one guy left here. You've been equipped with a dick for this mission. Be careful, yeah, it's noisy. Guy. They blend in so easily. I'm gonna risk something here. I think I should be safe. That's a fancier way of doing it. Huh? Speak. Shake the rope bridge. Answer me. Let go of me. Speak. Shake the rope bridge. By shake the rope bridge, I'm assuming he means cut the ropes, right? Can you also get enemies to slip? by just shaking the bridge? How would you even shake the bridge? Run, do that? No, there's no way that does anything. I think he must just mean shoot the ropes. They don't fall even with the ropes cut? No, they do. You just have to shoot the ropes while they're on the bridge. You need to fuck with their balance while they're walking on the bridge. Major. Snake, the boss is your enemy. You've got to accept that reality. Adam is waiting for you at the abandoned factory to the north of your current position. Head north. Uh, let's save with paramedic. You want to save? Hold on a sec. I'll try and remember to save frequently. It's so easy to get bogged down with her save calls. Okay, good luck, Snake. Oh, wow, Thanks. no more. Okay, I'll unlock more after the next cutscene. So now we're going to head over to Razviet. The most heavily guarded area in the Virtuous Mission. And now it's the exact opposite. It's completely empty. 
Unless you come in here in a caution phase. Then there will be guards in here. So nice. No, I, st I will never master this set of stairs. It's very easy to drop off. Up here we can get an AK. Lots of goodies here. We get our AK. We get a cardboard box up here. Mind detector. You've arrived at the factory, I see. Yeah. Now to meet up with this Adam guy. Good. Go to it. So where is he? We weren't given an exact location. How about a time? Nothing was specified. A physical description? I'm not sure. How am I supposed to find him then? You won't need to. Huh? He'll find you. Uh. Why don't you try the room to the northeast where you met Sokolov? Adam might be in there. Hey, thermals. No, not in here either. Adam is a spy sent by the KGB to infiltrate Volgin's ranks. You'll need to be extremely careful in how you approach him. Obviously. He can't let Volgin know he's meeting me. That's right. Adam won't show up if you're being pursued by the enemy. Before you go to rendezvous with Adam, make sure you haven't been seen by the enemy. Meet up with him in normal phase. Got it? Adam won't show up. The Soviet intelligence community must be up in arms about the boss's defection. The great Voyevoda has abandoned America and embraced the Soviet Union. Voyevoda? Apparently, that's what they call the boss behind the Iron Curtain. It means warrior or mighty soldier in Russian. When used to refer to a woman, it means something close to Lady Knight. In Russia, where they've had a number of female emperors throughout their history, it's a term of great respect. Well, poetic in a way. The boss's exploits have made her name famous in the East as well. Um, I didn't play the PC version of the Master Collection, but I did play the PS4 version and uh, I wasn't very impressed by it. Um... I'm hoping that the PC version will come good with patches eventually. Because um, there are some nice things about it. They fixed uh, a good few issues with the HD collection. With this version that I'm playing now. Um, so yeah, hopefully with uh, patches and mods, the PC version will be will become the best version to play. I'd say it probably will eventually. Now, let's see. Yeah, I'm sure Konami will continue to patch it for a while as well. Like, it, it, it's already received a couple of patches. I don't think all the issues have been fixed yet. Uh, MGS1 still doesn't have analog support, does it? Is MGS1 still missing analog support? I think it was last time I checked, and the uh, the audio issues were still there, even after the first few patches. 
Seems like a lot of people don't even recognize the audio issues. But if you're deeply familiar with the games like we are, it's uh it's really hard to take. <laughs> the audio issues are just like the, the the that's what really got to me, you know, when we were playing the PS4 version for the first time. Just constantly hearing these broken and fucked up sounds. Some of them were like big the noticeable like the codec bleeps and the high-pitched sounds but like across the board the sound design is just totally fucked but it's just quite subtle for a lot of it for most of it audio fix mods since day one yeah well that's pc right not on console on console, you're going to have to live with that shit until they patch it. And I don't think they've patched it yet. Uh, Snake, what are you doing? I'm in a box. A cardboard box? Why are you... I don't know. I was just looking at it, and suddenly I got this irresistible urge to get inside. No, not just an urge. More than that. It was my destiny to be here. In the box. Destiny? Yeah. And then when yeah. I was on, I suddenly got this feeling of inner peace. I can't put it into words. I feel safe. Like this is where I was meant to be. Like I'd found the key to true happiness. Uh huh. Does any of that make sense? Not even a little. You should come inside the box. Then you'll know what I mean. Man, I don't want to know what you mean. Between you and Paramedic, is everyone but me that is hooked up with a major strange? Uh -huh. Yeah, well. Anyway, I suppose even that dumbass box might make a decent disguise if you wear it inside a building. <laughs> I think Sigint and Rose might get along well. I think they might bond over the box. They sent. Are you Adam? I thought you were supposed to be a man. Adam couldn't make it. All right, say the password. <laughs> Who are the Patriots? Who are the Patriots? Answer me. You're a real egotistical woman.
The name's Eva. This wasn't part of the plan. What happened to Adam? What's your code name? It's Snake. Snake, huh? Well, I'm Eva. Are you here to tempt me? What happened to Adam? Colonel Volgan is a very suspicious man. He decided Adam wasn't the right person for this mission. And you were? Yes. Why? Because I can do things he can't. I heard you used to be a codebreaker for the NSA. I was. Four years ago, I defected to the Soviet Union with Adam. Now's our military. The broom handle. It packs quite a punch. Nice to have when you're on a bike. You held it sideways and used the muzzle jump to create a horizontal sweep. That was impressive. Bet you've never seen that technique in the West. It's imitation, isn't it? Yeah. It's a Chinese Type 17 pistol. Around here, even that's hard to come by. Don't worry, though. The one I've got for you is American-made. Forty-five, huh? Hmm. Incredible. Do you like it? The feeding ramp is polished to a mirror sheen. The slide's been reinforced. And the interlock with the frame is tightened for added precision. The sight system is original, too. The thumb safety is extended to make it easier on the finger. A long, type trigger with non-slip grooves. A ring hammer. The base of the trigger guard's been filed down for a higher grip. And not only that, nearly every part of this gun has been expertly crafted and customized. Where'd you get something like this? I grabbed it from a Western munitions armory. It probably used to belong to one of your officers, and there are more where that came from. You had this with you, didn't you? Better take this, too. What's that? A disguise to make you look like a scientist. A disguise? Yes. You're here to rescue Sokolov, right? Sokolov's still safe, then? Yes. He's being forced to continue his work on the Shagohan. Where? At the lab. They've got a whole army of scientists there developing new weapons. Security is tight, but if you disguise yourself as a scientist, you might be able to sneak in. Can we get Sokolov out of there? We'll see, won't we? Tell me how to get to the lab. The safest way in is from the rear. First, you'll need to head north through the jungle. You'll come to a heliport used for shipping materials. Pass the heliport and continue north, and there will be a large crevice. Descend into that area, and you'll reach a cave. Move through the cave, and you will arrive at a mangrove swamp. After the swamp, there'll be a warehouse. Make your way through the warehouse, and you'll come out just south of the lab. Got it. And just what are you doing there? <laughs> In close-range combat, a knife can sometimes be more useful than a gun. By doing this, I'll be able to hold a knife at the same time and still keep the gun steady. That way, I can instantly switch between a gun battle and a knife fight. Right, let's get going. Wait a minute. What now? You must be tired. Why don't you take a little rest? I'll be fine. You'll never make it in your condition. It's a jungle out there. There's still an hour before dawn.
It's dangerous to be out in the jungle at night without a guide. What about you? I have to get back. I can't be gone for too long. They'll start to suspect something. Don't worry. I'll keep you updated over the radio. That's it? My orders are to provide you with information. Nothing more. All right, then. I'll do something special for you. I'll stand watch until dawn. Now be a good boy and lie down. What's the matter? I don't know you well enough to trust you. How well do you have to know me to trust me? I don't know if I can trust anybody. Gonna get that? She's right, Snake. You should get some sleep. Although, in your condition, you really ought to be back in the ICU. Whenever you save the game and quit, you'll go to sleep. Sleeping allows you to gain back stamina naturally. Depending on how long you sleep, you may also recover naturally from sickness and injury. When you're tired or hurt, the best thing to do is just get some sleep. So do yourself a favor and take a nap. Doctor's orders, okay? Yeah, okay. What's the matter? We're surrounded. I see four of them. We've got company. It's the Ocelot unit. Let's get out of here. Hurry. Don't forget your gear. Here, give me a hand. Damn it! That's a lot. I'll get past them on my bike. I'll call you later. Okay. I'll keep them busy. Huh? Don't go dying on me now. All right, Ocelot unit. Let's do it. Let me change my setup a little bit first. Let me equip my Mark 22. Get all this shit ready. We'll try and do a quick Ocelot unit here. I'll probably fuck it up, though. Pop. One down. Two. Two. I went too far under the bed and now snake is auto crawling and I'm gonna get caught before I can take control of snake again oh fuck ah!
I was getting ready for the mission fail screen there. I forgot I'm on extreme, not European extreme. Bob, 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 Bob. Uh, I guess I'll just wait for this to die down. Are they going to look under here? Well... Made a mess out of that. Let's do some optional calls here. Snake, you've got a gunshot wound. The way to treat a gunshot wound is to dig out the bullet using your knife, disinfect the wound, apply a styptic, and bandage it up. Follow all those steps and the wound should heal nicely. Take care of it quickly. No, I'm going to try and just let it heal naturally. If you let your wounds heal naturally, you'll get more health. You can increase your max HP. So I'm just going to let that heal naturally just to gain a bit of max HP. We good? Remember a few playthroughs ago, I think I almost doubled my health bar. By just leaving my wounds alone. Hello. appears you've been completely surrounded. Yeah, so I gathered. If Eva is to escape from there... Right. I'll have to take them all out. Snake, you must defeat all the ocelots. That's the only way to ensure Eva's safe escape, as well as your own. But you're up against a lot of them. Don't try to take them head on. Approach them without being seen and dispatch them one by one. And don't forget to use your camouflage. Oh, is that, is that a good way of doing it? Use one cure item? So then it'll heal faster, but you'll still get the benefit of, of, the, of the max HP. Where you can heal it faster and still get the, the max HP upgrade. That's, that's a cool idea. I don't think I ever thought of that. That's cool. Those rifles the Ocelots are using aren't AK-47s, are they? No. They kind of look like AKMs, but they're different. Different how? They've got steel handguards and vertical-type foregrips. And the muzzle suppressor is bigger. A carbine version of the AKM, huh? Hungary has a unique modified version of the AKM called the AMD-63. I heard something before about them making a prototype carbine version of that. My guess is... They probably imported some of those prototypes. If they're using a carbine version of the AMD-63 like I'm thinking, then they could be a serious threat. Those things handle better than the AK-47s, especially at close range. And don't forget, the Ocelots are elites. They're gonna be better shots than normal Spetsnaz, and you're that much more likely to get seriously hurt. Keep your eyes open. Hey, I'm well aware of keeping the arrows inside you. Yeah, that's a classic meme. But yeah, I don't think I ever thought of just healing it a little bit. Yeah, so if we just go for the styptic. Now it'll heal faster and we'll... Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can see the max health bar increase as well. If you keep your eye on it. At that moment. You can see it increase just a little bit. Heads up, Snake. Looks like some of those guys are equipped with M63s. The M63 is an American-made light machine gun. It's got more firepower than you might think. It can punch through a wall, too, so watch out. You said some of them are using shotguns? Those shotguns are M37s. They're an American model designed for field combat. Not all that dangerous from a distance, but at close range, they'll tear you to shreds. Be careful. Looks like some of them are using scorpions. 
The Scorpion is a Czechoslovakian submachine gun. They don't have the stopping power of a rifle, but they're easier to handle and lethal at a medium range. If you eat more than a couple of rounds, it's not gonna be pretty. Don't fool around. Okay. I, I think I'm gonna do something a little bit different here and climb up to the roof. I don't usually go up here, but considering I left all those guys down there in that room, I think this might be a good spot for taking them out. Oh. Oh, look at these guys. Hold up. I think I got all of them apart from one. Oh, no, no, I didn't. There we go. I got three of them there. Nice. <laughs> they were all there in that corner. Okay. <laughs> that was sick. Uh, I think we might be able to snipe one or two of them from here. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think that might be ahead. Oh, no. Where's he hiding? Let's go back down. Thanks for the blessings. Watch out for those grenades they're tossing. You'll be injured pretty bad if you get caught in the blast. You could get burned too. If somebody throws a grenade at you, get away from it and hit the deck. Snake, if you fire that thing without a suppressor attached, the bang and the muzzle flash will give your position away to the enemy. Attach a suppressor and you won't have to worry about all that. To attach a suppressor, open the weapon window and press the circle button. Yeah, I've been sneezing, Storm. Hello, damn, he sees me, but it's not enough at 30% from that distance. Photo, bucket, 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 bucket. More ammo. I think one of these guys should have a suppressor as well. Another suppressor. Yeah, there it is. Nice. One, two, three. Four. Five, six. I've been waiting for this moment. That's it. That's the stance. I don't think so. What? A female spy? This bitch is wearing perfume. Stay where you are. I've had enough of your judo. I see you've got yourself a single action army. That's right. There'll be no accidents this time. You call that an accident? Well, it wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been showing off. What did you say? It's a nice gun, I'll give you that. But the engraving gives you no tactical advantage whatsoever. 
Unless you were planning to auction it off as a collector's item. And you're forgetting one more very basic thing. You don't have what it takes to kill me. We'll see. carries six shots. The Makarov carries eight. You have to get a feel for how many you have left. This is a high-class weapon. It's not meant for shooting people. Damn! This isn't over yet. Don't. Why? He's still young. You'll regret stopping me. Damn it! I've got to get back before he does! So, I need to go to the bathroom, chat. So while you wait, I'm going to play some more MGS radio for you. Uh, hold on. I'll be right back.
<laughs> okay, okay, I'm back. Uh, let's see. What did I play before? Jumpin' Johnny by Chunk Raspberry. Let's see. What do I want to do next? Storm, why are you typing about my hands? Why have you, why have you written fucking 10 messages about my fucking washed hands and my clean dick? I scrolled up there and I saw you posted like 10 fucking messages. Or sorry, yeah, my unwashed hands and my clean dick. Uh, what camos do I have on this save? Chocolate chip, oh yeah, 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 lots. Well, good few of them. Alright, now we can continue. Eva has unlocked the gate for us here. Yeah, she unlocked it. Where did she go from here, though? Underwater? Is it an underwater bike that she has? Alright, she probably just jumped up there. Drove across there. Flew over the lake. Like Mary Poppins. Hey, Snake, remember back at the abandoned factory when you whittled the grip of that 45 down? Yeah. I've never heard of a customization like that before. Why the grip? To fit it with a knife. A knife? You're gonna keep the knife and the gun both at the ready? That's the idea. Why would you want to do that? Sometimes a knife works better in close proximity encounters. So I equip both at the same time. That way I can switch back and forth in an instant. Badass. <laughs> so that's that. CQC. <laughs> Storm. <laughs> Get the sexo. Yeah, we, we need to add the sexo emote to this channel for sure. Whoever's in charge of the emotes, do it. Um, And I just realized I'm way behind on one of these donation messages. Uh, the End donated $5. Yo, Snake, it's your boy, The End. Just a little $5 dono to snipe me early. I'm old and shit, so... Uh, hone? Oh, honestly. <laughs> Why did it split that into two words here? Uh, honestly, I don't have the strength. Uh, thank you very much, End, for the $5. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, Dreadhead, thank you for the 10 Lil Mac, thank you for the 64 Cheers, guys. Snake, you said Eva said her Mauser was a Type 17, right? Yeah, what about it? That model was produced in the 1920s in a weapons lab in the Shangxi province in China. The cartridge part sticks out lower than the original to accommodate 45 caliber rounds. The barrel and chamber are a little bit thicker, too. But most telling of all, it's got Chinese characters engraved on both sides of the frame like you saw. And that firing stance Eva was talking about where you hold the gun horizontally, that's a trademark of the Chinese. Just like you were saying, when you're firing in full auto mode, the muzzle jump effect gives you a horizontal strafing motion. They say it's especially deadly in indoor and close range mop-up actions. The Japanese called it bandit shooting and used to dread it. Makes you wonder where she learned to shoot like that. It's the Homer emote. Yeah, it's one of the best dance emotes. It's the sexiest dancing emote on Twitch. You know that army motorcycle that Eva was riding? That's a replica of a German model. 
A replica. Yeah. After yeah. World War II, the Soviets confiscated an entire assembly line from a German motorcycle factory. Machines and all. And then they took it back with them and started producing replicas? Exactly. Originally, that motorcycle was designed to be used with a sidecar attached. That means it's got enough power to drag a 200-plus pound sidecar around. So that's how she could pull off all those crazy stunts. Uh-huh. Of course, it takes a lot of skill to be able to control that much power. That Eva chick is something else. The weapon you've got equipped now is a prototype model of the Mark 22, a suppressor-equipped pistol currently in development by the Navy. It's been modified to act as a tranquilizer gun. The Mark 22 is a heavily modified special ops version of the M39 pistol used as a sidearm by the SEALs. Probably the biggest change from the M39 is that it's got a longer barrel, which allows it to be equipped with a suppressor. And it uses a slide lock mechanism. That makes it a lot quieter, but it also means you have to load a new round into the chamber by hand every time you fire. It's also fitted with tall, adjustable sights, so you can use the front and rear sights to line up your shot, even with a suppressor attached. Looks like they got rid of the magazine safety, too. Good eye. That feature wasn't too popular with guys like you who know their guns. The sheer release lever's been taken off as well, meaning the hammer won't fall even with the safety on. So I can just cock and lock. That, and you get the added bonus of not having any mechanical noise from decocking, even with the safety on. The perfect pistol for a sneaking mission, huh? All right, now it's time for the director's cut version of the M1911 scene. The uncut porn scene. Hey, you've got an M1911A1. Yeah, a 45. 50 years since the army adopted the first model and they're still using them. Here we go. It's a real gem of an automatic pistol. But aren't you going to need more than just one little handgun? Not at all. When you're in a tight spot or fighting in close quarters, sometimes a handgun works better than a rifle. And if I equip a knife at the same time, I can instantaneously switch over to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. I see. That 45 you've got there is a lot different from the original, though. Looks like someone did some serious work on it. It's more than a little. First of all, the feeding ramp is polished to a mirror sheen. It's not going to have any feeding problems. The slide's been replaced with a reinforced version, and it meshes perfectly with the frame. The frame itself has been iron welded and scraped down multiple times for maximum precision. The front strap part of the frame has been checkered to make it dig into the hand. That prevents any slipping. The sight system's original, too. It's a three-dot type. It's got an enlarged front sight, giving it superior target sighting capability. The regular hammer's been replaced with a ring hammer. That enhances the cocking control and increases the hammer down speed. They also reworked the grip safety to accommodate the ring hammer. Looks like they eliminated it altogether. This is a tool for pros. The thumb safety and the slide stop are extended to allow for more precise handling. The base of the trigger guard is whittled down so you can use a high grip. And the trigger itself is a long type for easy finger access. The trigger pull is about 3.5 pounds. That's about a pound and a half lighter than normal. The magazine well has been widened to make it easier to put in a new magazine. The magazine catch button has been cut down low to make it harder to hit it by mistake. The mainspring housing has been changed to a flat type to increase grip. And it's even been fitted with stepping so it doesn't slip from the recoil when firing. On top of that, they added cocking serrations to the front part of the slide. That lets you load and eject cartridges faster in an emergency. Whoever did this is a professional. No question, this thing could shoot a one hole at 25 yards in a machine rest. Well, I'll be damned. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I've never used a weapon this fine in my life. So there we go. Yeah, I'd love to see Code Talker do that call. The cocking serrations. Mm. Yes. Keep in mind that every weapon and piece of equipment weighs something. The heavier the equipment you're lugging around, the faster you'll burn up stamina. 
you can see how much your equipment weighs by going into the backpack screen in the survival viewer. If you Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like you've got rid of all the ocelots. Yeah. Now proceed with the rescue of Sokolov. According to Eva, you should start by going to the crevice to the north and... Can we trust her? What's that? Eva is with the KGB, isn't she? Can I really believe what she says? How do I know she won't double-cross me? There are no guarantees in espionage, Snake. Only calculated guesses. At this point in time, the KGB stands nothing to gain by stabbing us in the back. So you're saying I can trust her? I'm saying the chance that she'll betray you is low. Ah. Uh. Of course, we checked the route she gave you against our own data. It looks like a pretty solid infiltration route. It makes good use of weak spots in the enemy's defenses. You shouldn't have any problems. Follow the route Eva showed you and proceed with the mission. Roger. First, enter the cave through the crevice. Eva said it was to the north, so head that way. <laughs> Find that actor and pay him to do that passage in his code talker voice? No, if I did that, I'd get him to voice something else. I'd have to really think about what I wanted him to voice. He'd be really good for the memos in Resident Evil. You know, where they're talking about all these different biological viruses and whatnot. Or maybe get him to do something that's like the opposite of what he normally does. Something like really emotional. What about Mary's letter in Silent Hill 2? In my restless dreams, I see that town. <laughs> Silent Hill. <laughs> you promised you'd take me there someday. But you never did, James. You fucking asshole. <laughs> Code talker in a relationship with James. Code talker getting smothered by James with the pillow. <clears throat> uh, let's see. That swamp seems pretty deep. It's probably deep enough to dive underwater and swim around. Press the crawl button when you're swimming on the surface to dive underwater. The controls when you're underwater are quite different from when you're on land. The left stick controls the direction you're facing. Press up, down, left or right to turn in that direction. Press the CQC button or the crawl button to move forward. Each button press will move you one stroke forward. Press the button repeatedly to swim faster. You can also press the action button to surface in an emergency. While you're swimming, you can use the right stick. Shut the fuck up. Snake, you'll be helpless if a crocodile attacks you in the water. You can't see behind you when you're swimming. So if you're in a crocodile infested swamp, keep an eye on your six. Also, yeah, 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 yeah. Eva was right when she said that operating in an unknown jungle at night is extremely dangerous. In my former outfit, the SAS, we'd always be sure to set up camp before sunset and wait until daybreak before setting out again. Being able to stay in that abandoned factory made things a lot easier for you. You ought to be thanking, Eva. Major, what's this temptation Eva was talking about? In the Old Testament of the Bible, Eve was seduced by a snake into tasting the fruit of knowledge. By eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command and were cast out from the Garden of Eden. Thus, it was the snake who led mankind into original sin. Come to think of it, I did break a rib in the virtuous mission. Maybe that's where Eva came from. <laughs> but the one who tempted Adam into eating the forbidden fruit was Eve. <laughs> you may be working together, but she's still a KGB operative. Don't let your guard down. I don't intend to. Snake, your number one priority in this mission is rescuing Sokolov. Eva said he is in the lab, so head over there. Right. Do you remember how to get to the lab? You mean what Eva told me? Yes. Of Why don't you I do it? All right, repeat it for me. Major, do you think I'd forget something like that? Let's hear it then. First I head north. Mm hmm. And then I'll come to a crevice. And then? And then. <laughs> uh... All right, let's go over this one more time. First, head north through the jungle. Enter the cave through the crevice to the north. Follow the cave to the end and you'll come out in an aqueduct surrounded by a mangrove. 
Follow the aqueduct to the north and you should arrive at a warehouse. Climb out of the water and enter the warehouse. After you've infiltrated the warehouse, pass through it to the north. Then you'll emerge in the woods again. The lab will be directly to the north. Are we clear now? Yeah. Snake. I got it, I got it. Basically, I just head north, right? <laughs> kind of feels like the game poking fun at itself a bit here. Yeah, you don't really need to pay attention to these directions. It's not like the game is super open with all sorts of different paths. Just go north. Keep going straight from one area to the next. You'll get there. Snake, I heard you got a scientist disguise from Eva. Yeah. Go to uniform on the camouflage screen and choose scientist to disguise yourself as a scientist. Scientist, huh? But it won't do you any good to go around the jungle wearing a scientist disguise. No one would be that stupid. You're right. No one would think of going around the jungle in a scientist disguise. If they did, they'd have to be a fool. <laughs> oh, more than a fool. A complete dumbass. Don't you think so, Snake? Yeah. <laughs> he knows what he's thinking. He's been here before. He knows how Snake's mind works. Alright, let's put on the scientist outfit. First, snake. snake? What's wrong, Major? I should be asking you the same question. Why are you wearing that outfit? I wanted to try it on. Did you listen to a word that I said? What are you thinking, dressing like a scientist in the middle of the jungle? Look at your camo <laughs> index. You're a walking bullseye. Get back into your camouflage now. Nah, lighten up. What was that? <laughs> Nothing. What are you You're thinking? You're an egotistical woman. Uh, let's see. Thanks for all the bits, guys. Uh, thermals. Bug juice. Life med. Um, okay, I guess I'll go back to Tiger Stripe. There are a lot of optionals to do during this part of the game. It'll be a while before we leave this area. We'll backtrack as well later on in a short while. Once we get Eva on our support team. Little poison dart frogs swimming around here. little thing uh, that not a lot of people know about. If you're underwater like this, normally you would just swim up, right, to get above the water. Swim up manually. But if you press triangle, the action button, Snake will just immediately pop up like that by himself. He'll automatically swim up. Regardless of how deep he is, yeah. Ooh, 
Wow, didn't get the didn't get the video. Pixie Dubs with the 19. Thank you. Snake, are you there? Eva? Did you miss me? Did you make it without any trouble? No one saw me. So you're back with Volgan? In a matter of speaking. What about the boss? Yeah, she's here too. Better be careful. Thanks, I will. The boss and I get along pretty well, though. I guess we traitors have a lot in common. Why would anyone want to defect? Betraying your country like that, I, I just don't get it. Are you talking about the boss? Why'd you do it? Weren't you born and raised in America? Yes, in a small rural town. I never even knew there were other countries, other cultures, other ways of thinking. Until I went to work for the NSA. And one day, I found I'd lost faith in the things I'd been taking for granted. What did you see? What was it that made you want to change sides? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. I saw the universe. The universe? Not the actual universe. The universe as the intelligence community sees it. I realized that the gravity in this universe was holding me back. That's all. People and countries are both changed by their environment. And by the times. That sounds like what the boss was saying. There's a world of difference between this country and America. But it's only a difference of position. A difference of perspective. Coming here made me realize something. Half of what I'd been told was a complete and utter lie. The other half was a conveniently constructed lie. Where's the truth then? It's hidden in the lies. Are you lying too? Who knows? I've been trained to make even the most severe falsehood sound like the honest truth. Weren't you? No. I believe because I have to. Even if it is a lie. That's part of my mission. I'll have to remember that. If you need me, give me a call on the radio. <clears throat> my frequency is 142.52. See ya. All right. So now we get Eva as a part of our support team. And one of Eva's roles is to tell us about the area that we are currently in. She'll give us some history on the area, some background information. So now we actually have a reason to go back to the areas where we came from to learn more about them by calling Eva. So we will do that next. Uh, after we get the croc cap, of course. Ooh, I hope I have enough stamina. I will. <laughs> Great sounds. That's tasty. <laughs> okay, as long as I can make it to this first rope, we should be good. Nice. I see you've caught a coral sn I, I mean, a milk snake. The milk snake closely resembles the coral snake, but it's actually not venomous. Even so, yeah. you'll take damage if it bites you, so don't get too close. Hmm. So is there a way to tell the difference between a milk snake and a coral snake? 
It's pretty difficult. They really do look almost exactly One looks alike. like a knife and one looks like a I guess snake, if I maybe? I pick something, I'd say it's that the milk snake is much less aggressive. Okay. Ah, I just thought of a better way. You're going to love this. What? Eat it. Eat it? Yeah. The guide says milk snakes don't taste very good. Is that right? But if I've already caught and eaten it, what does it matter which kind of snake it was? It doesn't, does it? Shoot, I thought I had a good idea. Uh, I'm not sure if they fixed that in the Master Collection. I don't know. I see you've caught yourself an arowana. The arowana is an ancient fish that lives in tropical freshwater areas. Because of its large size, I don't think you'll be able to capture one alive. Ancient fish like the arowana are living fossils. They've hardly changed their forms since the Devonian and Jurassic periods. Other ancient fish besides the arowana include the coelacanth, the starlet, and the knifefish. Almost all organisms on Earth have evolved in various shapes and forms, but these fish have kept the same form for hundreds of millions of years. Baffling, isn't it? Sure. Well, I can see you're not interested. Not at all. I'm fascinated by ancient fish. Why? They're supposed to be huge, aren't they? You're wondering whether they'd make a good meal. Yeah. So, do they? The guide says they taste just fine for a fish. Great. <laughs> yeah, no, George is still broken. A cap shaped like a crocodile head, you say? Yeah. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. You know, animal disguises are one of the oldest tricks in the book in the intelligence world. I don't know whether it's true or not, but I've heard that during World War II, the OSS used to use cow suits. Supposedly, they sent agents out to hide in herds of real cows so they could spy on enemy units as they passed by. Nowadays, I guess most people wouldn't even give a crocodile-shaped cap a second look. They think it was just a gag item. But if you use it the right way, it can be an effective weapon for spying. I gotta hand it to you, Snake. You're one sharp guy. You okay, Snake? Now forget it. Huh? Snake, what in God's name? How does it look? It looks cool. Huh? It looks cool on you. It does? Yeah. I don't think cool is the right word. Why? What's wrong with it? What's wrong? Don't you think it looks silly? Doesn't it make you laugh? Aren't you going to ask me what the hell I was thinking? No. Oh. I think it really does look good. It reminds me of the alligator people. Oh, the... what? The alligator people. It's a science fiction movie. You've never heard of it? No. Oh, well, you should see it sometime. It's about this guy who gets hurt in a car accident and tries to heal his wounds by injecting himself with a crocodile serum, but then his head turns into a crocodile head. You look just like him with the mask on. That's awesome! Right. Huh? Oh, never mind. I suppose you might be able to disguise yourself as a crocodile by wearing that cap and sticking your head out of the water. <laughs> he likes it. Reluctantly, actually comes in with the good advice at the end. Yeah, so you can use the crocodile cap here to fool the enemy into thinking you're a crocodile, uh, which is another callback to James Bond. I think it's Gold Member, or not Gold Member. That's fucking Austin Powers, Gold Finger. I think it's in Gold Finger where he sticks his head out of a water with a duck cap. It's not a crocodile cap. It's like a some water bird. Is it Goldfinger or is it... I always forget. We talk about this every single time. And I always forget which one it is. And chat has to confirm. I think it is... Uh... I think it is Goldfinger? Octopussy? It's Octopussy. Uh, let me look it up. 
Octopussy, James Bond, Bird Hat. Um... Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's octopusy. Hold on a second. Seagull, it's a seagull hat. Uh, let's save. Do you want to save? Snake, have you ever seen On the Beach? No, I don't know it. It's about the survivors of the Third World War. The entire Northern Hemisphere is obliterated in a nuclear holocaust, and it's only a matter of time before the few survivors left in the Southern Hemisphere are poisoned by the deadly fallout. Their only hope is an American nuclear submarine that escapes to the Southern Hemisphere. They set out for the Arctic to investigate the fallout. The movie came out in 59, and the year that the war was supposed to happen was 1964. In other words, this year. Nice warning. Let's hope it stays just a movie. Uh, okay, I posted a link in chat for the James Bond disguise. If anyone wants to see it, there it is. <laughs> if you want to see what inspired the croc cap. Remember seeing an interview with Kojima where he says every time he sees that scene he laughs. And that's uh that's why it inspired the croc cap. One of Kojima's favorite scenes. Um let's see. First enter the cave through the crevice. Eva said it was to the north, so head that way. <clears throat> First enter the Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's do another few calls here. One of my favorites is the naked call with Sigint. We still need to do the Patriot call as well. Oh shit, what did I kill? Using the Patriot, huh? Yeah, it's the same one the boss was using. Where'd you get it? Hmm? I said, where'd you get it? Sigint, don't get worked up over details. What? <sighs> Whatever. Anyway, the Patriot is a one-of-a-kind sidearm made especially for the boss. <laughs> it's basically an XM16E1 with the barrel cut short and the stock taken off. The idea was to create a large pistol that combined the feel and quick handling of a handgun with the force of a rifle. But with a barrel that short, the recoil is unbelievable. It's tough to aim, but it more than makes up for it in firepower. From the looks of it, it's fitted with a hundred round drum magazine. And it never runs out of ammo? Never. Why is that? Because the internal feed mechanism is shaped like an infinity symbol. Ah, I get it. Yep, that'll give you unlimited ammo. <laughs> Classic. Snake, what's up? Why are you naked? I know there's a naked option under uniform that lets you take off the upper part of your uniform. But without a shirt on, your camouflage sucks and your stamina goes down faster. 
you don't get any advantages whatsoever. Sure there are. Like what? It feels good. Man, you do whatever you want. I will, thanks. Just one question, though. What? Is there a way to take off my pants? Say what? My pants, can I? Oh, hell no. This fox unit is a nut fest. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, anything else I want to do with Sigint here? I don't think I have the Gakko uniform, do I? Ah, uh, here it is. So, this camo is actually pretty useful if you want to find all the caratans in the game. This this will help you find the caratans. The louder the caratan, the closer it is. We're pretty close. that stuff you're wearing? I don't know. It's called Gakko camo, whatever that means. What? Paramedic? You've never heard of Gakko? Nope. Never. You must live in a cave or something. Well, excuse me. By the way, Snake, that <laughs> outfit is really killing your camo index. Unless you want the enemy to see you, I suggest you change your clothes as... Why? Why? Because his camo index is... Camo index shmamo index. Uh, hold on now. He's wearing the Gakko suit. Why? Because it looks cute. Snake, talk some sense into her. What's wrong with being cute? Am I the only normal person around here? <laughs> Snake, I see you're in the water. Unlike what you've experienced <laughs> in training, you'll be able to fire handguns. <laughs> he sounded very the annoyed Keep there. That in mind. Snake, get out of the water before you drown, okay? Do you realize you're in the water? Snake, you are in the water. <laughs> Snake, look at your body. Yep. Looking good. <laughs> Not there. Then where? See the leeches? Leeches? Yeah, you've got leeches all over you. Leeches will sometimes attach themselves to you if you spend a long time in the water or the swamp. When you've got leeches on you, they'll suck your blood, causing you to lose stamina. You should get rid of them as soon as possible. To get rid of leeches, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and press your cigar into them. Or, if you use the insecticidal bug juice ahead of time, the leeches won't bother you as long as the bug juice is in effect. By the way, Snake. What? You know the Ocelot unit commander? Ocelot? Yeah, that's not his real name, is it? I wouldn't think so. Is it a code name? You mean like Snake? Yeah. Maybe. Why? Is that strange? No, I was just wondering why he's called Ocelot. Why's that? Well, I looked it up, and it turns out the Ocelot is a wild cat whose habitat stretches from the southern U.S. down to northern Argentina. They live in a variety of different environments from tropical rainforests to savannas. The biggest ones can grow up to one meter in length. They're normally solitary creatures, and their diet consists mainly of small animals and fish. During the day, they sleep up in the trees, but at night... Yeah, uh, paramedic. Oh, right. So, the ocelot is an animal that lives on the American continent. But then I wondered, why would a Soviet officer be using the name of an American wildcat? Good question. Maybe it's because he's fast and agile like an ocelot. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you're right. But why'd you go to all the trouble of looking it up? Because I was curious. Was it helpful? Uh, sure. <clears throat> hint, hint. Maybe it's because he's an American agent. 
And uh, now we're going to go back to Razvet to do all these extra calls with Eva. I don't think I've called her here yet, have I? That area is known as Chorny Prud. The name means something like the Black Shore in Russian. It got its name from the deep swamp that covers the area. The crocodiles in that swamp are extremely vicious. Apparently, they've already chewed up a bunch of soldiers out on patrol. Now, no one even dares to go near the swamp. They said that most of the soldiers who were killed were attacked from behind while they were in the water. You be careful out there. Eva, what kind of unit are those ocelots I fought a little while ago? The ocelot unit is an elite group composed of soldiers handpicked from among the ranks of Spetsnaz, the special forces wing of Gru. They've undergone even more rigorous training than regular Spetsnaz. Their skill with weapons is the stuff of legends. You'll find they're much better shots than the rest of Gru. Watch yourself. Uh, I don't know what a bit bot is, uh, dude, man. So I guess the answer is no. Oh, Jesus. He's right there. Okay, let's check out these leeches again. Oh, only one leech? Oh, no, I have two leeches. Okay. Still didn't get the video. What the? Did I just swim around in a circle? I meant to swim all the way over there. What the hell just happened? Okay, I guess I did a 180 by mistake, or I, maybe I was over there without realizing. No, I couldn't have been. <sighs> okay, let's try the leeches again. Wow, still no. Uh, do you have any all achievements guides on YouTube? Um, no, definitely not. We really don't like achievements around here. And we especially dislike people who collect trophies and achievements. We're very, very anti-achievements around here. So, yeah, you, you better be careful. That area is known as Rosviet. It means dawn in Russian. The area got that name when the factory was first constructed. But the factory ended up being closed down, and Selino Yarsk was reborn as a secret research center and military fortress. The crevice that leads to the cave is to the north of your current location. Keep heading north. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> yeah, bait them in with the title. And it's just me sitting at a table wearing a suit. Hello there. I see you stumbled across my video. And you're interested in getting some trophies. For your recently purchased copy of Metal Gear Solid Master Collection. 
Well, that's not what we'll be doing today. Instead, I wish to tell you a story. <laughs> the crevice that leads to the cave is to the north of your current location. Eva, where are you now? I told you, didn't I? I'm right <clears throat> near the Colonel. Pretty weak answer, if you ask me. I suppose you're right. Eva. Snake, I'm under orders to cooperate with you, but that doesn't mean I have to tell you everything I know. I would assume the same applies to you, too. You know, I don't really hate trophy collectors or trophies. I just like poking fun. Don't worry, you're not in danger. Maybe I hate them a little bit, actually. But I don't hate you. Check out this guy over here. Oh my god. What is wrong with this guy's neck? Ugh. Oh my god. What are you doing? He just stays here forever as well, doesn't he? Will he hear me get... No, okay. Yeah, I guess he just stays here. That's an unusual kind of enemy placement as well. Nice. Yeah, he just stays here. Or can I just kick him off the edge here? Yeah. Poor guy. That area is called Dolino Vodno. The name means Forest of the Canyon. It probably got that name from the chasm that divides the jungle in two. The rope bridge at the center was hastily constructed to enable them to patrol Dromuchi. Speaking of which, what are you doing all the way back there? Get back to the north now. Uh, hey, what's up, Mr. Man? I didn't see you there. Uh, the only reason I'm here is to get these fucking calls, Eva. She kind of scolds you for coming back here. Which I think may be part of the joke here. Like, the only reason you have to come back here is to get these calls. Tell me something, Snake. Why did you let Ocelot get away? I thought I told you already. Because he's still a kid? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty lame excuse if you ask me. You think so? Yeah, I do. Maybe you're right. Yeah, it's just funny every time, uh, once you go back this far. It's like, what are you even doing back here?
Come on. Come on. Oh, I think he clipped through through the cliff. I don't think we're going to see him splash. Oh, well. Think he's still alive? That forest is known as Dremuchi. It means the untouched forest in Russian. The name says it all. Dremuchi is a pristine jungle at the far edge of Selinoyarsk, untouched by human hands. The forest is so dense that large units can't penetrate it, making it a natural defense. That's why Sokolov's research facility and Groznygrad were built here. But more to the point, what are you doing all the way out there? You're not thinking of abandoning the mission, are you? <laughs> get back to the north. Again, just to get this call, Eva. That's the only new thing that's back here. The untouched forest kind of ties in with the whole virgin cliffs idea. The starting area. The starting area is just another part of Dramuchi as well. We don't need to go back any further because all of the other areas are just different parts of this same place. Dramuchi. The untouched forest. Uh, anything else, Eva? Snake, have you heard about the massacre that happened in the forest near the village of Gnezdovo? The Katyn Forest Massacre, right? During World War II, the German army came upon the bodies of 4,000 dead Polish in the forest of Katyn. Yeah, Germany blamed the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union denied it, blaming Germany in return. The truth is that Stalin ordered the NKVD to carry out the killings. And it's not just Katyn. In places like Western Ukraine and Belarus, there must have been at least 20,000 Poles in the prison camps. Why are you telling me this? Volgin was one of the people responsible. He was one of the vicious leaders behind it. Volgin was? He blamed it on a prisoner revolt to allay any fears and requested they be put to death. I've heard that Volgin even removed the blindfolds from each prisoner before he beat them to death. I knew he wasn't all there in the head, but this... Not someone you could be friends with. Sounds like Volgan. Man, Snake, you look adorable with this combo. The Gakko camo with the cap. That's quite a look. <laughs> wow. Speaking of which, Snake? Eva, what do you think? <laughs> what a dork. You must be kidding me. Are you willing to risk your life for that joke? All right, finally I get a normal response. What? Everyone was giving me strange responses and acting like nothing was odd about it. I was starting to wonder myself, but now I feel better. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but you look adorable in it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I gotta go. <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> So good. Amazing performance from Eva's VA there. Sounds so authentic. The little snort. Trying to keep the laugh under her breath.
Okay, I think now we can continue. Uh, actually, hold on, let me just take a look here. What face camo do I have? Snake, your face paint, it's... I know. It's called zombie. Zombie? What does that mean? Beats me. Are you serious? Hello, paramedic. You mean you've never heard of zombies? Nope. Never. You guys don't know anything. A zombie is a dead body that's been cursed and brought back to life by a master of black magic. Supposedly, they revive the dead and use them as slaves. It's also seen as a kind of punishment. People who commit terrible crimes can be forced to labor even after they're dead. Interesting. How do you know all this stuff? <laughs> I saw it in movies. Like White Zombie. Never seen it? Uh, nope. Can't say I have. How about Plan 9 from Outer Space? No. Missed it. You can't just focus on no. what you like all the time. You have to expand your horizons, try new things. You guys need to get out more. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, that face paint doesn't look all that useful. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and wear it if you want, but I think you should change to... You don't need to change anything. Why not? It makes them look awesome. Doesn't it? Look, arguing about it isn't going to get us anywhere. Snake, you do whatever you want. It does make you look cool. <laughs> <laughs> she really likes it. Uh, let's save. You want to save? Hold on a sec. <clears throat> Snake, have you ever seen the War of the Worlds? No. These flying saucers from Mars arrive on Earth disguised as meteorites. The saucers use their heat rays to attack the nearby towns. And then... Um... Something wrong? Uh, the thing is, I was too scared to watch. I had my eyes shut almost the whole time. Then you haven't seen it. No, it's not that. It's based on a novel by H.G. Wells. You haven't seen it, have you? That does remind me, though. When I was two years old, my father listened to the radio drama version of the story. It was right after dinner on Sunday, and we were relaxing in the living room. They said monsters had come out of a meteorite that landed in New Jersey. It sounded just like a real live news broadcast. My father said he and my older brother actually believed it and started yelling and panicking. My mother supposedly grabbed me from my crib and took me out to the car, still wrapped up in blankets. But then, just as my dad was about to start the car, he realized that it was all just a radio drama. Because on the car's radio, they were playing Bing Crosby tunes. No matter what station he turned to, no one else seemed to be reporting on this big history-making news story. Sounds like something out of the big broadcast. Nobody said a word. We all went back to our rooms. My father and brother got off with a scolding from my mother, but I was the one who really suffered. After that incident, every time I acted up, my father and brother would scare me by saying, The Martians are coming! That's terrible. Isn't it, though? So, you haven't seen the movie. I... I saw it. So, so even nuclear weapons wouldn't work against the Martian war machines. Uh huh. Anyway, Snake, if you conceal yourself like the Martians did, the enemy won't know what hit them. Mm -mm. Conceal myself. Maybe not in a meteorite, but if you can hide yourself inside something a little more close at hand. Mm -hmm. Close at hand. Something like a box. Ah, uh, I get it. So, you never saw the movie. I saw it, all right? <laughs> Jaguar, so that's what PT used? PT references uh, the War of the Worlds quite heavily again. Yeah, I think Kojima's uh, a big fan. Um, Unreal Inferno, thank you very much for the four. Much appreciated. Um... Let's do 
the mask call as well. I hope I can get it now. Usually I do it really early. If you wait too long, I know you can't do it. Ah, you're wearing the mask. I made it myself. Pretty good work, don't you think? A while back, they were planning to disguise someone as this one Gru officer and send them in to steal some secret documents. I created the mask for that operation. But then the mission ended up being canceled. And then the Major came and told me to throw it out. Can you believe that guy? But you didn't throw it out. Are you kidding? Tossing a superior quality product like that into the garbage without using it will be an insult to science. So I decided to sneak it into your gear. Okay, but is it really that big of a deal? Of course it is. What's so great about it? Everything. But if I had to pick one reason, I'd have to say it's because it's the first mask ever that can blink its eyes. What about the lips? What's that? Can it open its mouth? <laughs> That's a good one, Snake. <laughs> you crazy, man. I'm serious. Are you even listening to me, Snake? <laughs> Where's your common sense? Damn. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> His laugh there is pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can really see that there's something off with it when you look at it from below like this. Those clashing skin tones. Yeah, no, it can't open its mouth. Old man John. Uh, let's switch out of this. Let's go back to Woodland for now. Uh, how about the snake camo? Provides the ultimate cover in any environment. So just a pretty good balance. Okay, I think we're finally done with all this shit. I think we can finally move on. So much optional stuff to do with this part of the game. Uh, oh, I didn't show this, actually. How does he react to a smoke grenade? I can't remember if smoke grenades kill him as well. Quick, quick! When they open their mouths, you can throw a grenade inside. Uh, I guess I'll show the fancy kill that they have as well. If we get close to this Gabriel here. Watch this. Jesus Christ. What's cool is... Here, I'll, I'll try and show it. They don't always just go straight for you like that. Sometimes they'll toy with you. I want to see if I can show that. And yeah, it's always a one-hit kill, no matter how much health you have. That's a nice shot. Here we go.
No, it's not happening. Ah! Fuck. Sometimes you can get them to just like s swim in circles around you. Like they'll keep swimming around you in circles until they finally go for you. I'm going to try it one more time. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Do your thing. Do your thing. Maybe if I touch its back. Oh, that's it. That's how you do it. Look. Okay, he didn't swim for long there. Sometimes they'll swim around for a lot longer than that. They'll do like 10 laps around your body before they go for you. I guess it's random. What if I do it while I'm in first person? No, I think it's a very deliberate thing where they'll swim around you in circles. I could be wrong. <laughs> I wasn't looking at my O2 gauge. I was like, wait, what the fuck? It's like, how did he kill me there? Then it dawned on me. Oh, wait, no, I drowned to death. dynamic ecosystem where animals eat each other like in rain world or something like that that'd be really cool yeah don't get your fucking hopes up for anything though i think it'd be cool if they had more i think they could do a lot with the food system i think it'd be cool if you could get to see snake actually eat the animals in the game world like when you selected to eat food he actually ate them in the, you know, in the game world. And then you could have, like, lots of different animations depending on the type of animal that he's eating. Or maybe you would need to, like, set up a barbecue for certain meals or something. Stuff like that might be cool. Like, it'd be cool if you actually had to find a safe spot to eat. And they could even put in, like, punishments if you ate in front of a guard or ate in a place that wasn't safe. I think stuff like that could be cool, but... Uh, you know, it might, it might just be the same thing. One thing that, that just uh, kind of disappoints me in this is, like, you only ever get to see Snake eat... A snake once and a fish once and then you don't get any unique videos for him eating other meals you know it'd be cool if you had like a little video of him eating a spider I want to see what it looks like when snake eats a spider just this live spider crawling around in his hand then he just gobbles it down <clears throat> I have played Red Dead 2, yeah. Not too bad. Um, let's see. Hmm. 
Right, I think we can finally continue. Yeah, RDR2 is some fancy uh, stuff, like you can see him skin the animals. Whoop. Oh no. <clears throat> yeah, I saw a headline uh, a few weeks back saying that GTA 6 is going to cost a billion dollars. The first ever game to cost a billion. Not sure how much uh, truth there is in that, but I wouldn't be surprised, really, with the amount of money Rockstar have made and how much it costs to create these big budget games now when they're going into the hundreds of millions. Oh my god. Uh, that guy saw me when I was on the other side of the fence, so now he's going all the way around to where I was behind that fence. I think I'm just going to try and trank him here. Fuck it, I'm just going to wait for him to drop. Star Citizen? I don't e I don't even know what Star Citizen is. That costs five hundred million. Get our splitter outfit. I don't think we get any interesting call about the splitter outfit. They sick the tag dogs on you? People have been using dogs in war since before recorded history. The Greek and Roman armies used to send out packs of dogs with spiked collars to charge at enemy ranks. Attack dogs were regularly employed in the First and Second World Wars as well. Traditionally, dogs have been used to keep watch, send messages, and assist in search operations. Then the Soviets came up with a new idea, using them to carry bombs. Bomb dogs? Yeah. They were trained to dive beneath tanks, carrying a payload of bombs. Apparently it worked pretty well, but the Russians messed up, man. They used their own tanks for the training. Turns out the dogs kept going after Russian tanks and blowing them up. So the plan was scrapped before it got off the ground. Well, I don't think you need to worry about those dogs exploding on you. They don't seem to be the bomb-carrying type. But they are highly trained in tracking and detection. Don't underestimate them. They're excellent trackers and ferocious fighters. Attack dogs move fast and are deadly in proximity encounters. They'll pick up your scent and use it to track you, so it'll be hard to shake them off. In a way, they're more dangerous than any human opponent. Be prepared. The Soviet-made smoke grenades you might find around there also seem to act as a mild tear gas. It might not have that much of an effect on human targets wearing balaclavas, but it ought to wreak havoc to a dog's nose. If you're being chased by attack dogs, give them a taste of a smoke grenade. 
<laughs> Looks like you're wearing the splitter pattern camo. Splitter was used quite a bit in World War II on German aircraft and stuff. The pattern helped mask the plane's attitude and direction in dogfights. Even now, it's still being used as camouflage in some places. It works best when you wear it against a steel or stone background. They sick the tag dogs on you? The Soviet made smoke grenades you might- Shut the hell up! Tell me something, Sigint. What's that? What does Sigint mean, anyway? It's short for Signal Intelligence. Signal Intelligence? The part of intelligence that deals with electronic information. Things like intercepting and analyzing electronic communications, determining enemy force strength and positioning from radar emissions and radio chatter. You get the idea. Code breaking is considered part of SIGINT as well. Forty years from now, we'll be in the age of electronic warfare. It won't be long before information replaces firepower as the most valuable commodity on the battlefield. So you're saying they won't need guys like me anymore? Sorry to break it to you, but that's not gonna happen. No matter how advanced our technology gets, there's still no substitute for human beings. Hmm. Anyway, the Major is a man of foresight. He knew the electronic age was coming, and so he called out to me. And you responded? Well, I didn't have any place else to go. You couldn't find a job? Nope. None of the places where they do this kind of high-tech research would even let me in the door. Why not? I know you've got social problems, but... Come again? Nothing. I mean, someone with your talent ought to be able to... Yeah, well, maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm black. Huh. The Major, though, he doesn't care about what color you are. I've never met anyone like him before. He's different, you know? Oh, yeah, I know. I don't think racism's going to go away even in the 21st century. But I want to work with computers and use them to bring people closer together. In the digital world, it doesn't matter whether you're black or white, American or Russian or whatever. Everybody's going to be the same. That's what I think. <clears throat> it's an interesting call, which ties in quite nicely, actually, with MGS4's developments, which isn't always the case. Sigint, uh, as well as later games where we find out that it was Sigint's idea. It was, it was he who came up with the idea of the Patriot AIs and all that. Even how he frames Zero here, you know, uh, highlighting him as this man of great foresight who sees this new digital age coming. You know, that's, uh, would almost make you think that they had that as a plan here when making MGS3 that they would become the Patriots. It's a interesting call. <clears throat> Eva. Good. You made it to Bolshaya Pust. The name Bolshaya Pust means something close to the Great Cavity. It probably got that name from the crevice to the north. There's a fortified area in the southern part of Bolshaya Pust that's strung with barbed wire. To the north of that is a relay station that serves as both a depot for material shipments and a communication facility. The crevice leading to the cave is located to the north of the relay station. Head north. Reading more into the dog bombs and the dogs would run back to Russian trenches and detonate the bombs by accident. Yeah, they talk about that in these calls, Slow Life. Snake, the enemy's attack dogs are very highly trained, so be careful. You can tell if a dog's been highly trained or not? I can tell. Oh. I used to have a dog. You had a dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's so funny about it? Nothing. It's just hard to picture you with a puppy. Who asked you? He was really cute, but I had a hard time housebreaking him. When he finally did learn, I was so happy. I still dream about it sometimes. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Regarding, like, the, the, the specifics, yeah, no, they do only talk about the tanks. No, you're right. You're right. The crevice that leads to the cave is to the north of your current location. Um, let's see. 
Let's save again, make sure we're up to date. Save? Hold on a sec. Snake, have you ever seen for a fistful of dollars? Nope, never. It's a spaghetti western. Spaghetti western? It's really cool, especially the main character's stylish gunplay. Gunplay? I saw it in England on the Major's recommendation, but it hasn't come out in the States yet. It's so cool. They'll bring it to America, I'm sure. You have to see it sometime. Sure. Okay. Now we just have this guy. What's wrong? No. Where are you going? The enemy. He's here. Wow. So if we were playing on new game, this is where we would find the chocolate chip camo, right here. Don't think we've done that call yet. Ah, you're wearing the chocolate chip pattern. Chocolate chip? You mean this camouflage? Yeah. I've never heard of a camo pattern called that before. Yeah, I know. I just thought it up right now. The chocolate chip pattern is probably designed to provide cover in a desert environment. It should work best against a sandy or rocky background. Makes sense, but why'd you call it chocolate chip? Because that's what it reminds me of. What? Those little round cookies the Major's always snacking on? They're not cookies, they're scones. Major! And it's not a snack, it's afternoon tea. Snack? Tea? Same thing? No, it's not. Look here, afternoon tea <laughs> is a fine old English tradition. Uh-oh, here we go again. Talk to you later, Snake. The origins of afternoon tea go back to the Victorian era. Anna Maria, the seventh Duchess of Bedford, was... <laughs> Gets cut off. Okay, now what am I going to do here? Hello. Who speak? The provision storehouse is destroyed. Who speak? The machine gun with the action. Answer me. Bastard. Who speak? The provision storehouse is destroyed. Yeah, so he's hinting about the provision storehouse here, how we can destroy the enemy's food supply, make them go hungry. And when you make the enemy go hungry, they will eat anything. And then you can poison them easily. Just throw down any poisonous food and they'll eat it. And they'll kill themselves. Freeze. Oh my god. How did he not fall into the fucking wire fence there? This guy's coming out to investigate. Let's eat something. Can't complain. I didn't mean to slit his throat. Uh, 
And here we can learn about this helicopter, which is quite significant. Major. What is it? That attack chopper is parked on the heliport. The one from before? Yeah. The one that took away the Shagohot during the Virtuous mission. Perhaps it's an armed variation of the MI-8 hit. No. Some of it looks the same, but the overall shape is different. It's got stub wings, and the cockpit canopy looks like an angular greenhouse. No kidding. Then it must be some kind of new model. I've heard stories recently that the Soviets are developing a flying infantry combat vehicle. That's gotta be it. A flying infantry combat vehicle? Yeah, a transport chopper yeah. with troop carrying capabilities. Think of it as an attack transport chopper version of France's AMX VCI or the Soviet BMP. They must be doing field tests on the initial prototype. A next generation chopper that's a little smaller than the hip. Maybe we should call it a hind. Hmm, not bad. It's cool with me. Then it's settled. We'll refer to that new type helicopter as a hind from now on. The hind you see parked at the heliport must not be ready to fly. You don't need to worry about it taking off. If you're going to destroy it, now might be your chance. Hey, what's up, Gags? And so, yeah, now we have the option to destroy this hind. We don't have to. But if we do... It's uh, kind of interesting because it significantly changes the mountain sequence later on in the game. If you destroy the hind now, you'll have to deal with flying platforms during the mountain sequence after the end when you climb up that big ladder. And you might think that you're doing yourself a favor by destroying the hind early so you don't have to deal with it during that sequence. But it actually makes that mountain section harder. If you don't destroy the hind, you have to deal with the hind during that sequence. But it's pretty easy to avoid compared to the flying platforms. Ammo supplies. Wait to see where this guy goes. Yeah, I kind of like that it makes that section harder. It's more interesting when you have to deal with the flying platforms. This guy is going to see me take this guy out. Not too bad. Yeah. Oh no, it was someone else you saw actually. They're going to come in from that side, I think. Battle. Mark 22 ammo, please. 
no. Hey, do I have a leech? Oh my god, I'm covered in leeches. We finally got the video, though. I was wondering what the hell was going on. A shame it's kind of busted on the HD collection. The longer the video goes, the more pixelated it gets. So you can't really see it. Uh, yeah, Jesus Christ, get rid of those leeches. I must be seeing things. <laughs> Is that another fix in the Master Collection? That's nice. I don't suppose there are any mods on PC for classic controls yet, are there? It'd be really cool if you could play on PC with like old school pressure sensitivity controls. Where you could hook up a PS3 controller. That'll be the way to go, I I would say. Hopefully that... Uh, yeah, the Master Collection on PC will hopefully be the best way to play the game soon enough. Where it'll have all the fixes and everything. You know, the, the upgraded HD Collection fixes. forgot about this. Even when you're hungry, if you just get down on the ground, your aim will be a lot steadier. Aim is still pretty steady right now. said what's wrong oh my god who triggered that caution again that doesn't matter really come No. Oh, nice, Zero. Oh, Zero, are you are you a modder? Have you been working on the the PC uh, the PC Master Collection? 
Look at these fucking assholes. Bum, 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 bum. Somebody there? I'm in most of the modding discords. My actual contributions are small though. Okay. What have you contributed? Nobody here. Ba -do -de -do. Ooh, are they gonna check in there as well? Now this guy is resetting it again. Amazing. Hold on. Fuck you all. That only got two of them. Okay, let's destroy this hind. I think everyone here is dead. I should probably double check. I can't remember if there's a follow-up call. Good, you've reached the relay station, but stay alert. That station is an enemy strong point. The security is bound to be tight. But there's no other way to get to the crevice if I don't make it through. Exactly. The crevice leading... The crevice leading... When you're bitten by a venomous animal... Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess we'll destroy the food supplies, even though we don't really need to. Uh, that's cool, though, man, that the, that the reflection has been fixed at the end of MGS3. I think that was an issue that was tied specifically to the frame rate, right? From what I've heard, there are a lot of issues that just naturally come about when you increase the frame rate. Was the effect for the reflection was simply not adjusted in its position and size. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, that was always a nasty issue uh, in the Blue Point remaster. That one shot of Eva with that janky ass uh, reflection. Kind of looked like a big screen tear. I see you have a calorie mate. Calorie mate? The thing you're holding now? Oh, the little block that looks like a cookie? Try it, it's pretty good. Okay. 
But what is this thing? I've never seen anything like it. Calorie Maid is an energy supplement that contains all the proteins, lipids, vitamins, carbohydrates, and minerals needed for a balanced diet. It's a well-balanced food. Because of that, it's just perfect for giving your body the nutrition it needs in combat. It sounds like a space-age food. Real astronaut food is not very good, but that should taste fine. Yeah, and it'll help balance out all this jungle food I'm eating. It's easy and quick to eat, so it's perfect when you're running late for an important mission in the morning. I've never been late for a mission. Really? Aren't you always keeping people waiting? Huh? It's easy to keep track of your calorie intake and receive the nutrition your body needs, so it's good for losing weight, too. All of the geisha girls in Japan use it for watching their calories. Is that why they're all so slim? Right. And any diet where you eat nothing at all is bad for the body. I see. You seem to know a lot about Japan, don't you? Yes, I love Japan. <laughs> You're a fan of calorie mates, Dave? I'm going to have to try one one of these days. Oh, that's great, Zero. Yeah, the reflection for the sorrow has been fixed as well. Yeah, I remember that feeling like a very similar issue. It looks like it was the same kind of issue. I see you caught yourself a rat. The rats in that area are the descendants of wild Norway rats that were domesticated by humans as pets and lab animals. They're not poisonous, and I don't think they'll attack you, but they're quick little creatures, so you might have a hard time catching one. I see you've got yourself a ration. Rations are portable meals carried by Soviet soldiers. I've heard some nasty stories about how they taste. It looks like the rumors are true. Great. Hey, you should be grateful. Those things are designed to last. No matter how long you keep a ration, it'll never go bad. And they're surprisingly good for you, too. I'd take a snake over this any day, even if it's a little rotten. You are hopeless. Oh, nice, Zero. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've played the PS2 version of MGS3. But I do remember the rain being a much more effective during the bike chase. Um, the smoke effects are pretty fucked up in the HD collection as well. And I think that's something that they fixed with the Master Collection, at least to a certain degree. I always thought it was a thing primarily in MGS3, but it was also an issue in MGS2 where a lot of the smoke effects were fucked up. When I was playing the Master Collection last time, uh, the Fortune fight as well really stood out. I, I think they fixed a lot of things in that fight where, um, you know, how the lighting goes all dark at the start of the fight. I don't think that was, I don't think that's a part of the HD Collection. I think the lighting is just kind of the same throughout the whole fight. And... Um, yeah, I noticed smoke effects that were missing from the HD collection. But it's really noticeable with MGS3, some, how, the, how the smoke effects are. The smoke grenades, which just look pathetic compared to how they are in the original. And I don't think in the Master Collection they're fully fixed either. Like, I don't think the smoke looks as good as it does on PS2, but at least it's better than the HD collection. I completely forgot how moody the start of the fortune fight is on PS2. It was wild seeing it again in the Master Collection. I was like, oh, wow, this lighting. Where did this come from? Like, and you really get to see the glow of Fortune's railgun in the darkness as well. Like, it really highlights the weapon more when you have that proper lighting. It seems like most a lot of these issues were easy to fix as well. Yeah, it'll uh, it'll uh, hopefully be really good that that PC version with mods. That's what that's what we'll need next, Dave. Cut content mods. Mods that include all of uh, Kojima's crazy cut ideas. The best one, I, I think this one might actually be possible to implement easily enough, maybe. Bald Raiden. Kojima's idea for Bald Raiden. 
where if you didn't put out the fire, if you know, if you catch fire and you don't put it out in time, Raiden's hair sets on fire and he goes bald. And then you have to play the rest of the game bald. Um, and also, if you wear the wigs on NG+, if you do a cartwheel, your wig falls off. <laughs> but you can pick it back up again. It just turns into an item box. Like how, you know, when you lose a cardboard box, you can pick it back up again. That was originally going to happen with the with the wigs whenever you did a cartwheel. Your wig would fall off, right? Because you go upside down when you're doing a cartwheel. <clears throat> That's my favorite cut idea, I think. The bald riding. Like during the fortune fight, it's possible to go bald if you don't tend to the to the flames fast enough. Think of all the things they could have done with that as well. Like all the conversations with Rose. Rose desperately calling you, telling you how to put out the fire lest you go bald. Jack, quick! You're gonna go bald! Stop it! I'm trying! <laughs> uh, let's see, let's save. You wanna save? Hold on a sec. I can understand not wanting to do that for new game. You know, it might make things a little bit farcical. But for new game plus, they should have included that as an idea. Kojima's diary entry about that mechanic is so funny. I'm going to see if I can find it again. It's, it's worth bringing this up during every marathon just for people that haven't heard about it. Um, hold on. Uh -oh. I'm just scrolling all the way down through my Twitter feed. I know I posted it here somewhere. The bad humans retweet. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Uh, so, this is from Kojima's diary entry, January 18th, 2001. Raiden's clothes were on fire at the Battle of Fortune. I came up with the idea of seeing that Raiden's long hair, which he is proud of, is also on fire. And if he leaves it alone, his head becomes bald at this point. After that, he will be shaved completely including the cutscenes. However, various Katsura wigs are available as items. Naturally, some of them have Raiden's hairstyle. There is also the Bakadono wig. If you wear a wig, it will fall off whenever you perform actions such as cartwheels and somersaults. The wig that falls to the floor becomes an item box again on the spot. The good-looking protagonist becomes bald at the first boss battle. Very interesting. It could also be reflected in the poly demo. However, the staff is against it. Is it useful? Question mark. And that's where the diary entry ends. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Kojima's team reining him in. Uh -uh. And then I, I gave my commentary on this after seeing it. I said it would have been great on NG+, Plus. would have made scenes a bit too farcical on a first playthrough, like having the silly shades on New Game. Although, if it was your fault for not putting out the fire, maybe you deserved it. Imagine the frantic codec call where Rose desperately tells Raiden how to put out the flames lest he go bald, yell dead cell blaring in the background. While Rose is desperately trying to tell Jack not to go bald. Ba 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 <laughs> oh, MGS2 cut content gets me so excited. Uh, let's save. Snake, have you seen the movie Them? 
know. It's about these giant ants that appear in the desert of New Mexico after a nuclear test. The army tries to fight them off with flamethrowers. The ants were so big that they filled up the entire screen. The whole movie theater was screaming. Hmm, an ant that big could make a good meal. Yeah, well, if you find any, don't eat them. Come on, they're not that bad for you. If you end up growing huge like that, you won't have any place left to hide. Just like a girl who gone. All right. Uh, we should have some new calls with Eva as well here, I think. The crevice leading to the cave is to the north of that base. Keep heading north. By the way, Snake, do you have a calorie mate? Yeah. Is it any good? I haven't tried it yet. Oh. You want it? What? Do you want the calorie mate? What? What are you saying? You want it, don't you? Well, I didn't say that. So you don't want it then? No. But if you were going to give it to me as a token of thanks for me helping you out, then of course I wouldn't refuse it. Are you on a diet? What did you say? Calorie mate is supposed to be really good for losing weight. Are you saying I'm fat? No. I'm not on a diet, and I don't need one. I, I just wanted to try the taste. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Be careful with what you say. Yeah, sorry. So, is it true? Is what true? <gasps> that it's good for losing weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Calorie Mate provides a nutritionally balanced source of energy, and it makes counting calories easy. That's what's supposed to make it good for dieting. Oh, I see. Oh. I heard that all of the geisha in Japan use it. Geisha? Yeah. I've never heard about that. Really? Yes. I'm sure there are some geisha out there using calorie mate for diets, but I doubt all of them are using it. No, oh, I guess not. <clears throat> Eva, about the 45 and the Mark 22 you showed me. Yeah. You said you got them from a vault full of Western weapons, right? That I did. How? A vault full of secret Western technology should be under strict surveillance. You really want to know? Yeah. Really? Yes. Well, I'm not telling anyway. Why not? It'd be a waste of time. A waste of time? Even if I explained how I did it, you'd never be able to do it yourself. What does that mean? Exactly what it sounds like. Snake, there's a provision storehouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. The battle with Fat Man would be hilarious. Imagine if he picked up the wig. A rolling terrorist with a wig. Fat Man could use the wig too, because he's also bald. That's an amazing idea, actually. Yeah, for the wigs, if you dropped your wig on the ground... Fat man could then have the opportunity to grab the wig. And then he wears the wig. And then you could knock him over to get the wig back from him. Saving the game, Snake? Emma does wonder if Raiden's hair is a wig as well. Yeah, if just his normal hair is a wig. Um, let's say. Imagine Fat Man wearing one of Raiden's wigs. He'd look fabulous. Snake, have you ever seen Jason and the Argonauts? I can't say I have. It's based on Greek mythology. There's this ship called the Argo, and it sets sail in search of the Golden Fleece. Along the way, it encounters many dangers. They run into all kinds of monsters, like bronze giants and the deadly seven-headed hydra and the vicious bird-like harpies. The most spectacular part of all was the battle scene with an army of skeletons. It was like they were actually standing up and fighting. Are you serious? If you don't believe me, go see it for yourself. Then you'll understand the magic of movies. It was totally amazing. 
Yeah, all right. Mm -mm. If I make it back alive, I'll go see it. It just came out, so I'm sure it'll still be playing. A uh, yeah, bald Steve. You could use it like a magazine. You could like maybe strategically strategically flip at certain points to drop your wig. You know, strategically dropping your wig to lure the enemy. More life med, nice. Okay, uh, I think we can move on. Let me just do another couple of calls with Eva, make sure I'm up to date with her. Snake. Eva. Hmm? You said you got along with the boss, right? Yeah, we get along pretty well. I admire her. Although she's supposed to be the distant hero, for some reason she's nice to me. She even carried my bags for me the other day. <laughs> I was impressed. Your bags? Maybe because we're both defectors. We never talk much, but I get the feeling that she understands how I feel. I've had dreams about the whole thing. Looks like the boss's info was right. Twice now you've made me taste bitter defeat. You're mine now. All of you, leave us. It's just you and me. No one to get in our way. Ocelots are proud creatures. They prefer to hunt alone. Here we go. First boss. Oh, I meant to shoot him there. I love how the first thing he does is run away. <laughs> After the scene, just turns around, runs behind the tree immediately. Every time, it's not random. Oh! One, two, 
Oh, he doesn't give a shit. You making fun of me? Five. Six. Get back here. Seven. Eight. You making fun of me? Nine. Ten. Fight like you mean it. Quit fooling around. Get back here. I've never felt a tension like this before. Now you can't level up your grip. That's so different from simply changing the clip. He's really slow now when he starts off, but over the course of the fight, he gets really fast at this. this reload time is exhilarating. He's a very quick learner. <laughs> Unfortunately, you you can't kill the ocelot unit here. They're invincible. Oh! Bob, 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 Bob. I haven't scratched him yet. Oh, I shot his hat off there. I should have stayed up there. Clipped him with that. <laughs> he gets really angry if you shoot the Markor for some reason. You won't get away from me. What's the matter? Ba -ba Oh, I brought him out for the jewel by mistake. Almost died. See my technique? Amazing. I never knew reloading could be so thrilling in the middle of a battle.
That guy is using a single action army. It's a six shot 45 caliber revolver. The only drawback is that because it's a revolver, it's a pain in the ass to reload. Ocelot will be open to attack while he's reloading. Use that window to unload on him. Ocelot has two single action army revolvers. That gives him 12 bullets in all. Keep a close eye on his remaining rounds. When he stops to reload, open fire. That guy is using a single action army. Ocelot is a force to be reckoned with. Don't even think about running away. The only way to proceed with the mission is to defeat him. They say that Ocelot can hit targets hiding behind obstacles by using ricochet shots. Rocks and trees won't protect you. If you stay too long in the same spot, you'll only be making yourself an easy target. Don't stand still. Keep moving. I'm not sure why, but Ocelot seems to have a thing for his cap. You might be able to get him to let down his guard by shooting it off his head. All the exits are being blocked by members of the Ocelot unit. They're fiercely loyal to Ocelot. Even if Ocelot ordered them not to get involved, they might just step in to back him up if he gets in trouble. If you get attacked by one of the Ocelots, use a grenade or something to fight back. They say that Ocelot can hit targets hiding behind obstacles by using ricochet shots. Rocks and trees won't protect you. If you stay too long in the same spot, you'll only be making yourself an easy target. Don't stand still. Keep moving. Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> Where are you going, Ocelot? <laughs> Forgot they laughed at you for doing that as well. Ooh. Oh, he's going to shoot down the hornet's nest, is he? No, he's not. Oh, yeah. Now he's getting really fast with it. Get him! Got him with the nest. Shoot! Get out of here! <laughs> you see, he does the same thing that he does after the cutscene. Or during the cutscene. And now he should try and take revenge by doing the same thing on me. He'll probably shoot down that nest. Yeah. Or that nest. But he didn't get me. Now I just want to see if I can get a certain line from him. Disappoint me. What's the matter? Oh! 
Oh, you bitch. Ah, he's not giving me the line. Okay, I'll wait one more time. Oh, shit. I can shoot there, too. There it is. I always thought that uh, was a very deliberate choice of words there, teaching me the joy of the revolver. The boss, her her code name being the joy. We learn her. We learn our skills from her and pass it down to Ocelot. We actually traded there. Damn it. He found us. Meet again. All right, what now? Let's check in with Zero. Snake, are and you Eva. all right? Yeah, just barely. What the hell were all those hornets? Most likely that was the pain, one of the cobras. I figured as much. Are they tracking me? I don't know. The cobras only take orders from the boss. Not even Volgan knows what they're really up to, so I don't know anything about them either. No kidding. I'll try and dig up as much as I can about them. You just focus on moving ahead. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovie swamp. And Snake, be careful. That cave is pitch dark inside. Good. I did remember to tell you then. <sighs> if it's completely dark and you need a light, try using a torch. I heard there's some emergency torches stored somewhere in that cave. Torches. Got it. So where are they? Huh? Where are the torches? How should I know? Go find them yourself. 
Snake, are you okay? Snake! Major. Snake. Are you all right? You're not hurt? No. That was a hell of a drop, but I'm fine. Looks like there's no way back up, though. I see. Well, anyway, it's good to hear you're not injured. Slipping and falling may not have been part of the plan, but getting into that cave was. Proceed further into the cave. The cave seems to be structured like a maze, but there's an exit somewhere. Find a way out of the cave and head for the aqueduct. All right, but it might take me a while to get through this cave. Are you hurt? No. Is it the enemy? Did they set a trap for you? Not that either. Then what is it? It's dark in here. Dark? Yeah, there's no light anywhere. I should have brought a flashlight with me. So what you're saying is that it's going to take you a while because you don't have a flashlight? Right. Snake, if you don't have a flashlight, you should be looking for a substitute. I tell you, American soldiers these days rely too much on ready-made equipment. Here we go again. What was that? Nothing. American soldiers rely too much on ready-made equipment. And not only that, they can't seem to grasp that one piece of equipment can have multiple functions. Back when I was in the SAS, we never had that problem. We were trained to use every piece of equipment in as many ways as possible. If you don't have a flashlight, look for something else. You need to develop flexible, innovative thinking if you want to... Hey, are you listening to me? Uh, yeah, of course I am. First, take a look at what you're carrying with you now. Don't you have anything that can provide you with some light? I, I like to think she probably put the transmitter on him when they first had their encounter at the start of Operation Snake Eater. You know, when she disarms him. They have that encounter at the very start of Operation Snake Eater. And I think she does it so the Cobra unit can track him. Um... Someone was asking, does anyone like this part of the game? Yeah, I really like this cave sequence. I think it's a nice change of pace. And I like uh, some of the little details here. There's one really cool detail in this cave. And it's uh, how the lighting in the area will naturally get brighter as you keep playing in the area. To simulate how your eyes would naturally adjust to the darkness. The game will just naturally get brighter. And once like five or ten minutes pass, the area will be quite bright and you'll be able to see clearly. Just gradually, little by little, it'll, it'll get brighter. Yeah. To, uh... To simulate how your eyes would adjust to the darkness. When you start off, you don't have any light source really, but your cigar can help. The cigar will light up a little bit of the path. I've always had issues with this part. Yeah, I can see how it can be could be frustrating. When you don't know your way around it. The cigar is kind of fucked up on the HD collection as well when you're in motion. Look at that. <laughs> I wonder did they fix that in the Master Collection. Love the little silhouette we can get here when we pass the waterfall. Down here we can get our first proper light source, the torch. Some Russian glow caps. Remember using the Patriot? Yeah, yeah, you can use weapons as well. Yeah. So we found a torch.
Uh, you can even find night vision goggles down here if you if you explore enough. Uh, snake, please. The level design is kind of unique here as well, how it loops around. Right at the back here, we get night vision. I really like how the night vision goggles look in this as well, really old school tech. These big chunky night vision goggles. Hey, what's that you're wearing? Night vision goggles. This gadget lets me see in the dark by amplifying light and displaying it as images. Amplifying light? That's what it looks like to me. Well, I'll be damned. They're working on something like that here in the States, but so far it's not viable unless it's coupled with an infrared searchlight. And now the Russians have something you can carry with you. Anyway, those goggles should give you a decent visual range, even in dark places. But don't look at anything bright like fire, or it'll get burned into your eyes and you won't be able to see for a while. Be careful. I see you found some Russian glow caps. The Russian glow cap is a kind of luminescent fungus, a mushroom that glows in the dark. Why would a mushroom glow in the dark? It's bioluminescent, just like a firefly. It uses the so-called luciferin luciferase reaction. To put it simply, Luciferin reacts with luciferase in the presence of magnesium 2 plus ions, breaking it down into oxyluciferin and carbon dioxide. The carbonyl groups in the oxyluciferin are initially in an electrical excited state. When they return to their base state, they give off light. Did you get all that? Not really. Oh. By the way, does that mushroom recharge your batteries when you eat it? Huh? I mean, it seems like if you ate a glowing mushroom, it might recharge your batteries or something. Snake, your batteries are organic batteries. They produce electricity by utilizing the potential difference between cells. Organic batteries are known for their highly efficient energy conversion, but they still rely on chemical reactions between proteins and enzymes to... So you're saying they'll get recharged? Believe what you want. Great. <laughs> the enthusiasm. Great. Let's try it out, shall we? How does our battery look on the night vision right now? One bar gone. Let's wait for two bars to die down. Okay, let's test it. Russian glow cap. Not eaten yet. Said to recharge the battery when eaten. Because it's a glowing mushroom, it supposedly recharges the battery when eaten. Battery has recovered. Yeah, one bar recovered. Paramedic. What's up? You were right. About what? I ate a Russian glow cap and it charged up my batteries. Huh? What's wrong? I, uh, that's, that's great. Um, Snake, can you excuse me for a second? Sure. Did you just leave the battery? Yeah. There's no way eating a bioluminescent mushroom would cause your batteries to recharge. What do you think it means? Beats me. Maybe it's all in his mind. You mean like a placebo effect? Why not? 
You've seen how gullible he is. <laughs> I guess there's no harm done. Should we let him keep relieving you? Sounds good to me. Okay, Snake, I'm back. Yes, the Russian glow cap is a glowing mushroom, so it'll recharge your batteries when you eat it. Love Sagan during these calls. Why not? You've seen how gullible he is. I just imagine all the things they say about him behind his back. Go, 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 go. Ooh, it's gonna be pushing it. We're good. See how much brighter this is compared to before? This is where we started. It's practically pitch black before, and now you can see quite clearly. I think it will get even brighter than this as well. I don't think this is as bright as it gets. That cave is known as Chornaya Peshara. In Russian, Chornaya Peshara means the black cave from which cold wind blows. It's a magma cavern formed millions of years ago, back when Salino Yarsk was the site of volcanic activity. The structure of the cave is pretty complex, but you should be able to find the aqueduct if you keep moving inward. Head toward the interior of the cave. Uh, the animal's camo. I don't remember the animal's camo having an interesting call, but I'll check. Some camos don't even have a call. I can't remember if this one has a call. An animal skin camo uniform. Wearing it removes any handshaking while aiming a gun. Yeah, even if your stamina is low, you won't get any handshaking. This is your reward for tranking Ocelot. So, you're wearing... The Mark 22 is a trank... Yeah, I don't think he says anything about it. Looks like you got yourself some funky clothes there. Oh. Yeah, it's called a sneaking oh, suit. Oh, they'll talk about the sneaking, sneaking suit. suit. What's that all about? I'm not sure, but it looks like what Yeah, even when you don't have it equipped, they'll talk about it. Well, whatever it is, it's a fine piece of work. The suit seems to be made of some kind of special bulletproof fiber. Wearing it should reduce all the damage you take by half. The waterproofing and heat and moisture insulation are top notch. Just having it on will reduce the amount of stamina you burn. It even increases your overall camo index. You got yourself a keeper, Snake. Yeah. Maybe we should make it the official uniform of Fox. Um, let's see. Go to the end of the cave and you'll... Eva, I wanted to ask you about Ocelot. Yeah, I know. He's pretty infatuated with you, isn't he? That's not what I meant. Aren't the Ocelots an elite unit? Yeah. So how'd he get to be their commander? 
He can't be any older than 18 or 19. I can't believe he's already a major. I heard from the Colonel that he's been given special treatment. Special treatment? Yeah. He's the son of some legendary hero or something. Hmm, no wonder he seems to have the right stuff. So who is this legendary hero, anyway? Beats me. Mm -hmm. The Colonel never told me. All I heard was that his mother was supposedly shot in the gut during battle, and that he was born right there with bullets whizzing past them. A pregnant woman in the middle of a battle? That's what I heard. They say that when they stitched her up, the scar was shaped like a snake. Well, that's battlefield medicine for you. What about his father, this legendary hero? He didn't tell me. <laughs> I don't think Ocelot's ever met his parents. Are they dead? Maybe. I don't know. There were a lot of MIAs back then, during the last days of the war. Ocelot probably would have ended up the same way. But he was taken in and raised by Gru and Volgan. Because he was special. That's my guess. What about his father, this legendary hero? The legendary hero couldn't be the mother, of course. Uh, we can get a good save call here as well. Saving the game, Snake? Snake, have you seen 007 from Russia with Love? Real spies are nothing like James Bond. It's pure fantasy. Snake, I don't think the Major's going to like you saying that. And even though it's fiction, I can't help but comparing myself to Bond. What exactly don't you like about James Bond? I mean, is it the fantastic gadgets? The cars? The guns? Major. Snake, wouldn't you like to have a gun shaped like a pen? What good is a pen gonna do me in the jungle? I'd look like a fool. Then what about a snake-shaped gun? You can make it look like you're grappling with a giant snake and then get a shot in on the enemy while they're distracted. <laughs> okay, now you're being ridiculous. We'll make you a snake-shaped gun that folds up and fits into an attaché case. Will you give it a rest? Oh, I get it. You're worried about how to handle the ladies, aren't you? No. I knew it. Hm, to tell you the truth, I don't like the idea of playing hanky-panky with enemy femme fatales either. But that's part of Bond's appeal. You could learn a thing or two from him. I mean, what about this Eva? What are you planning to do with her? I... I don't even trust her yet. No, that's not what I mean. You you can't let yourself get involved. This is a game of spy versus spy. She's using you just as much as you're using her. I realize that. You've got to grab the initiative. And to do that, you have to get the upper hand in the relationship. That's what a spy is supposed to do. Get the upper <laughs> hand? I don't think I'm cut out for that mission. Maybe if you change your code name to 00 Snake. Major. 007 is the biggest thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. Didn't you know? The Major is a huge James Bond fan. Don't get him worked up like this. Worked up? Maybe you don't realize this, but now that you've got him started talking about Bond, I'm going to have to listen to him lecture for a whole hour after he gets off the radio. You have my sympathy. It's too bad you can't enjoy such a great movie, though. I guess I'm just one of those people who can't enjoy spy flicks. <clears throat> I really wish we had some of those items in the game. The snake-shaped gun. They could have changed his name to 00 Snake in NG Plus as well. Put 00 Snake above the health bar instead of Snake. Only when you wore a tuxedo, maybe. Your field uniform. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can capture animals alive by using the tranquilizer gun or a mouse trap. That area is inhabited by the Taiwanese cobra. The Taiwanese cobra is native to Taiwan and southern China. It's quite vicious and carries a potent neurotoxin in its fangs. Be careful. If it bites you, go into the survival viewer immediately and use the cure option to inject yourself with serum. Sounds interesting. Don't ask me. Huh? 
The guide doesn't say. If you absolutely have to know, then you'll just have to try it yourself and see. I didn't say anything. But you were going to ask, weren't you? About the taste? Maybe. I'll talk to you later, Snake. Snake, that's the home to the Otten Frog. The Otten Frog is a large, corpulent species of frog. They're known as a delicacy, so it might be worth catching them for food. The Otten Frog was originally found only on Amami Oshima in Japan. Frogs usually have four toes on their front legs, but the Otten Frog is unique in that it has five. Got it. By the way, you said they were known as a delicacy, right? Right. So that means they must taste pretty good, huh? I guess so. I hear that in Japan, Otten Frog sashimi and sukiyaki are popular dishes. Really? Yeah. Japan, huh? That place is starting to sound better and better. Snake, be careful. That cave is inhabited by vampire bats. The vampire bat bites its victims and sucks their blood. Got it. Speaking of bats... Just save it. Huh? I know you're gonna talk about vampire movies, Attack of the Vampire Donuts, or Dracula vs. the Space Hippos, or something like that. Actually, I was going to say that bats are known to use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings. Oh. Bats use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings, so you might be able to keep them away by blasting them with a special kind of sound wave. Alternatively, you could try equipping a torch and waving it around with the CQC button. As for taste, I suppose there's no reason you couldn't eat them. Hmm. Snake, do you hate vampire movies? What? Just now, you sounded like you really hated them. I did? Yeah. Oh. Well, no one really likes them, do they? Some people do. Like you? Yeah. They're fascinating, you know? Like the movie Dracula... Don't say it. Why not? Just don't. Are you afraid? What? You're afraid of vampires, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous. But... Listen. There are no such things as vampires. They're just a stupid, made-up legend. And if they do seem real sometimes... Well, sure. You think I'd be afraid of something like that? No. Exactly. Right. I'm not afraid of vampires. Uh-huh. It's just that whenever somebody starts talking about vampires, I end up dreaming about them that night, and I don't need that right now. That's all. Okay. <clears throat> and maybe later on we'll get to see Snake dream about vampires. Snake probably wouldn't do so well playing MGS2 then, right? Dracula versus the Trophy Hunters. What an amazing idea. I'd love to watch a movie like that. Dracula going around murdering all these gamers. Hunting for trophies and achievements. What a great concept. We can get an M37 up here. Uh, let's see. They're from Exxon 5, yes, yes.
you at last. We are the sons of the boss. Beyond your imagination. <laughs> you really don't expect this guy to be such an acrobat, do you? Let's get started. He kind of looks a bit chubby with his big jacket. But man, he has some serious moves. He dances his ass off during the fight as well. No, you bitch. If he gets you with that, his bees can track you. Um, oh, I forgot the hornet's nest again, didn't I? I fucked up DRK's hornet's nest last time. Yeah, you can use hornet's nests against him to... Uh, to attract his hornets so they'll go for the nest instead of you. It makes the hornet's nest tastier as well. Snake, watch out for those bullet bees. Bump, bullet bump, bees bump, the name bump. Of pain gives the special hornets he raises inside his own body. And if they get into your body, your wounds will become worse and worse until you get rid of them. If you're afflicted by bullet bees, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to dig them out with your knife. Once the bullet bees are out, don't forget to apply styptic and disinfectant to the wound. The pain is said to possess the power to control his hornets at will. Watch out for insect-based attacks, especially his so-called bullet bees. The pain doesn't just use hornets. He's got guns and grenades in his arsenal, too. Be especially careful about those grenades. Snake, watch out for those bullet bees. Bullet bee is the pet name the pain gave to a special type of hornet that he keeps inside his body. When the pain gives the order, they fly at their target like bullets, burrow into his body, and eat away at his insides until he's dead. If you get hit by a bullet bee, go into the survival viewer right away and heal yourself on the cure screen. That being said, despite the name, a bullet bee is really just a type of hornet. They can't follow you into the water. If the pain launches any at you, dive under the water. The pain has the power to control swarms of hornets at will. Watch out for his hornet-based attacks. Not even the pain's special breed of hornets will be able to follow you underwater. You're a good swimmer, right? If you're being harassed by any hornets, dive into the water. When the hornets come to attack you, you can cause the swarm to scatter by shooting at it with your gun. Also, the hornets can't follow you into the water, so you can get away by diving into the water. Hornets are also vulnerable to fire and smoke. You can keep them away from you by using a smoke grenade. Swinging a torch around using the CQC button should also work. Snake, you won't be able to see a thing with a swarm of hornets covering your head. The hornets can't follow you into the water. If you find your vision being blocked by a swarm of hornets, dive into the water. You could also try driving them away with the smoke from your cigar. Waving your torch around with uh, Yeah, 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 you already told me this, didn't you? You might be able to try The pain has the Not even the pain spe The pain can supposedly use his hornets to create a copy of himself and confuse the enemy If he does that, try and figure out which one is real and attack it When he copies himself, the hornets that normally protect him will be used to create the double that means you'll be able to damage him with a gun. But be warned, if you screw up and shoot the double, or you take too long to shoot, you'll get hit with a counterattack. The pain doesn't just use hornets, he's got guns and grenades in his arsenal too. Be especially careful about those grenades. 
The pain is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Snake, as long as the pain is using his hornets to protect his body, you won't be able to damage him with gun attacks. You'll need to use a grenade to get rid of the hornet swarm first. Go into first person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Snake, if the pain's hornets stick to you, you won't be able to move freely. Hornets start to stick to you. Shake the stick around. Yeah, yeah. Snake, not even the pain's. The pain. The pain. Hornets are known to display extremely aggressive behavior in response to the color black. So don't wear black clothing. Instead, try wearing white clothing. It should reduce the severity of the hornet's That's attacks. another really cool detail. White camo makes a difference. Take less damage. Using insecticidal bug juice on yourself should make the hornet's attacks less severe. Try it out. Bug juice. Using insecticidal bug juice... Hornets are known to display... Do I have any snow camo? I have snow face camo. I could use my scientist outfit, but I think Ozcam would work well. Yeah. That was sick. Bob, Bob. Oh, nice. Can be tricky to get headshots because he's all he's always swaying his head back and forth. Bop, 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 bop. his own grenade it's like the two grenades clashed there that was crazy hey. oh fucked up my tactical reload Phase two. Now he's going to send his bullet bees after me. There's a really uh, cheesy strat. If you just look in first person view. His bullet bees won't be able to get me. Ooh, annihilated his health bar there. Almost finished him. Now he's creating the clone of himself. 
You can tell which one is real because the real one has hornets flying around it. So it's this one. It's useless. Oh god. Prevented him from doing it? You're embarrassing yourself. Drop. All right, that's the pain. In case you were wondering what his name was. That's the pain. For tranking him, if we were on new game, normally you would have to run up here. This is how you get onto his platform. And this is where you would find his camo if you were doing a new game playthrough. And his camo is actually one of the more interesting camos in the game. It's pretty fun to fuck around with. Wards off hornets, spiders, and leeches. Also allows the wearer to tame hornets. So hornets will no longer attack you when you shoot down a nest. And they will just follow you around. Um, but what's cool about it is you can use the hornets to attack other enemies. The description doesn't say that. Doesn't tell you about that feature. But that's what's really cool about it. You can use the hornets uh, to attack the enemy. And uh, DRK will probably play around with this later.
That's correct, Mouse. Yes. If you keep forcing him to eat shit he doesn't like, he'll grow to like it. Aliens. Uh, let's equip the box. The exit from the cave should be toward the back. Proceed through the cave and find the exit to the swamp aqueduct. Does the appetite carry to NG plus? I don't think so. The exit. Major. Yes? I was just wondering, why do they call you Zero? What do you mean? We go back a long ways, but I just realized I never asked you why you're called Zero. You want to know where it comes from? Yeah, that's all right. That's a bit nostalgic, really. Nostalgic? Hmm, the first British intelligence outfit was established in 1909. The head of the Foreign Intelligence Division was a man named Mansfield George Smith Cumming. He was referred to simply as C after the first letter of his last name. Since then, out of respect for Cumming, the heads of the SIS have traditionally taken the name of C. And James Bond's boss is called M. That's right. I myself was once known as O. And that's where Zero comes from? Precisely. In another sense, though, it signifies a ghost, one whose true identity must remain a mystery. Ooh, uh... The primogenitor of the solo sneaking operation. Is that so? Interesting. Uh, do I have any stun grenades? Oh, getting tired, man, but thankfully... The RK will be here soon enough to take over. Oh, I don't have any stun grenades left. Damn. If you throw a stun grenade in here, you just watch as all these vampire bats fall to the ground. You can get like 20 of them at the same time here. David O. Give me that ammo. Snake, you beat the pain. Not without a tough fight. How did it feel to fight one of the boss's comrades? What are you getting at? I just want to know what it's like to have fought a member of the legendary Cobra unit. That's all. What you want to know is if I can really face the boss. Is that right? Well, that too. Don't waste your time worrying about me. I'll get the mission done. I certainly hope so. So the exit of the cave is up ahead? Right. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovie Swamp. That's what I was going to do there. I was going to eat a load of bats. <laughs> that was my plan. I haven't had a single bat yet. Pass through that area to the north and you'll reach the aqueduct. But be careful. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll go back and... Mm. Maybe I'll just unload with an assault rifle. Fuck it. Let's just let's just spam the shotgun with the with the tactical reload real quick. Jesus! I shot the claymore by mistake. I guess. <laughs> okay, we got a few of them. Oh, 
Oh, I remember this being a good method for taking down the bats. I mean, maybe it's just a good method for warding them off so they won't attack you. Maybe that's it. I thought you could kill them easily with the torch as well. I guess not. Uh, anyway, we're not low on stamina now anyway, so... I'll hold on to them. Yeah, a regular grenade would probably be decent now that they're actually flying around there. All the casings. Ooh, are they back up? They're back up on the fucking ceiling. Fuck it, let's just go. Out of bounds. <laughs> We're not actually skipping anything there, don't worry. You say they have flying platforms out there? Flying platforms are a type of personal VTOL aircraft. They were working on those in America too, weren't they? Yeah, back in the 50s. They were supposedly going to be used for scouting and patrol missions, as well as to spot for artillery units and transport troops into rough territory. They even got an initial prototype off the ground in 1955. But the thing wasn't fast enough, and there were problems with getting it to stop and turn in midair. So they ended up scrapping the project. The ones you see there were built by the Soviets after they got their hands on the American design plans. The American model used a pair of contra-rotating rotors to generate lift, but those Soviet models seem to be using jet engines instead. They must have kept going with their research after the U.S. abandoned its own project. Now they've finally overtaken us. You gotta give them credit for sticking with it. If you get spotted by an enemy riding a flying platform, they'll go into alert phase. The flying platforms themselves don't seem to be armed, but the pilots are carrying Scorpion submachine guns and grenades. The recoil on the Scorpion is low enough so that they should be able to fire one-handed in full auto mode. That gives them some serious firepower. The armor plating on the body of a flying platform is bound to be pretty thick. I don't think you're going to be able to penetrate it with a handgun or an assault rifle. When you're up against a flying platform, try and aim for either the pilot or the engine on the underbelly. Hey, what's up, Eddie? The flying platforms have a searchlight attached to the front. If you knock it out, that should handicap its scouting ability. And in some cases, it might even have to go back to base for repairs. That's the coolest thing about these flying platforms, I think. Let's see, look, with this guy. Let me just equip my M1911. If we specifically go for the searchlight here. Just wait for him to stop. Ooh, he doesn't stop for long. There we go. Now that I've destroyed his searchlight, he's going to leave the area, get a repair, and then come back. However, they're pretty fast getting those things repaired. So he's not going to be gone for too long. But still, such a cool detail. Uh, let's just switch camo again here.
Come on, turn around, man, before this other guy comes back. I want to try and do the same thing with this guy. Nice. Now the other guy's coming back, look. <laughs> Fuck. Got it. A cool strat. Now we're gonna take a little detour to get the sniper rifle. Does the croc work here as a disguise? Yes, I'll show that now if you like. I think it should still work when we're in caution. Um. Have to be careful here though, because it's so easy to stand up by mistake. Look at the terrain under the water here, and if they see me standing, it's all over. They're not even seeing me. Maybe my camo is too good. Seems like even when you're only at 40 or 50% with this water camo, it seems to be pretty damn good. Hey, man. You know, usually they'll comment on it. Maybe they don't comment on it when you're in caution. They're too, uh, they're too busy. I thought they did, though. Uh, either way, it's working. Normally, I'd be getting caught right now if I didn't have the croc cap on. They're just not commenting on it like they usually do. Yeah, let's just wait for the caution to die down. Bum, bum. Now, let's see. Maybe it's just bugging out for some reason. I thought they did comment on it. Even in caution. Ah! Oh, I stood up by mistake! Hobo with the 10 pack. Thank you. Good to see you, Hobo.
feel like I haven't seen you in a while, hobo. Good to see you, man. Oh! Yeah, I wasn't concentrating. But I those flames. Okay. <laughs> I swear I'm blaming that one on hobo. I completely stopped paying attention to what I was doing. Okay, let's try and show off the croc cap thing again. Anyway, I have a feeling it'll probably work now that we've reset the area. Yeah, see, look, already they're noticing. Oh, wait, no. I think if... I think if you equip a weapon... There it is. I think if you equip a weapon, that will fuck with it. They'll notice the weapon. Yeah, that's how it goes. Who's that? Balls. I meant to switch my camel. Here we go again. Okay, that'll do the trick. Um, anonymous donated. Five dollars for snipe early. Only ninety-five to go. Thank you very much, Anonymous. Hold on, let me add that. Uh, Demon Beast with the twenty as well. Thank you very much. Super Goat with the Prime earlier too. Cheers, everyone. Uh, bullet. Um, I know MGS2 is your favorite, but how do you rank MGS3? Very highly as well. Um, yeah, MGS2 is definitely my favorite, but I think MGS3 is a great game as well. Uh, let's... Grab all this stuff, the SVD to snipe the end early, just in case that takes it somehow. <clears throat> no response from Eva. I see you found a Russian false mango. The Russian false mango is a mango-like fruit found only in Salino Yarsk. The egg-shaped fruit is sweet and tangy with a pleasing aroma, just like a mango. Also, the seeds can be used to make a medicine that aids in digestion. It might come in handy if you ever have an upset stomach. Snake, be careful. That area is supposed to be inhabited by cobalt blue tarantulas. The cobalt blue tarantula is a poisonous spider with a highly potent venom. If you get bitten, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to administer a serum injection. Treating serious wounds will require you to use additional medical items besides your knife and cigar. That's why it's always a good idea to carry as many medical items with you as possible. If you start to run out of medical items, find some more as soon as you can. The enemy should be carrying medical supplies as well. You can get them by holding up enemy soldiers and shaking down their bodies. Snake, whatever happens to you, make sure you leave a descendant, okay? Are you saying you want to have my baby? No. I'm saying that in the 21st century, the genes of soldiers like you are going to be in high demand. Genes? Uh-huh. Remember when Watson and Crick discovered the double helix structure of DNA back in 1953? Uh, no. You know, they won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for it the year before last? Of course, you have to feel sorry for Polly and Franklin. They were researching the exact same thing. Sorry, I don't follow. Inside every living creature are little blueprints called genes. 
Through the union of the sperm and egg cells, these blueprints are transformed and inherited by the next generation. That's why parents and children resemble each other. The concept of genes was first proposed over a hundred years ago by Mendel, but he didn't know what they were exactly. For a while, it was thought that chromosomes were composed not of deoxyribonucleic acid, but of proteins called polypeptides. Later, it was shown that deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, was a biological macromolecule. Then 11 years ago, Watson and Crick discovered that DNA had a double helix structure. Yeah, this is all fascinating stuff, but what exactly does it have to do with me? The inherent characteristics of any given individual are determined by his or her genes. By duplicating a set of superior genes, a separate body with the same set of characteristics, a clone can be created. But genes don't control a person's fate. That's true, but having an offspring that's genetically identical to the parent is more efficient, right? You can expect better results that way. More efficient? You can't mass produce human beings. Maybe, but now that we know the true nature of genes, human cloning is that much closer to reality. Nuclear transplanting is already theoretically possible, so one day... My genes are going to be a valuable commodity. Exactly. They'd never let that happen. Just think, even if your body dies, you survive and go on to bigger and better accomplishments. If you think about it, it's kind of an honor. Does that kind of technology seriously appeal to you? Well, I am a doctor. I can't condone it on moral grounds, but I'm fascinated by the possibilities. Especially when I see such an excellent specimen oh, as yourself. Yeah? yeah, well, thanks for the compliment, but it doesn't make me feel any better. <clears throat> Don't be so glum. It's not like it's going to happen anytime soon. Oh. We'll just have to wait and see. Just like eight years. Just give it eight years. All right, guys, I'm tired. DRK is ready to take over. I'm going to head to the next area and save. And then I'll hand it over to DRK. You want to save? Hold on a sec. Snake, have you heard of The Last War? Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. It's a Japanese movie where the world ends in a nuclear war. Tensions between East and West reach the breaking point, and before anyone can stop it, they launch the ICBMs. Humanity is wiped out by a war that no one wanted. The movie depicts that destruction from the eyes of ordinary people. Their simple daily lives are torn apart by the terrible power of a war that has nothing to do with them. Everybody's afraid of the next big war, but there's only so much that one person can do. That's why the people who have the power to stop it have to. All right. Um... Yeah, guys, don't go anywhere. I'll just I'll just play some tunes for a few minutes while you wait while I get this save sent over. And then I'll come back to sign off. Be right back.
what a thrill I'm searching and I'm melting to you Ready to switch? DRK has the save. Let me just check my dashboard, make sure I have no one else to thank. The last person I see here is Demon Beast. Demon Beast again, thank you very much for the 20. Um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. It was a fun session. I'll be back later on for some MGS4, most likely. Um, maybe starting up MGS4. And yeah, don't go anywhere. The stream is going to go down for like 10 seconds, but DRK will be back up, picking up right where we left off with the exact same save file. And I'll see you all soon. Take it easy, everyone. Don't go anywhere. The stream will be back up.